Welcome everyone and all to another Monkey Bubble TFT Peanut Butter Cup. Today we're here to celebrate more of EU, EU's finest TFT players. We've got 16 on the line with 300 euros as well to give away. So let's see who takes out the cake today. But before we get there, we have a bunch to go through. First of all, I'm here with someone else today. Of course, you know me. I'm Man of Class. But we have Makes here today. And I think Hi. you're very excited to be here today, aren't you? I'm super excited. It's my first TFT cast. I'm usually casting World of Warcraft stuff, um, and I'm very happy to have gotten the chance to be here. Uh, I dabble in TFT in my free time. I think it's a really, really cool game, and I'm just super excited to see what the players come up with today. Yeah, because of course our claim to fame in TFT is uh, very notable. You know, I, my, yeah. my biggest boast is, oh, I got purple and hyper roll that one time because I did a Karma uh, Dawnbringer reroll like just a bunch of times and it lucked out the statistics. Uh, and what was your claim to fame again? I think think you got, um, uh, got to platinum once or something. Yeah, exactly. I hit platinum <laughs> once and ever since I've been just, you know, idling in gold. So like every season I, I play to gold and then I just let it fade out because that's that's where you get the rewards, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's how you do it, right? That's uh, all you have to do is get to that gold, get to get to your pass, and everything else is just rolling for fun because you know it's, it's more fun for me at least. I find it more fun to try out these wacky things and I get a, I get a board that makes no sense, but somehow I'm still. Uh, you know, get a win streak of 20 going on, and then I just drop down. It's it's, it's how yeah. it goes. But uh, yeah, as long as you get top four, <laughs> you're not losing. That's that's my philosophy. Uh, True. Of course, for these players, it's a little bit different. Uh, I mean, for everyone who's been following the format for the past two weeks, uh, you are. Uh, often used to this format where the top, the first player gets uh, 10 points, second player gets eight, and then seven, six, uh, and then it drops down to four for this fifth place. Three, two, mm -hmm. one. Uh, but we do things a little bit different here on Monkey Bubble. We try uh, trying out a new format, which is that the winner gets nine points because mm -hmm. the bonus point for first. Uh, I mean, it's it's cool, it's awesome, of course. But sometimes you just get that high roll, and we like to not play the RNG too much. So uh, let's keep everything close together and see where players end up. Of course, they're going to play three lobbies uh, where they get reseeded every time, and then the top eight players will battle it out for that top three spot to maybe get some prize money. Actually, top four even. So uh, mm -hmm. we'll see what, who runs away with that top prize of 150 euros today. Absolutely. And we have some really, really high tier players in these lobbies. We have players that are actually like in the global top 100 ranking, battling with players who are on masters level. So that will definitely be super interesting. And I'm curious to see who will take the winning hand in the very end, because I am not sure that our challenger players can actually take it away since tft is just so based on different factors and we have so many different rounds um where players can get different points so that will definitely be super interesting and keep us on our toes since uh yeah it's very unpredictable yeah, and, and, you know, talking about different players and the game of TFT being so wide and wacky sometimes. I mean, we've seen so many different things work and so many sort of, like, in-week metas uh, start to exist. I mean, week one, we actually had Assassins do really well. They were virtually mm. non-existent last week. Last week, it was actually way more about uh, Karma. Akshan came on. Uh, we didn't we didn't see any chuck bugs, which was a little bit unfortunate, but we saw some. Uh, some in the week before. So maybe mm. this week we'll get another new style of play that players... Uh, like to bring out i mean bringing out checkback is like one of the things that everybody loves about tft right it's just such a wacky combo that's so much fun to play and whenever somebody can actually get around to do it it's just you know you love to see it and uh, i'm very curious to see if there's anything that's comparable we have a few reroll comms that are available in the current meta um so it just really depends on what players can hit at what point in the game and if they actually choose to go for a reroll comp, um, which will be super cool to see. I, I always like it when players go for these hyper roll starts, you know, just, just get a get a cled, get a zigs and just uh, throw blue bu blue buff on him and just keep on rolling. It's uh, it's great. <laughs> you know, you get a very strong early game. I mean, it doesn't really translate to late game well if you don't get the right characters, but oftentimes you can still find something out of it and uh, it can be very successful. We did see it actually work out last week. So uh, let's see what these players are going to bring us today. I uh, do got a feeling they are going into the lobby because we told them five five minutes in, and uh, it's about five minutes in. These players like to be 
be very punctual, just as we like True. to be. And uh, yeah, we're going to get some funny POVs. Of course, a massive thank you for all the streamers, uh, well, the, the players that are streaming to us. Without them, we couldn't actually show you any of this. So uh, let's see who we're going to get today. Because I know uh, we have, for instance, in the first lobby, you know, Shining Star. We have Phoebe in there, the, the mm -hmm. big brain player. Yes. <laughs> Silent. Uh, and a few, you know, a few more. I'm uh, mm -hmm. trying to get the names up. There you go. Uh, level 1 Vulpix. Uh, and uh, there we are. Yeah, the yeah. Volpix, Jim Ray Three, uh, Alex Caruso, Wanasa. It's uh, it's a fun lobby. Actually, I have to say, Wanasa is a player that I actually knew the name of. Um, they're on EU Northeast number two and on the global list number seventeen of all players in TFT. So they're definitely someone to look out for. I'm curious to see what they'll do in this lobby. And maybe they'll push for the chuck chuck, you know, just maybe. hoping we can get what we want to see. But we'll never know. A lobby should be starting very soon. And we just get to look at all those cute little legends. And I love them so much. I think this is one yeah. of like the side points that aren't really part of the TFT game, but that are just so cool that they brought in and they are fun to look at and you can collect them, level them up. And they have all of these little cute yeah. emotes, which is so, so cool to see. It just makes you want to spend money, honestly. That's that's really what it's about, and that's not a and that's not a bad thing because you can just get them all without you know being locked out of it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and every single time they break out the new skins, you're like, I hadn't even thought of doing that with that little legend, but it just happens. Um, and of course, level level one for Ovalpix coming out with the uh, shiny on fire Fenroar, very on brand. Let's see who gets the carousel. Yeah, and actually, like, the rod is getting picked up very, very late by Phoebe. And I'm looking for the BF sword. I just saw someone on top took it, but I couldn't see the name. But that's always something that players usually want to get, right? The, the comps at the moment are very dependent on, like, a lot of AD damage. So a BF sword is never a bad thing to start with. And now we will just see them go through their first couple of stages. And maybe we can already predict some things that are going on. Um, we are still hovering Vulpix, who will maybe go for Hellion, at least for the early. It seems like that might be a good idea. He also has Klet in his store that he could pick up. And he's just now hovering with other people. So we also see a Kha'Zix 2 for one of the players just there. I think it was Caruso. That's very early to hit a two-star unit. Yeah, and that's it, it happens sometimes. You know, if you get a very lucky shop uh, right here, you get the Kled out of it. Uh, I do think Vulpix is picking up the Poppy more for the night combo, which is mm -hmm. very popular early on. You, know, you get a lot of beef, a lot of brawl, and uh, you're not really worried about going down to uh, uh, with against too many units, even if you lose. Uh, same thing goes here. You know, you have some uh, some nice brawliness. If the Udyr are out there, the Vladimir, the Kalista is going to be put in automatically. So uh, yeah, it's not not really any, a start of anything specific, but it's just nice units to have on the board. Nice early game units for uh, Caruso. And uh, curious to see where they're going to go with this. They were the one that actually picked up the cloak in the beginning, which is mm -hmm. pretty much the least popular item to pick up in the first carousel ever. Um, I think we <laughs> never saw it be picked up willingly. And Caruso was the last one to pick up an item. You saw him like, there's two cloaks. I don't want either of them, but I have to pick one of them. So he then went for the character. Mm -hmm. uh, but eventually, he's, uh, he's pulling up something decent. And uh, especially the Irelia. I really like that Irelia center. It's something that uh, a lot of players like to do. Just put her up there. She's very beefy just in the way, especially if you put some defensive items on her, and then you can just yeah. transition into something else later if you need to. Absolutely, but I'm also trying to see what we might be getting at here, uh, and it seems like we might be hoping for an Abomination comp here on Caruso, because uh, we have the Kalista in there, we have the Brand in there, and we only need Nunu to actually make it a full Abo. And uh, that is a comp that I personally love to play just because it's so much fun to have that big abomination sigh and run in and take care of everything for you. Um, and it's very, very strong in early and middle game as well. It really is, but it does fall off near the end where the abomination himself doesn't really do enough a lot of the time. Mm. Uh, and spreading out those items over the other units really uh, waters down the rest of your composition. So I do, I do like it. I just don't, don't ever push through it till the end game, at least uh, personally. I've seen players do it and it sometimes really works out, but those items have to be on point. It's, uh, and if you can get some levels, up, like some stars on the rest of your units, that's really what it's about. Because uh, you can't have everything rely on the monstrosity most of the time. It's just a... No. That's not how it works. 
No, but with the addition of Fiddlesticks um, in this patch as an Abomination character, uh, we have a few comps that are actually very viable even in late game with Abomination. Because if you have a Velkos carry or a Zyra, or even if you manage to get a Heimerdinger carry together with the A-bomb, uh, that's definitely something to look out for. It's one of the most uh, yeah, competed comps that players are looking for because it's very reliable to get. Um, and I can say out of experience, it even even works for people like me to play so um, that is definitely a comp that is much preferable if you can get that Velkos or Syrah carry on two star early yeah well nice ass assassin Dawnbringer start here for Jimmery um, yeah it it's still gonna beat this Hellions oh it's close yeah it will it will it's too many units away Ziggs is not that good at rolling it out on their own but uh, fortunately for Jim Ray, will be uh, fine to do this right now. Uh, Going to be looking towards uh, yeah Phoebe and Jim Ray to actually keep up this uh, win streak at the moment. And mm. uh, Volpix as well, seeing uh, who gets out on top. It's usually always that one player that just keeps on winning. And the true win streaker is the one that we got to watch for in that situation. But uh, Silent as well, the other side is uh, definitely out there. Absolutely, and I'm just trying to see what they're playing. We see Jim Ray is on the Dawnbringers, and we have that Asa comp here on Jim Ray. Um, maybe if he can hit it, he'll go for a reroll Nocturne. I personally would love to see that. You know, that three star Nocturne in the end, that's really, really crazy. Um, but we'll have to see what he comes out with from the store. Uh, Silent has actually gotten the Nunu and he has a Kalos in the back, but I think he's still missing a brand to actually make the A-Bomb work. So that's another player that's trying to hit that, at least from what it looks like. Um, and I love that little, that little, little legend with the uh, Squid War. It's just oh, so cute. <laughs> it really is. I have the, I, personally, I really like the high, like running the high noon squink at the moment. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of, uh, of a certain unnamed character from another game title. Oh, um, really? Which, you know, I, I like, I really like to play them, but they, he's, he's good emotes, you know, the, the especially the, what like it's the, it's a number two emote where he just basically spasms out. It's, uh, it's, it's really, cause you can spam it and he just, just completely loses control. Uh, gonna be Absolutely. seeing Shining Star here pick up the BF Sword. Yeah, and that was uh, actually uh, late. Like, yeah, no exactly. one from the lower kind of places took the BF Sword, which is surprising to me, because usually that's one of the items you want to go for. We saw the Rod getting picked before the BF Sword, so that is definitely most curious. And here we're currently seeing some switching up of units on Jim Ray, who's currently, I think, contemplating what to go for with all of the options that are currently available to him. Um, yeah, let's that's see nice. what our top three players are going to come up with. So the fact that he has the Syndra on the on the bench that really hints that he's potentially looking for a Karma because if he can get mm -hmm. that Invoker combo up, that's going to be great. And you know the Dawnbringer Karma Invoker, it's not as strong as it used to be. Like I, you know, I already I already you know admit it to being the the Karma Dawnbringer one trick. So it's uh, it's how it works. But you know the Syndra is a very good unit to substitute in early because of the Invoker bonus. So you can put it mm -hmm. together with the with the Banana Mama herself. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the, and then of course brawlers are good early, so the Nunu and the uh, and the Gragas are just going to be a super nice combination. You got the you got the double assassin on as well. Yep. So uh, I mean, it's a fortune they couldn't get that keep that win streak up. That you know that tends to happen sometimes. Uh, but with that item already on the Kha'Zix, uh with the defensive start on the Gragas, and with everything that's on the bench right now, there's a very good. Uh, well, road to pivot. Uh, mm -hmm. The only worry is that there isn't that much room out of it. So right now it's very more sort of boxed into that one direction. Uh, and I'm not sure whether other players are going to read that and potentially be able to counter it. Because Riven is, for instance, already present on another board, which is very helpful for a combination like this. Absolutely. A very, very great points you just made there, and I fully agree. I'm just curious to see if Volpix and Phoebe are currently fighting against each other, because then one of them is going to have an end to their win streak, uh, which would be most interesting, but we're going to see it after this match here. And actually, Tazara has a Yazoo with two full items already on them. And that is definitely very, very dangerous to look out for as well. And yeah, here we see it. Volpix wins. Yeah, 
uh, we have we have it on a, on one of our other POVs. I was just peeking over to Mayo at the screen, and it was indeed Phoebe that uh, I mean it was a bear loss, like you see it only two points lost, so it really was very close between the two of them. But keeping that win streak alive is a very good feat for Vulpix, and that does Absolutely. mean that they're potentially going to be able to uh, just just run away with this lobby at, the, at least in the early game for now. Uh, closing in on level six, of course, it's like the stage we're at. Uh, end of stage two and uh, a lot of players will be uh, showing their hand quite quickly after that because that's when you start building their strongest board that's mm. when you're starting to uh, to really decide a direction uh, it's not the complete end of it all i do see players still pivot uh, during stage three a lot of the time but you know starting stage four you do need to have a bit of an idea of where you're at uh, and that's where most units kind of be really stolen anymore from everybody you can you can try and grief people you know make sure that they don't get <laughs> access to certain units yeah uh, but you don't really do it for your own board anymore in that situation yeah, and we are actually just hovering Vulpix, seeing that they are picking out the Dawnbringer Legionnaire build. And maybe, maybe, maybe we're going to see them roll quite soon. We just leveled up to make sure we got that amount of units on our board at level 6. Just getting that one step ahead of everybody else. And Ooh. that is the Needly in the back who's absolutely taking care of herself and holding off on two other units. Just, you know, zoning for her teammates. And that should be going very well for them here. Um, just this Raka to finish it off. And she does a lot of damage on 2-star, but it won't be enough for Jim Ray, who's now taking the L from Vulpix, keeping up with their win rate. And that's that's where it starts. You know, you see the first time that those two players run into each other, they're both running a very similar core comp with the, with mm. the Dawnbringers. Uh, and you can just see that, that having that Riven advantage, having that level 6 advantage, is just putting uh, Vulpix over the edge over there. Now, it gets the Ivern in as well. You know, you can get the Revenant combo up because Dawnbringers aren't the strongest in terms of frontline sometimes. Uh, so keeping the Revenant for the CCs, the Ivern, get a Volley Bear up. Maybe, I mean, maybe you can add a Vittle Sticks, but usually you will not do that because, you know, Optimally, you go uh, uh, Ivern and, uh, and Volley. Mm. Uh, but yeah, potentially could also still put in Nocturne to have some more Assassin bonus. Still a possibility. So I like that. like the pickup of the Ivern. It's uh, potentially going to be a very valuable uh, le legend for them later on. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Ivern is very strong. I don't think we'll see a Nocturne because for Nocturne to really be viable, you'd want him to be on 3-star instead of 2-star. Two 2-star two Nocturne yeah. just isn't going to do as much. So if you're really wanting to play around a Nocturne, you'd have to like reroll push it. And I don't see that happening at this moment for Vulpix. I mean, if the story gets really, really lucky for some reason, we might, but I don't think it's a high possibility at this moment. Um, but now I haven't broken that win streak for them. We're definitely gonna see them spy out what other people are playing. And he's just now realizing, I mean, he probably realized that before, but uh, that was a little head shake at some other person playing the same comp, you know, always annoying to happen when you're pushing that comp, you're doing really well. And then suddenly it starts to kind of uh, decrease and you have a loss and you look around the lobby and you see someone else getting the units that you were aiming for. And you're like, ah, <laughs> I wanted those. <laughs> Yeah, and, I mean, you can see, but they're, they're both kind of uh, suffering from it. Like, Jim Ray yeah. especially hasn't run around in a while. Uh, just won the last round, but keeps having a lo loss streak after that. Um, but Vulpix has been able to sort of sustain decently up till now. Like, he's still on the number two spot, has 80 HP. Like, they're they're doing okay. Uh, and Jim Ray is not even doing that terribly. He's still on 76. So they are keeping up right now. They're not, the, not throwing themselves to the bottom, so to speak, with that. Um, but they, they do have to worry, or like they have to watch out and keep track of each other to see if they have to pivot yes or no, and if so, what direction do they pivot in? Uh, because honestly, sometimes one of those players, usually one of those players will just break. Um, who's gonna break first is really the question here. <laughs> Absolutely, and we see two tiers getting left behind in that wheel. Those item choices at the moment are very curious to me because nobody seems to be wanting any of those AP mana items really for themselves. Jim Ray hitting that Soraka for the second time on two star and he's probably hoping to get her on three star to make sure she can, as you said, banana mama carry this board a little bit. Uh, while as I don't think Vulpix is actually going for that. Um, I think he's 
putting a little more focus on the Nidalee and also our Gragas in the front line from what it looks like. Yeah, of course, with this next round, we're gonna also also be seeing um, who is uh, who's potentially gonna be going out early. I mean, Bitbrain player is currently on 48 HP. They really have to make some moves here. Uh, currently, they are up against. I can't actually find out who they're up against because they're not on one of our screen. Oh, they are actually. Yeah, they're up mm. against Vulpix at the moment, so that's not a great draw either. Nope. Uh, doing okay so far. I mean, it's not something you have on your screen right now, but I could just start report on that. I think mm. they might actually be uh, be getting away with this one. I think Vulpix is no, gonna take can... another loss. I was going to say, we're going to see it for a second, but uh, yeah, you're right, it's a loss for Wolpix, and that is maybe the point where Big Brain Player, I mean, I love that name, uh, where they <laughs> can maybe turn it around, make sure they're climbing back up. Uh, I once heard someone say HP is just another resource in TFT, right? So they wear comms where you actually actively tried to lose HP, so you would get like a certain place in the wheels. I remember, I think it's like two years ago, the Blender comp where you had like that that spat on Nocturne that would allow you to go super bonkers. But in order to get the spat, you would need to be first in the wheel. So people were actively trying to lose HP to get that item. And then once they had it, they would just zoom up from place eight to number one with no problems whatsoever. So that is also a comp that I love to see. Um, and that's just what makes TFT so fun, right? Like all of those really, really crazy tactics to get through, to manage to climb from the very bottom to the top uh i think that's one of the wins that actually feels the best right when you've been on eighth yeah. place for quite some time and then you suddenly like race away from everybody else and finally win that lobby that's so yeah. great it's it's not a true comeback until you feel a sweat drop on your back that's uh, that's uh, what i've heard <laughs> someone say at some point it definitely wasn't me <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, Alex Caruso right now, we're following, we just had the radium item drops for everybody, uh, and I was looking at this comp for, Ale for Alex, and I'm like, yeah, this this is exactly, you know, a place where you want to be at. Sure, you would like your, um, uh, your Hecarim to be a little bit more buffed, you know, they want it to be two-star at least, but you got the three-star Vayne in the back, you got the Ranger bonus, because you got the Ash as well, the Misfortune in the corner, doesn't really do that much yet because he doesn't really get the huge bonus but she is at least adding to the four forgotten you got the knights up so right now there is a really good potential for co consistently being able to frontline a lot of damage and then for crit vein to just do her thing it's uh, absolutely it's a really big deal and that's that it's, it's hard to really get past that i mean vein is is really annoying like that especially if you're able to three star her and his economy is still on on, uh, on par as well so a uh, very dangerous uh, player to be dealing with, and you do see him uh, getting a win streak as a result at the moment. Let's see how long he can carry that on. Yeah, and he just got that Warmark's finish and Hecarim as well. He's going to be so, so beefy and barely unable to kill that Hecarim now. And as yeah. you said before, three-star Vayne is basically unbeatable, I think. There are a few comms that could manage. I mean, you could Sephir her. Um, if you outplay her with like positioning, that could also work. But that is definitely a lethal comp to look out for. You don't want to be in a three-star Vayne's way if she has item and she does have two of her core items already on her um so yeah definitely alex caruso one of the players in this lobby who has an amazing board at the moment and i wouldn't be surprised if he takes number one you know what the scariest part is he still has two nikos on his bench he yeah two nikos helps like how whatever he wants to build into whatever like five star he finds a uh, five cost unit he finds he can just two start straight away which yep. is a ridiculous like premise already now he's added he's adding more attack speed to uh, to vein as well get the zeke's herald up misfortune level two uh yeah this is uh this is something that's not going to lose for a little bit uh we do have tough zara as well on a fire on fire at the tops uh i haven't really looked at their board so far so let's see if we can get a look on that soon we don't have a, don't have a pov so it's going to be a bit tricky but i'll try and uh, keep my eye out uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is Alex Caruso currently on a streak, going up against. This is Vulpix. Or is this Jim? Right I here? think it's Tough Zara. Um, but I'm Trying not to find sure. The little legends. <laughs> it's up there, but it's uh, up there. It's just uh, it's just blocked. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't so, Tough Zara anyway. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I think you were probably no, right with Jimray. And Alex lost that round. That much vein damage and it still couldn't keep him safe. Oh my, oh my, that's not good for him. Oh, 
Ooh, We're just looking nice. around, trying to see what each of the players are currently running. There are so many great comps in this lobby already, and we're only in stage 4-3. Tavzara is still on fire, win streaking here, while Karizut has just lost their win streak. And Big Brain Player will be out soon if they can't manage to climb back up. And we see it's the Asa comp. They can't tell at the moment if they have that Nocturne on level 3, which I think they were aiming for. But that is definitely not a good place to be in last place. With 13 HP left, very, very dangerous. Yeah, they really have to make some, uh, some moves quite soon, or at least their moves have to start paying off soon. Uh, we, we are still like uh, on board with Vulpix, who is still running that Dawnbringer, is doing it a little bit successfully again. Uh, looks like they might be getting run over here, that cannon is just uh, a menace to deal with once they're starred, as well as have those fire items, which uh, is happening at the moment. Hmm. And they're still battling with the Dawnbringer, of course, with Jimray. Jimray doing, doing decently right now, is on a win streak, but he picked up that Karma. He picked up that Karma that Vulpix really, really wants and still hasn't gotten. Uh, so the, the, the Dawnbringer Karma is alive on one board and is still being sought after by another, but they're still not pivoting. Both of them are holding fast, and that is the one you want. That Garen, Vulpix is going to get a huge upgrade off of that one. That's going to work great. I think they can just sub out the Ivern almost and just do it that way, because you don't really have the Revenant bonus anyways. But they can True. also sub out one of the Dawnbringers just to get that, uh, get that bonus back. Very true. We just saw a big plane player, and I think they were aiming for the cloak, but Phoebe managed to pick that before them, and so they couldn't get it, and we could see them take the belt and just, you know, angry emote. <laughs> so that is probably not what they were looking for, and I'm hoping they can hold on to it. We're seeing now Vulpix is adding that Volley Bear on their board, and that is the replacement. There is the Karma, and now it should go up from here. Hopefully, we're just seeing them go for the six Dawnbringer. We have them on the board now. Just slam the items quickly to make sure we can survive this. Otherwise, we could be in grave danger if our karma rabbi, is not itemized yeah. in time. That's a beautiful combo of items as well. I mean, they still have a little bit of HP. If they lose this round, they're not out. It's just, it would be a shame if you lose it because of the item timing. Yeah. Uh, but they just seem to be stomping over this Bomb. board. Like that Garen and Karma just got exactly what they needed. Uh, got a good start, and now just can keep on rolling. I don't know if they can even put this. Gun, they're even going to put the Syndra back in. They might just sell it because uh, their board is, of course, full at the moment. Their bench. Um, yeah, I don't think you're gonna go for the three new news. I mean, they're nice in your shop, but uh, it was a nice combo. <laughs> I was gonna oh, say we're not Garen selling two, anything. Two we're just gonna wow. make two star units out of everything. That's like everything. five two star units in one stage. That's so much damage spike that we just got after winning already. So yeah. Volpix definitely in a very good position here. I'm curious to see what Caruso is doing because he just lost again with that three star vein, and here we see big brain player facing Volpix and we have Caruso facing Phoebe who has the very very nice Aphelios comp back here oh he has the better ranger doesn't he oh that's uh, that's a shame it's a ranger off but eventually Ooh. Aphelios will go down it's because the front line is so much beefier for mm. Caruso like that Hecarim especially ah. with that uh, gradient vest is just amazing we do see the first out big brain player did just uh, get yeeted out of this lobby eighth place uh, good effort though like we, d we didn't see that much of them of course because we, we usually were on different boards but mm. doesn't mean that they didn't put up a good fight uh, and they have one of the one of the best little legends in my opinion you know the, uh, the ice cream yeah. Yeah, and the Fury Horn. I love that Fury Horn because it looks like my cat. You know, there's this this uh, Lunar Festival uh, Fury yeah. Horn that just mm -hmm. looks one on one exactly like my cat, and I failed to pick it up. So I'm definitely hoping for the next uh, Chinese New Year, so I can hopefully get it then. Uh, I hope it comes back. And you yeah, months. it's not that far away. Even anymore, it's like not that far months, away. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> So all of the you players are just, you know, slow rolling. We can see Caruso trying to hit a few more units here, hoping to get that Hecarim 3. And he's actually going further than 50 gold, getting those units on the board. Shining Star has another option available. That board is not looking very finished to me yet. Ironclad, Skirmisher, Sentinel Knight. It feels like something's missing here. We could go for the 2-star Lucian, 2-star Jax, and uh, yeah, 
maybe we should decide sure. on something he has to he has to go for the jacks it's obviously his carry at the moment uh, I mean, yeah. he could pivot to another carry but that jacks I mean, this is this is all this is a lot about positioning this board hmm. because the skirmishers yeah you want them to ramp us as, as much as possible especially your jacks so your jacks needs to not be targeted by anything early on uh, at the moment that's working jacks barely has taken any damage and everything he has taken he's healed back up and i think he's gone to a point where he can ramp through everything on the board but it's going to be a, a close one well yeah that aphelios was his last obstacle now he's going to clean yep. everything up but that positioning was good he's not on the front line he's not completely in the back line so he's not susceptible to either assassins or to most items uh, or to something like a uh, like a thrash or uh, something else that like targets the furthest away unit so he's built their jacks a really nice nest but also hasn't blocked the jacks from any access to enemy enemy units so at this point in time that Jax is just uh, getting ready to farm while everything else is still uh, is still battling it out you would like that upgrade on the Nautilus because uh, you know right now it gives the night bonus but a little yep. bit more beefiness would be nice but you can just see the Nautilus is on so many other boards that it's hard to go that you're gonna find a third one right now yeah, I think the problem for Shining Star is also that all of the units on the front line, except for I think Aurelia, are on one star still. So we have Nautilus one star, Galia one star, and we have Rel one star, as well as Olaf one star. So that is a lot of kind of low HP units that you would technically want to be your front line, um, yeah. which can often not work out ideal, right? They fall off too quickly and can't manage to protect your carries. So we're hoping that this will go good. But the Jax is in such a good position, as you already mentioned, that they can get through here quite comfortably. And we should be hitting Ooh. those frontline units quite soon as well. That's a fun shop right there. Not quite going to yeah. be able to buy everything because of the lack of gold, but uh, you know, if you could get, get pick up a Volibari in here, it could be fun. I uh, don't really have a lot of synergy with something else, so I understand that they're not doing it. Uh, and I think a big deal of why their comp is right now working is because he's got that double carry going on. Like, the Jack is relatively hard to kill after a few seconds, and then at Lucian in the backline with the Titan's Resolve is, is just putting out a lot of damage at the same time. It's a two-star Lucian as well, so actually has a bit of beef to him. Uh, and he's waiting, I think, for an opportunity to potentially put the Senna in to actually get that mm. combo going. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you could go for that very, very nice Sentinel comp with Lucian carry, but we have the Jack in the front line, Jack's in the front line. So I don't think that's what we're running well, for. Not anymore. Meanwhile, <laughs> not anymore, but Lucian will pick this up and can he match that Draven? For me, yeah, it looks can. like he can, but that is the old. And here we go. Tazara has taken a little bit of a loss there. Meanwhile, Phoebe was kicked out, place seven for this lobby but they will get reseated together with brain big brain player and psy is now on the very edge trying to survive in this lobby three hp left while everybody else is sub 30 so uh, you definitely want to make sure you give it your everything at this point and not have any gold left right because what are you going to spend it on when you get kicked out yeah, and that's that's a conundrum that more players run into quite often. Yeah. Uh, but this time around, not so much. And I do see like a few a few more Lucians on that on the on that bench. Just change back the Sentinel in for the scrimmage. I don't really know what the play is there, unless you're going to go more Sentinels. Um, and he's oh he's got the, got the he's got the emblem, so it kind of feels like he has to. Hmm. Uh, I would honestly personally would have taken out, out a Sentinel and then put the emblem on someone else. Uh, but now you've got the six Sentinel bonus, which can also be super valuable. So I'm not against it at all. This is uh, this is going to be an interesting one. I do think it will really help out the Jax and the Lucian to do even more damage if their Sentinel bonus is, uh, you know, is added on. And it does add more HP without actually having to get those two star units. So that is the advantage you get from that. Absolutely. And I actually love that comp. I think Sentinel is such a fun comp to play just because it protects your carry before they drop death dead, right? So you have that big giant shield coming in, taking care of everything, but it won't be enough for Shining Star at this moment as that Lucian goes down. But we have the option to oh, go for a second man. two star Lucian and here is our radiant item. So maybe we can come out on top here. We're only missing two more Lucians oh. to go for three star Lucian. 
Revolution. And we have the Thieves Gloves here that will be like put that. on Galio, and that's such a good fit. Galio can do with anything, really. You can do AP damage, AD damage. It scales so well. The ult is super, super helpful. And if we could get that Galio on two-star, that would really be everything Shining Star needs to compete here, while everybody else is also doing very, very great. And I'm sorry, my cat is currently trying to be in the center of attention here just getting rid of him for that second while we see shining star feed Volpix, and who is going to come out alive out of this we have lucian versus to karma and that will definitely be super scary that garen is just so tanky and he cannot manage to win but i think if he would have had that two star galio things would have looked a little bit different here and I think that's really the only problem that Shining Star has right now. It, 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 too few unit upgrades in certain areas. I mean, still the one star Olaf, the one star Nautilus, uh, the Galio that is not upgraded the way you want it to be. Yeah. Uh, like th there's just there's just too much missing at the moment. And while he's relatively close to a three star Lucian, which would be amazing, mm. uh, I just don't know if that Lucian is going to get the chance to do enough uh, to battle against this. A lot of items from this uh, this drop, of course. A lot of items that would also have been really helpful and uh, are still really helpful uh, to. Yeah. Uh, uh, Shining Star. I mean, first of all, gi that Giant Slayer, that is going to go on the Lucian, so he's going to put out even more damage, uh, especially to the high health units. Does get the two-star Olaf upgrade, picks up the uh, the Gwen, uh, picks up a few other units that might be very helpful. This is going to be a... Uh, Here's a the upgrade, Galio. Let's go. Finally. We have Galio two-star. Meanwhile, I have to say, Silent got kicked out. Now we're on our top five at five, the moment yeah. one more player and we're gonna get into the top four but those items as you said are so good for shining star here we also have the rel 2 available but not enough gold to buy her so i think we're gonna lock the store in this one just making sure Avoid, we get yeah. her and we're gonna put a morello on someone I'm not sure if I'm a fan of a Morello on Senna. Um, we did have a Fiddlesticks earlier. I'm not sure if we sold him again. Looks like it yeah. to me. That would have been a very nice pick for a Morello Nomicon, right? Get that Morello Nomicon on the Fiddlesticks, just making sure he stays very nice and protected with that little more HP, but also does so much more damage when ulting. Finally, but this is going to be the win for Shining Star here. And we're on our top four. Tavzara has taken a loss now coming in on fifth place. And Alex Caruso with that three-star vein is on place for clinging to his life with three HP left. That's definitely going to be a challenge to try and keep up here with Volpix, Shining Star and Jim Ray, who are also running very oh. strong comms. The three star hacker him as well. He's got the three, the two, the, the three, well, basically frontline three stars, uh, for that vein to just pop a lot. Like, this has been, he's been getting good shops. Mm. Uh, it's just, is this comp right now the best thing you can run? So far, it seems to have been at least getting a top four consistently, oh. but it's just not able to pull through. I mean, you're fighting against two Ivorns and that tanky Garen. I understand that you're not gonna, gonna come out on top of that one. Um, and it turns out that three star vein is still beatable. Absolutely. That was the team throwing in the shrooms in the end, just annihilating that vein. Whereas Jim Ray has already taken a loss here against Shining Star, trying to keep up here with the level three pike. That's very interesting to me. And we can also see the Gragas on three star in the front line together with our Kazakhs on three star. So definitely a high rolling comp as well, right? A very lucky Garen. store. Oh no. But will it be enough? I see the double Garen on Volpix's board. And I'm, I'm hard pressed to just say they're going to walk away with this. I mean, they've got the Karma in the back. They've got the double Garens. They got the, you know, it's it's completely itemized and upgraded. Uh, it's hard to see him not come out on top of this. But mm. I mean, it's the two Dawnbringers fighting it out here. Is it going to be the exit here for Jim Ray, or is he is he going to again ah. be a, a thorn in the side of Volpix? And it looks like it's not going to be the former. The latter, it's going to be the former. It's exit for Jim Rain. Volpix uh, establishing themselves as the dominant Dawnbringer player. So the top two, let's see the duel to finish it out. Who's going to get the right item to upgrade their comp? I mean, they already have so many items. What can they even do anymore to make this better? Their carries are fully itemized. 
gonna be the Dawnbringer emblem. That's Naturally. so good That's for Voltix. And I think I mean, Shining yeah. Star is just gonna go for something defensive, trying to lift this. But that's definitely a very best and slot item that Vulpix could just grab here. I mean, how lucky can you really get? Very, very good lobby for him here. Super, super good store. And we're just trying to make something out of the items here for Shining Star, who's now on their very last roll, hoping to get that three star Lucian. Three star but Lucian is so close. The Goddess the of Fortune HP. won't be so kind as to get that and we see Volpix just walling everything and he has that Teemo in the back line who's just throwing shrooms out nuking everything that gets in his way and just now trying to hope we can make it another round hoping that after we survive this maybe we can go for the Lucian 3 star yeah I'm, I'm looking right now I'm trying to f trying to figure out what Volpix is, uh, is trying to do see what he gets in their shop mm, yeah. I mean, yeah I mean we, we so lift this is it is one round, but it's one not round, enough. So it stands between them, and because you, you really want to get to the next round to maybe get another item bonus. Ooh, they're throwing they're throwing it out. They're yeah. gonna try and pivot something, get a different carry, and they're gonna go for the action. Which I, honestly, I'm not not surprised by. I mean, the action can get, gonna get into very annoying positions. If you can we get, don't have enough units right for what's going on. Oh my! I think he, I think I think he's he's just letting it go. I don't think he sees a yeah. way out of this. That's so it. He's That's just, over. He's just throwing it. Oh man, that's, the, that's so sad. GG. <laughs> How that's... many can take Lucian with him? How many? I mean, I'm gonna bet on maybe one, but I don't think even <laughs> one's gonna happen. Nope. No, no, no. Volpix taking the win here in our first lobby with that adorable little legend on him here. Very, very nice win. Super cool comp that he played for us. Two Garants on two star. I mean, that is something that you should definitely be aware of, right? Yeah for sure. Uh, and of course, we have a lobby going on at the side. They haven't quite finished yet, but we'll be able to tell you the scores as soon as possible. That being said, though, Vulpix coming out on top of this one, and uh, they were looking quite well. And that being said, you know, they were still battling with Jim Ray for that Dawnbringer spot, both of them still in the top four, Jim Ray actually getting third. Hmm. Uh, that's not something you see a lot. A lot of the time, these players that are trying to build a very similar core composition do kind of cannibalize each other. But yeah. it does seem that there's just enough Dawnbringer to go around. It is. There are so many Dawnbringer champions, and I love that that phrasing, uh, that they're cannibalizing each other, because it's very true, right? You're just beating off and eating off at each other, trying to get in. And I think we see the other lobby here just finishing up um, for these players. We see TMS Jean Kiki trying to barely survive here um, with the last HP2 is what they have um, and we're hoping maybe to actually make this a turn of events and try to beat that win streak that's currently going on. A lot of positioning is being figured out, trying to debate their opponent, but look at that. It's the Garen, it's the Volley Bear. They got the CC going, they got the front line. It's a tough one, it's a tough hand to beat. KRC Lilith. Oh, what a board. Look at that. The Revenants, DC, the Karma. It's a double karma redemption win, on Ivern. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's just be aiming at this point. <laughs> yeah, and, and to be fair, look, uh, Karma was coming up a little bit last week, and this week I mean, we're starting off with two Karma wins already. It's uh, It might be a trend. Let's see if we can see them some more Dawnbreaker coming up. I thought it was done. I thought we were done with the Dawnbreaker Karma. You know, I thought I couldn't get any more wins out of it, but maybe I gotta go back. Maybe I just gotta go yeah. back to Dawnbreaker Karma and just uh, just force it every single time. Because like I said, it just looks like there's enough Dawnbreaker to go around, always. True, that's your sign. You should take it. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it. With these like very high skilled players, it's also knowing of when to roll for what, right? Like if yeah, you're really for looking sure. for that karma, you need to know when you're going to invest all of your gold to actually go look for it. And you also need to be able to just spy the other boards, make sure there are still enough karmas in the pot to eventually make it. We saw this on Volpix, who was just barely holding on to his life until he finally hit that karma very late in uh, as opposed to what Jim Ray had. Um, but in the end, the items yeah. and just the positioning and the coming together of the comp was a little bit better for Volpix, which made them win here. And I think we're now getting our players reseated, right? Yeah, 
so now what we're going to do, we're going to take, uh, you know, we're going to assign the seats to every player in, in both lobbies. Make sure they get shuffled around a little so they get the chance to play with and against some other players. Uh, and then we're going to do that again after round two. And then we have a top eight uh, based on those scores. Points will not reset during the day. So the top eight will still be able to play with the points they get from these games. And then we'll see who gets out on top. But uh, I mean, it's a good point you bring up as well from Vulpix, you know, the, that turning point that they found. And that's yeah. also, I, I, I didn't actually get a chance to bring it up during the gameplay because there was just so much going on. But there was that point, And that was just because they chose to roll down. They rolled down completely. Like they basically emptied their chest. And that's a choice. You need to understand when you make that choice. And Vulpix made at such a critical time in such a valuable moment that they just got all the units they needed that's when they picked up the garen the karma everything just came together there and that's a beautiful moment i mean i really like seeing players make a choice like that sticking with it and if it then works out i mean yeah he's gonna run away with everything that was the point where we said as well could just be a number one and turns out we were right <laughs> absolutely and I'm just spying at, you know, the leaderboards that we have at the moment. We saw yeah. Wolfix take the win and KRC Lilith take the win. So those two are definitely going into the same lobby just now, right? No, no, we uh, we keep the winner separate. So uh, the winners oh. get like a seed one, the second gets seed two, and then we switch them around. Like It's like a snake draft. If you, I don't know if you've ever seen one of those uh, where we, because uh, otherwise, you know, people just stay in the same lobby all the time. Um, they won't necessarily go in the same lobby. Sometimes they will. It, it, it really depends on where we end up. But this time around, they won't. Uh, so we're going to get okay. KRC Lilith and Vulpix in different lobbies. So maybe we're going to oh. get the KRC lobby this time around. Maybe we go back to the Vulpix lobby. But we'll see which uh, which we're going to get. Because uh, they have been seated. They have been uh, assigned their lobby. And uh, I mean, obviously, we can talk about the top players. But let's see if one of the bottom players can actually pull out something. Because sometimes you just have a bad round. You know, that bad first round, you just don't get what you True. need. You're kind of confused. Maybe you, you were uh, you were split vision a little bit, getting very dizzy on your comps. Uh, so let's see if they can maybe turn that around for themselves and get a uh, more higher placement. And uh, of course, Jim Ray, I mean, was kind of battling to not... Uh, get bottom bottom four a lot of the time still got third uh that can be a tactic as well you don't always have to go for first and especially mm. because we don't have that bonus point for first place here uh that's a very viable thing to do you will see players be a much more um uh they, you play a different game when you don't feel like you have to go for first you play a different game when you know your scores transfer like yeah. that math of the points that you get per game is something that also happens in these players games we know they're good at math that's just a part of this game as well you know like the calculations the risk assessment mm -hmm. everything so that is a part that you also play you play the leaderboard you play the system you play the, the tournaments and uh that's what these players are also really good at sometimes it also depends on who you're playing against, right? Yeah. So if you scout the lobby and you see people are willing to play crazy comps, um, then that also tells you on what kind of comps you can you can build up on where you can go with these other players. Or, you know, if everybody's running Dawnbringers, then you know that's something you don't want to do, right? Uh, the, yeah. Eventually, as we just saw, there is enough Dawnbringers to go around, but it won't be enough for all eight players to do that so you really need to be aware of what kind of mindset the other players have and then adapt to it and i think we've seen that work out quite well during the last cups um where players you know even if they uh, landed rather in the bottom in the bottom places before um they came up higher in the end and i'm hearing we're going to go in game we see the loading screen nearly being finished and yeah who do you think is going to take it? I mean, I'm not going to bet specifically on Vulpix again. We're going to start on their POV, so we're going to the Vulpix lobby. So that's what mm -hmm. we're going to call it. Because uh, lobby A and B or 1 and 2 sounds a bit uh, as if the other lobby is less good, which is not the case yeah. at all, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, you know, I, I mean, I'm going to keep hammering on it until until someone doesn't forcibly pick it up. But the cloak is left. Negatron cloak. I mean, it's called Negatron, so you would already think that the neg is right there. People don't really f associate positively with it. But I don't think a simple rename will do it for the for the game. That will definitely <laughs> be a patch thing. So uh, going to get the Gragas start. Not at all a weird one with the belt. Going to going to be able to go into Dawnbringer again if they want to, but especially build up a little bit of beefy frontline early on. 
Absolutely. And that is so much fun. If you, you know, you have a brawler or a skirmisher frontline very early, they're super viable throughout early and the start of mid game, just making sure if you have one oh. damage unit in the back line, we can manage here. And that is wow. It's what a shop we have here again. That is lucky. I have to say. <laughs> Getting I mean, all of the units you need to uh, go into an early Dawnbringer, yeah. Some people just have the phone number of Mordog, I guess. That's just how it works, you know? Just going to be able to get those to get those uh, early lobbies every single time. But uh, not a guarantee just yet. It has the possibility to slam the, the Fire Emblem already, you know, making sure you get it off. I don't know if they're going to do it, but it would be a decent item. It definitely works throughout the entire game, works with a lot of different comps. Uh, but you got to be sure of yourself if you want to already do it now. I don't think they're going to do it. I mean, it's a very early, early slam. Yeah, no, that I think it would be too early. Uh, you just want to wait out a little bit. Um, sometimes you even want to go and like wait for the radiant items until you decide what you eventually come up with. Just because some of the radiant items are so so strong, and if you get a certain radiant item, you just you know you know you have to put it on that carry or something. So uh, we definitely are hitting units here for Volpex. That is the two star Kazix, and now we're gonna slam the. Item. he's doubling down on this putting the vein in and that will definitely be a very good comp to go into those early matches he's gotten such good shops i mean he's, he's able to two star plenty of units early on not every player is going to be able to do that it's just a guarantee because that's you know statistically very unlikely uh but yeah you're going to be able to get get two good uh, good damage dealers in you got the gragas to uh, with well, with the sunfire cape that did slam it in the end uh, and just going to keep it going from there. That Riven with the Bramble is going to be a little bit tricky to get through, but because both of his units, especially that Kha'Zix, just ignores that front line, he can just... doesn't really have to worry about it, and a 2-star versus a 1-star is a no-brainer. Still gets away with it because the ultimate went off first. That's a lucky break there from... Uh, Absolutely. Well, I, am, I am her sushi? Is that is it? I am her <laughs> yeah, okay. I am her sushi. Well, I want to know who the, who the her is in this situation, actually. Um, you can be the her if you maybe, want to. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't identify as that, but you know, it could be. Yeah, I mean, anybody could be. We don't know for sure, but uh, yeah. yeah, we're just switching POVs now. It seems like. Um, let's yeah. see. Back to Volpix. Back to Volpix. We go. And right now, we're just trying to make sense of what's going on. We already have the Thieves' Claws on Kha'Zix here. Vulpix is going in for a very strong early game here, trying to, you know, slam everything he has. And that is very, you know, I won't say unethical, but definitely unconventional, right? Normally, we see players rather hold on to their items, see what makes sense throughout middle game, and then decide on what items to eventually pick. But uh, Vulpix has a different approach to that if, if you want to win streak it is a very viable strategy the problem is that they're not able to uh so so he's going for like the all-in strat right so he's spending yeah. all his gold sp sp spending all his items trying to win streak early uh the problem is if you don't win streak it can backfire and right now he's only lost one round it's not that big of a problem right but mm -hmm. you got to keep win streaking now in order to really make this viable because if you keep winning losing winning losing winning losing then other people are going to get better items they're going to get better units they're going to be able to bank more gold uh, so that direction has to really uh, start paying off after this. Uh, does have the Nunu in the shop right now? Could go for the double brawler. Uh, but yeah, what do you sell? That's the question, right? Uh, I mean, he could just put Leona. one on the board and then swap them. But you know, um, we putting out the Nunu. We have that Kalosa on the bench. We could go for a bomb if Brand eventually came up, <laughs> just to stabilize that build at the moment. That would definitely work out. And we are going to click through the other players. At least we did for a second. And after this one, the wheel will come up. Um, maybe that will tell us a little bit more about what the players are going to pick here in these games. Right now, he's facing Phoebe. Phoebe in the earlier lobby, taking it out rather early. Maybe they can make a better game in this one here. Right now, they're having a very strong, beefy board at the beginning, but it won't be enough to face Volpix all in comp that he has built so, so early. Uh, nicely done from Volpix. Now starting the win streak up again, also saving up a little bit of gold. This will be uh, probably the start where he starts to like stabilize a little bit, where the chaos is uh, starting to, to drop down a little. 
Um, but not necessarily. I mean, they can still go on. I'm uh, going to see Jim Ray and John KK being able to able, able, able to pick up the first units, the first items over here. But that carousel is filled with cloaks, actually. Well, filled with cloaks is a bit, a bit of an overstatement. Uh, but they are being picked up now. Because, of course, when you know we can make the runans, when you can make some other item combinations, you will pick them up a little bit more often. Um, yeah. That being said, uh, belt being left does tell me that players either already have their defensive items or they already have way too many belts. Uh, and True. most of people and most players are trying to like build a carry right now and this does seem like to be a very aggressive lobby at the moment so everyone is looking to slam early and damage slamming damage items early is usually more valuable than slamming defensive items because yeah. damage items are almost always useful in units uh defensive items are as well but you don't know how strong your front line is going to be and whether they're going to need the items uh, as well as what your front line is going to be is usually more of a mystery so uh, committing on that carry, which everyone's currently doing, is a uh, is a, is an interesting idea, but also very wise when you see that everyone else is doing it. Because if you're lacking on damage, it doesn't matter how much HP you have, you will never be able to kill the other side. True, and with defensive items, you also need to be kind of aware what other players are playing, right? You wouldn't yeah. want to go in with like uh, AD like armor items uh, against an AP comp, right? And vice versa. So you definitely yeah. need to wait a little bit to see what are my other teammates or, you know, uh, competitors running. So to actually be able to slam a defensive item that will make sense uh, to be protected against that unit. And we see the Leona trying to fight her way against those Hellions and it's gonna work out. She's just so beefy on two star already. That is Phoebe's win here. Barely makes it. And yeah, I, I mean, to be fair, it's also more fun to slam offensive items quite early, right? Nobody wants to see a round that ends in the end rage uh, due to the timer going off just because tanks can't kill each other. We've seen that in past patches. I don't think we've seen it this much in this patch. But uh, yeah, it's just more fun if everything kind of goes off, explodes, you annihilate carries in the backline rather than you have four tanks facing four tanks and everybody's kind of like soft punching each other until the timer goes off. I love that. I, I do love that because there's so much strategy to playing the Enrage game. Like it's, <laughs> it's really hard to do because you, can, you can't really plan for a lot of the time. But when you can, when you know that everyone's doing it, it becomes a very smart, very fun game because it's all about like the positioning, the eye items and you know who goes first etc it's uh it's a very very fun game it's uh it's it's different but really? it's yeah it, it is way. different i don't like it all that much i'd much rather they you know go in strong and early and try to delete things rather than waiting there i think as a player it's always like oh no we're going into the enrage timer again it's just gonna take that long <laughs> and it tilts me a little bit to be fair which might be also part of the game strategy right if your yeah. opponents are just always in fight for that long until the enrage timer goes off uh, you know, maybe they'll tilt a little bit and make mistakes, but... Yeah. Uh, your rhythm definitely does. Yeah. Uh, of course, it's going to get a little bit of NPC around. Some item drops are going to be happening of, uh, happening right now. And we do have a defensive belt, you know, lying around here for Junkeke. It could also try and make maybe make it into a, uh, you know, Zeke's Herald. Uh, does have the opportunity for a stone plate at the moment. Don't think they're going to be going for that one because it's a very... Uh, it's a very early choice to make, but the Nikos is definitely welcome. I mean, you can always use a Nikos for something. Absolutely. I mean, as we said, or as we saw in the lobby before that as well, having two Nikos and just being able to hold on to them until you get into the five cost unit realm, right? Then you can get that volley bear and insta slam him to level two and other things, you know, a Viego, a Heimerdinger, even a Teemo, um, whatever floats your boat, you can do it with two Nikos uh, in the very end. That's just, just a sleight of hand to have that really makes you sit comfortable if you're looking for those final matches. Currently, we're, we're still on Jean Keke's build, uh, build will not. I don't think that Leona's going to have it. Oh, it's Leona. Sorry, the Nidalee will have enough. And it uh, turns out the Kha'Zix and the Nunu slams are just too much. Yeah. It's... Uh, yeah, I, understandable. You know, they burst a unit down within uh, within a split second all of a sudden with their ultimates. So not at all too uh, surprised by that. That being said, going over to Draco, seeing what they're building. They have some knights on the on the bench and on the board. Build is building up that front line around their uh, around their cled. 
not an unconventional thing. Even get the Hellion bonus up right now for the uh, the two star cannon and uh, two star cannon. I mean, we saw a three star doing very well earlier on, and I definitely think there's still an opportunity to go for that. Uh, you do pre preferably want a Sunfire Cape on him though, so he can get that burn effect on literally everybody on the board because that's you know, yeah. his gimmick, just a zooming around, a zoom and zip cannon. I, uh, I'm a fan of that. I'm really a fan of that. I mean, it, it was really a valuable part of the skirmisher comps earlier on. Uh, skirmisher, having been taken a little bit more of a backseat lately, uh, you do see that the cannon doesn't show up as often. But when he does, he can really do a lot uh, for the rest of your team. Yeah, and to be fair, we've seen Hellions come in in like the past two days back into the meta with either Tristana carry or even a Kled carry. So that yeah. is definitely a comp I would love to see. They're super, super strong. And Hellions are just something you either love or hate, right? I don't think there's any comp in TFT that just people feel so strongly about for some reason. Yeah. But just the way Hellions are structured, either people love playing them or they hate having them in their lobbies and playing them so uh i personally i think they're fun I was gonna say, they're where definitely you, where you want it <laughs> I, i'm not that much of a hellion player myself i have to say i don't force them or anything but no. uh i think they're fun to look at and definitely a strong comp to look out for and you know maybe draco will go for this we already have the clad having quite some good items here and that could eventually be the hellion clad carry that we're going for we have just Tana on the bench but we don't want to put her in just yet because we're sitting on those four knights very comfortably as you know that beefy front line and that should be good for us but iron scar seems to also be playing hellion um with maybe an abomb in the making as we see the Kalisa in the back and the two star brand so definitely will be interesting who of those two players makes it out with a viable hellion comp yeah i mean it, it's the same thing as with dawnbringer but a little bit more so like there's so many hellion units because they're so low cost like there's very yeah few, uh, there's not really a lot of hellion units that you have to actually pay for so you can always uh, kind of slot them in the really one the one that you're sort of looking for a lot of the time is either Timo or lulu because mm -hmm. the lulu is of course the three costs of the Timo is the well you know you got to give your life for it but uh, you know for hellion it, it's it, it's one of those where you can combine it with so many things because it's so helpful just to have those respawns the knight is obviously something that comes up a lot the cavalier those two bonuses are really combined often uh, so the poppy and the cled are, are sort of no-brainers to have in there but sometimes you can indeed give the lulu that mystic bonus it's a, it's a very possible thing to do uh, like i myself i don't really play hellion uh, you know voluntarily it's one of those where when the game forces <laughs> really? it upon me it's it's one of those so the game forces it up on you sometimes like you get so many yeah in your shop you're like okay i gotta do it because otherwise i'm gonna waste gold not yeah buying hellions um but then i do always feel a little bit you know it, it, i would say it's feel like it feels like cheating but i don't feel like i'm playing the game as it should be played i don't know what i don't know explain really? it. it doesn't feel right yeah it doesn't feel right to play hellions it doesn't feel right to play hellion for me no but that's me personally like I, it's in the game so you know i can't blame people for playing it of course very true i mean i think it's like that with many of the kind of very strong comms, right? If you have that action going off, doing insane amounts of damage, or that vein three star, nocturne three star, even like a Velkos eye bomb carry that you know lasers, and then two seconds lasers again, the enemy team is just dead. Uh, I think all of those comps feel kind of unethical because you're they just can. going in yeah. there with like so much damage and so much pump. Uh, that in the end, it feels like you're not playing the game right. <laughs> but well, uh, some, it's also the fun with, of it. Somehow with those units, though, because it, it takes more effort to build into those into those comps, right? Like, if you think a lot more about your items, you have to hope you hit the True. timings, etc. And like with Hellion, it's just, oh, I smack a bunch of Hellions on the, on the board and they keep respawning and it just swarms the enemy. Like, that's, <laughs> it, it feels a little bit less like, like that big brain, the big brain plays and the big brain combinations you can make. Um, yeah. And yeah, sure, you get lucky with those actions. We saw it last week. You yeah. can really get lucky with those things. Uh, but they require a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, afterthought and a little bit more ch uh, tuning to really uh, do the thing that they're supposed to be doing well. Uh, and of course, you know, yeah, sometimes you have a good Hellion game and it, it goes great and it's fun. Uh, but I am I have a way bigger smile on my face when like something like a, a Dombringer Karma or a good Jack Skirmisher combo like starts working out. Uh, All right. Like that really, I you know, I can just really laugh out loud at those moments. I'm just like, ha, that's, there's nothing you can do. This is really funny. Uh, yeah. With Hellion, I don't really have that. Okay. 
I mean, it's the hmm. it's the kill him. You have to kill him five times idea about it that I I don't think I like. It yeah, because it doesn't require items to do that. Because you don't have like a guardian. It's not it's not like a you know guardian angel. It's not the revenants. It's like it just it just happens. Especially since they lowered it to two starting units to start the the portal. It's uh it's be it's coming easier. So that means it's also a much more popular early build. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think that is also what kind of splits the opinions on Hellions, right? I think um, so too. Yeah. So, so that is the one mechanic that they have that's just so different from any, the any other synergy that you can have in the game, right? Um, and even things like Draconic, right, which is also very unique, doesn't feel as strong as Hellions in comparison. So I think that's where many people get that internalized hate against Hellions that it's just it's such an unfair mechanic that they have the same champion come in again and again even after you killed them that it just feels kind of off uh however i can also appreciate a really good Hellion comp i have to say yeah for sure uh we're gonna gonna see uh jean keke actually go for something pretty interesting here the nidalee carry at the moment not something you do see a whole lot of because uh usually it's probably something that he wants to like swap out for another mm. uh, no, another another character because nidalee on her own can be good but does have some uh, some flaws here and there because she jumps in so early uh it, it's hard to really uh to protect her like she doesn't can't really work as like a front line yeah, uh, put on a frontline protection because she just she's just gonna go in and you're gonna have to deal with it. Uh, on the other hand, if she's not CC'd, she can just go rampant, which she's doing at the moment, uh, and that Yasuo is not gonna have anything to say about it. So this is nope. a good start, at least with these with these items. Uh, I wonder whether it's going to require a change to a different uh, character at some point, but it doesn't seem at the moment. And if you get some more items on the board. You might just be able to uh, build another carry next to it. You can get, can get a Karma in here because you, you, know, yeah. you do have the Dawnbringer going on. Uh, maybe some Legionnaire, maybe some Skirmisher. Uh, it's all possible. Very, very true. I was going to say, you could go for the Karma carry, but you would need very different items for that. So the items that we yep. currently find on the Needle aren't going to work out on a Karma unless, you know, you're Ooh. very brave and are trying to make something work. Um, double Nico. Are you yeah. Double Nico? No, I don't think box? so. We have a different plan here. I think we want one Morellonomicon and then we want one item to be a little more defensive, maybe? But that is yeah. definitely going to be a Morello on that <laughs> banana mama. And uh, that yeah. will... She's just, she's just a banana girl at the moment, right? Like, she's going to be... Okay. And then if she's two star, she's going to be banana mama. And then the three okay. star, she's the banana queen. Oh, so, you okay. Know, we've got to get the different stages of, uh, of Soraka I'm right, taking right there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something I'm making up on the spot, honestly. But that's just what we're gonna go with right now, I guess. Uh, no problem. <laughs> yeah, the N Nidalee is uh, is doing her thing. Did lose, lose, just get the overshield back. Is barely gonna be able to heal everything back up, and eventually it's gonna go down, I think. But she's I still don't popping. Think so. Oh, she got the Lucian. Ah, the that cannon. was the cannon so was close. Oh my! That was ridiculous. She was really shredding through that one, hitting all of the units, and then in the end, that one auto attack from a cannon does it unfair but uh yeah needily that's exactly what you said earlier right she's just kind of squishy she does so much damage but she jumps in very early she's in between all of those units and then she gets targeted earlier than for example a vein would be in that situation or a karma or anything that's kind of more backline-ish um yeah. so that makes her very vulnerable as a carry and i'm not sure if that is where we want to go in the end no, it's it's you know we have a word for that. It's called glass cannon. I don't really think yeah. she's a true glass cannon because she does no. have a little bit of sustain because she jumps around as well. Uh, but she can be very squishy if she is disabled, which you know doesn't happen that often. But if you get a good CC on her, if you get some stuns, uh, even a Zephyrs early on, she really doesn't ramp up as much because that is the skirmisher trait. You know, you get you get more and more damage as you go on. Um, but because she goes in so early, because she's so uh, disableable, she can really, if you don't put enough defense on her, she doesn't hmm. get those shields, she can just be bursted down early on and then you don't really have a lot left. Yeah. Um, because if it's your carry, you don't have anything else. Uh, let's see if that Garen is going to be able to be picked up by Jean KK. I think they're looking for it, but, you know, being yeah. the last to pick is not likely. And that Fisk is probably going to be a very uh, popular item. True. But Not to be fair, yet, Garen though. would be a very good substitute for it those Nidalee items that he currently has. And that is Jimray picking up that Garen, 
taking Kiki's plans, and he's just Oof. gonna go for a cloak, it seems. Yeah, possible. I mean, you can still build a defensive out of it with the stone plate. Uh, not quite sure if that's the right choice with all the damage that's going on in the lobby right now, but you know, if you can't build something else, it's better than nothing. Gonna see another double Nico on a board right there. That is uh, gonna be scary. They have a lot of items left, so they still haven't made a choice. Um, and whoever that's going to be going to end up being, I didn't really get a glimpse really quickly. Uh, I think that's Vulpix actually. They're going to be able to build a Ooh. lot out of what they've got on their board and their item box. Against the double Nico, uh, he did pick up the Garen as well, so he could already make a two-star if he wanted to. This is uh, a ridiculous board. Like the, the board itself is not fully flesh fleshed out. He's got the Legionnaire combo with the with some A bomb, with some Brawler, yeah. with some Revenant. Like there's a lot going on on this board right now. Um, but that because of all the items, because of everything that he still got on his bench, there's so many different directions he can go. He could even still go the Draven route, which I'm I'm personally a fan of. Uh, speaking of Draven, just when we switched to Volpix, we could see GMS Kiki actually pick up that Draven 2-star, switch out the Needly, and as far as I could tell, they were slamming items on that Draven, so that's definitely an interesting comp that we should be seeing fairly soon here in our games, um, as they're now running Legionnaire um, with a Draven carry. And we also have a Kaylee in there, so... TMS Kiki definitely going to go for something a little more, uh, yeah, dependent on your shop, but we might be able to just hit it right. Yeah, and I think I think what Volpix's main issue right now is that again, you know, we've seen it on other boards before. There's not a lot of levels going on on this board. There's a very, they're they're very basic characters. Uh, they got got a few good items going on. The combinations work, but for instance, a one star Garen, as good as he is, without any items, it's not as good as you want it to be. It doesn't do everything that you need him to. So yeah. he might just throw the Nikos on it at some point, but I think he's like, you know what? I have to have 29 HP. I don't have to roll just yet, but this is probably the one where he's going to start rolling down. You know, the HP is getting very low. Uh, he's got 45 gold. So he's going po post 50 right now. He could go for another round. I don't think he's going to go out in uh, stage four with 22 HP, but it is, uh, it is definitely going to start gnawing at his brain right now. We know he knows his timings. You know, we, he understands when he can and when he cannot roll. Um, but it's still, it's still a choice that has to be made. Absolutely. And we just saw Phoebe sneak in and stump him over with that action carry as we saw last week already. That's such a dangerous unit to have items on because he is just always not targetable when he does his ult and that just makes him super, super viable as a carry since he just lives on and on and on. So if you somehow manage to keep the other units in fight and you can have action swinging around, that's very, very good for you to have in your comp and now we see Volpix also picking up that action but that could also just be grieving a little bit on Phoebe Maybe. here He's, he's, like he's thinking about, you know, like he's, he's doing the role at the moment. Like he's not, yeah. he's almost like committed fully to the role. He's going to do it again. We saw it last last round. Uh, pretty sure he's going to keep on rolling at the moment, just trying to get that three star Nunu maybe. Uh, but he's got to start using one of some of these items. Like he has to, ha he has the HP to survive one or two more rounds, but mm. he has to start working on this. Absolutely, and we just saw that Shroud of Silence go on Ivern, but Ivern was not really in a position where it mattered that much. And we also see Draco having an action, but this one doesn't have any items, so he can manage to live a little longer here. However, that Aphelios in the background oh, is doing no. all the work, and that's going to be another loss for Volpix here, who really is very low at this point. Eighth, he is with 15 HP. He needs to cling on to his life and start you know getting in on those units getting in on those items and really trying to finish up a comp here we have we that go. two star draven going in and that might be just what we needed for volpix here i needed to do something we still see him like he's he's still still looking for something and he's so many options on this bench like yeah i understand that you want to keep your options open and the action definitely feels like a grief a little bit which is definitely not mm. a strong choice Finally, last second Nikos gets the three star that's a great great pickup uh is the luck going to be with him again it does look like it 
Let's see uh, how this round pans out against TSM Kishankiki. The number one, it's a bad draw, honestly, to play against, but it might work out for them. So far, not a uh, a bad start, and does look like it's just going to run over that comp that Nunu, not having oh. any trouble st staying alive, summoning the Abomination. The most most That's the is Kaylee out. carry. With that Kale. Oh, oh, no. You thought you had it, and then Kale just ramps up with all the items. And now, you, this is this. I mean, this is the round. Everything you can do, you have to do now. What is, what's that on his. I can't even see behind the flame what item that is. That is like that item that he has on his, uh, on his, uh, on his bench. I'm not sure. Um, not a force of nature, is it? I don't think so, but it might be. It looks a little bit like one. It's not his radiant item, because that's on his, uh, on his ribbon. But it, yeah, it's the only thing I can think of what it could be. And the question is, why isn't the force of nature in play? Well, it is actually in play because he doesn't it, need to it use would it on be somebody. in play. Yeah, he has it, eight has units on his board, and he's level seven, so be. that is a force of nature yeah. right here for Volpix, which is also very strong, right? Yeah, that yeah, allows him to like put more gold into his it's units rather than units. leveling up. Um, and he is facing all of the, those uh, level eight enemies with the same amounts of unit on his board at the moment and so that is definitely absolutely needed as he doesn't have much gold already to begin with but his draven is gonna come in and he's gonna clean up here and take that win against scar and draco is actually out of the race the at this outs. point the first yeah. out for this lobby here draco taking the l and everyone else gets yeah. to go into the wheel and it basically means we're going to stick to with Vulpix until they either win the entire thing or drop out because, you know, we love to see it when a player either goes out or goes all the way to the top. Talked about it before. That last place comeback is ridiculous to pull off, but you can do it. He did give up his Abomination bonus for this, right? So he did say, okay, True. fine, I don't need the Abomination as long as my Draven is fully carrying. He also gave up his Yasuo. He really pivoted a lot and finally made those decisions. Actually, Yasuo is still there. That's me missing. He that. also Sorry. has a bomb still. Because we have the fiddle sticks. Oh in. yeah, the fiddle sticks. Yeah, sorry, I didn't see the the graveyard stones. That's why I was like, wait, where's the where's the a bomb? No bomb? problem. It's but back. What is he going to do you now? Know. I think we're taking out the Dawnbringer yeah. and start trying to yeah. you know get that Teemo and protecting that Raven here, um, and just switching it up a little bit, making sure our positioning is exactly how we want it to be. But we keep the Nidalee on the bench for when we hit level eight. Just making sure we can maybe put her back in. Yeah, he's not gonna—he's not gonna attempt three star it. So getting that little bit of extra gold to be plus twenty is uh, it's pretty good. Get, get that one extra gold for your uh, for your interest bonus. Always yeah. a good choice. Because uh, I don't—I don't think you're gonna expect a three star there anymore at this stage. Oh. Uh, Raven is popping though right now. Playing against this Karma though, it is a tough one. Is beefing through a few more units. No. Oh, no it's not gonna ah. make it. It's a shame for Vulpix. I, th I think he's. I think he's stuck with uh, with too many options for too long. At some point, you gotta go. And when that uh, when the dizziness sends in, you, it's uh, yeah. I mean, didn't quite throw up over his board, but uh, eventually had to make a choice. And I think it might have come in a bit too late. Uh, it doesn't really matter though. I mean, he did already have that first place, so he get, at least gets the average consistency out. Uh, but does need a little bit more. I am Sushi, by the way. Very middle of the pack in terms of score at the moment. So uh, every round they survive might be another one that they get some extra points on. Uh, and we're going very close to uh, being in the top four at the moment. Yeah, and that would be so cool to see Phoebe and Sushi actually come in top four. Because in the last rounds it didn't go as good for them. Whereas Jean Kiki actually had a very good round before this and now is stomping again. They hit the Kale. That is so, so good. Once she ramps up to her final level, there is barely yeah. anything you can do. But the action well. is going to make it. Phoebe proving me Ron coming in, absolutely stomping that Kale there. Wow. And he's only one star, too. Yeah, it's closer to two star, though, so that will be even more dangerous at that stage. This is the Hecarim trying to survive here, but the uh, Heimerdinger, still a very strong unit if you two star them with those items. And, uh,. I mean, I don't know. I don't know who's going to be coming out on top of this one just yet. There's a lot of very strong boards. I mean, of course, the Kale board is very strong, but you did see it just get taken out. Uh, I do feel like uh, Shankiki is going to be fine, though, because what are the chances that Akshan can survive against everything that's coming out there? It's very good against the Kale board. But there's a few boards out there where it doesn't yeah. really come out on top as easily. 
Very true. So we're just, you know, in Kiki's ADHD spot, game. we're hoping other competitors are going to take that threat away from this board in the lobby here and so that we only have to fight it once more maybe um but right now we're getting you know not exactly what we need we're making our kaylee a little bit stronger by that but it's not exactly a super pock item as we would probably say uh, i'm not sure we're seeing a level three thresh on tafzara right now and uh yeah we'll just fix our Fix okay. our feet a little bit. Yeah, yeah. No, it'll, it'll be fine. We'll eventually come back to uh, to the right streams. Um, for now, though, I'm going to be hoping that... Um, uh, yeah, gonna, just going to be hoping that we get the POVs back. Uh, of course, we are are still going only to, through round two. There's four more rounds to go after this. There we have it back. See the CC dropping here for uh, Sean Kiki. A lot going out for both players, actually. Kale is popping. She's almost there, almost to the ascension. Is it gonna be coming out? No, not quite. The Heimerdinger and the CC are just too much for her to deal with, and uh, that's gonna be Shankiki again, losing another round. They're, uh, I mean, they have again, they have HP to play with, but and even gold to play with. But at some point, you would imagine that they have to invest a little bit more. They might just force level nine soon, and then uh, go from there. Because that could be a very nice addition to have just even more on the board. Um, but it doesn't uh, necessarily come out that way always. Exactly. And here we are back with TMS Jean Kiki, who's just now getting some more items. We have the spat. We Ooh. could go for Hellion. Maybe what we're going to do is exactly yes. that. And we have the He's Hellion back. Volley Bear in Volley bear. together with the Lulu. <laughs> That is just ridiculous. <laughs> what a great comp. What a great Battle comp. Long. Could even Lovely. swap out the Lulu for the Teemo. I mean, does have the it HP could. to work with, so might as well. Uh, yeah. Does have the Mystic 4, though, so I don't think yeah, we want to Yeah, I was going to say, I think we want to keep the Lulu in there just for Mystic. You know, against those Dawnbringer Karma comp, Mystic is just really, really good to have. Uh, again, what we were talking about earlier, once you know what your opponents are playing, it's very easy to be a little more defensive in that direction. And if you have a lobby where a lot of people, people are running Dawnbringer or even Invoker, um, with Karma, Velkos, carry, you really want to bring in at least Mystic 2. If you can somehow manage on your board, Mystic 4 is very, very good to have. Yeah, we are seeing, by the way, Iron Rusushi still in, still holding on that 5 HP, Tavzara as well on 6. We're so close to establishing that top 4. I mean, uh, if any of those bottom 3 players lose, they're probably out. Uh, so we're, we're basically guaranteed top four after this. Let's see uh, Let's see who gets out of there. And I Am Her Sushi is on that run back. They are on that comeback to potentially get, uh, get even first uh, after basically being down in the dumps. Uh, very cool to see that happen, actually, because we talked about it earlier. And now it actually yeah. it's potentially coming to fruition. But now they're going to uh, go up against the number one. A bit of an unlucky draw, but if they if they can overcome this, that's <laughs> so a many really strong bears. play. <laughs> All yeah. of the Volibear all the going Ivans. off at this time. And it's just a hot mess at this moment. But the Kaylee is ramping up in the background. And I don't think that's going to be enough for Sushi to come down here. The Kale is full and that's going to be the loss that we will have to take here. Phoebe with the action carry that was so much trouble for Jean Kiki has been taken care of as well. So now we are in our top four. We have Tazara, we have Jim Ray, we have Scar and we have TMS Kiki just bowling for the last spots now. We're in the wheel trying to see if we can get something here for our final boards. Kiki does get taken away the Dragon's Claw, which they really wanted. Eventually has to go for the Locket. Not a bad pick by any means, just not the one they really wanted. They already have the Radiant Locket, so not uh, completely set on having to have the, have the actual Locket themselves. Uh, Garen is just being picked up again. I mean, you can maybe get a two-star. You have the Nico, so you might as well try, right? Um... Can you can also two star the Gwen? I mean, at some point you got to use it. Does Luke to go want to go for the Garen for the extra front line? Yeah. Uh, would have been an interesting pick to go for the for the Gwen as well, because of course they have the the Gwen fully itemized, so that would have been a fun one. Um, but I, I I respect the choice for the Garen. That's uh, 
and then the Zephyrs as well. Even got to disable the Heimerdinger. That's uh, that's going to be a tough one for Armscar to go through right now. That Kaylee is, is uh, just online at the moment. Frontline <laughs> is too beefy to go through. This is uh, looking like a fairly easy win coming out from TSM Shankiki. So Armscar probably going to be eliminated after this round. It's not over just yet, but you can see as soon as that Heimerdinger falls, all hope is lost. This is a an exit right there. Still fourth yeah. place, potentially even third. No, that's fourth. And uh, Jimray taking get third the top here. Two. Absolutely, top two left. And I have to say, I really think Nikling the Garen here was a smart play in, you know, over the Gwen because you need that kind of more beefy frontline in order to protect your Kale. We already have only a Volley Bear one. I mean, he is Hellion, and there's a lot of CC coming out from this team here. But having that Garen on two star just allows us to be a little more safe in the back line with that Kale. And that's what we want to be definitely here. And we see him face Tavzara now. That might be the final match of this lobby if Jean Kiki can manage to stomp him here. We have the three star Vayne in the back line, and the three star Hecarim in the front line. And I think we even had a three star Trash here, but it's not going to be enough. He's getting absolutely stomped by this comp here, and that's just a brutal thing that TMS Jean Kiki built here. GG number one in this lobby, taking the win. Not at all surprised that kill was just very strong. As soon as that action composition got taken out, it was, uh, I would say it was GG's, but it was uh, a very hard pressed one to get away with. Now, of course, that was round two, so we're going to have one more before we have top eights finalized, which also means we're going to actually be able to speculate a little bit which players need to get a good placement to secure their top eight spot, because before this lobby started, and even now that this lobby has finished, it is a very, very close race. The other lobby is still going. I think we're waiting for, like, the last fight over there still. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe it, just fin it has just finished? I think it has just finished or not. No, no, we're going no, still No, 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 one uh, HP. Oh, look at that. One, one HP on Arrow. And another action. It's right there. Both of them have it. Is the action off? The action off. <laughs> just a lot of swinging to be done in this matchup here. Who can take it away? Who can take the final swing? And it seems like Shul B can take it off here. Getting that number one spot in this lobby here. Definitely a very, very strong contender. And both of them having the action coming that far. We've seen it in the past cup. You've said it before. That is just such a strong uh, unit at this moment to have. So definitely be on the lookout if you manage to get an action carry in. Yeah, you know, you know, a little bit of background lore as well. You know, a lot of these players, while they're waiting for, you know, the next queue for the next game to start, they 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 start up their other screens, they start up their other games. So we have a nice view, like you don't see this. We have a nice view of the cookie clicker going on here on the side of uh, I think it's Vulpix. I think that was Vulpix. Um, but yeah, they, they they just they just do their own thing in the meantime, just relaxing, just turning their brain off a little bit, not overthinking too much what happened in the last game, because uh, of course you can just get into your own head, and every new game is a new start, so you have to start again. Uh, beautiful gameplay though from uh, both these lobbies right now. I mean, Team is Junkiki just absolutely on top of everybody at the moment, but Lilith still as well. You know, got the second place this time around. Uh, actually, third place, so it's in 16 points at the moment. Uh, but there is a very close call going on between a lot of players at the moment. Like I think basically the spots. I would say almost the spots four on up until 13 are basically all for grabs. Like this, uh, this fight for top eight is going to be close. We might even need tiebreakers. Uh, we, we have might, a bunch yeah. of different tiebreakers. We're not going to go there before we need to. We're not going to try and do any math because that will always go wrong. But uh, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of basically weighing on this last game uh but before we're going to go into the scores before we're going to go lead into this next game we're going to take a short break you know we need some water you might need some snacks we're going to make sure that everything is set up and ready to go so don't go anywhere we'll be right back
And we are back here at the Monkey Bubble Peanut Butter Cup. I make this is Man of Class right next to me. And we have the pleasure to cast this really great tournament for you happening every weekend here on this channel. Right now, we're going to go into Lobby 3 in just a little while. Uh, two lobbies have already happened. What's your verdict? from what we've seen I so mean, far. My, my verdict is that I think uh, compared to the last week, especially we have a super close uh, uh, tie, uh, race going on for that top eight. So and almost anybody can really get in there still. There's a few players that might, you know, have a basically impossible chance to get there. But regardless, going to be rooting for everybody. Uh, my verdict so far is that, yeah, Akshan and, and Karma are still doing a pretty good job. Uh, although we didn't see them you know, dominate every single lobby. We had two different lobbies today. Uh, they are still coming out as the stronger carry picks that uh, players tend to go for. Uh, and really, when they have the opportunity to go for go for them, they will. Uh, sometimes you go, you're going to get lucky. You get something like a kill coming out with the two-star and uh, you just roll over with everybody in that way. Uh, but it does seem like those are just two uh, champions legends that are currently relatively easy to be picked up like they, they just yeah. appear a lot in people's shops um and there are there are all these drop rate differences that just sometimes happen so uh that might have something to do with it but they're also just good units absolutely um i agree i think they're very very strong units have we still um see some kind of reroll comps as well we've seen the vein three we've seen the cap kale coming out uh, we've seen people try to go for Assassin with Nocturne. Hasn't really been that beneficial to them yet. Maybe the oh. units just haven't been hit in time. But uh, once more, we're going to rearrange the lobbies due to seeding from the past two games. Uh, and I'm curious to see who gets to be with whom in the next lobbies. And here we see the one lobby... With TMS, Jean Kiki, Jilby, Taf Sarah, Stuz, and I don't think we've seen Stuz that much yet. I'm her sushi, Alex Caruso, big brain player, my favorite name, and V Draco. They're gonna go into one lobby, and all the other players are gonna go into the other lobby. Here's to see which one we're hovering. I think it might be this one because we have POVs on TMS, Jean Kiki, and Alex Caruso. So that could be the lobby that we're going with. And it seems like that they're already going in. We're into the loading screen. And I'm so, so excited to see what these players come up with here. Yeah, so Jean Kiki and uh, Chubby, I think it was uh, what you said it was. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's just what, what I assume it is. Because like the yeah, C with, is it, it feels like it feels like the, the Turkish spelling, right? Yeah, Yeah, it is. Exactly. Uh, and then and then Tavzara, like those are those they're on the top five at the moment. So they look like they're fairly safe. But, you know, especially Tavzara has to be uh, has to get enough points basically not to be threatened. Mm -hmm. uh, but shoes. Uh, I am her sushi. You know they're they're very much in that uh, spot where they need to make sure they get on top of uh, on top uh, in the top four just to make sure they get into the top eight. Like they're very close to being either in or out, mm. um, and that is uh, that's a super exciting <laughs> exciting situation to be in. Uh, big brain player a little bit less so. They're on seven points at the moment, so they do have to get a few like a very good placement to uh, challenge yeah. that top eight. But it's possible. It's not like it's out of our own possibility. So everyone almost in this lobby is uh, is in. Con is in contention uh the one player i would really sort of count out is draco here just because they're only on four points mm. uh, so even when they get a win they'll only be on 13 which is very unlikely to be enough true that's gonna be really really hard uh to come up with it would mean that all of the higher seeded players would need to be really really low and that is extremely unlikely so that might be the last game for them uh, however in the other lobby we have shining star and arrow going against each other just one point apart right in the middle yeah. of the pack they're also going to try to get as high up as possible to get those juicy extra points making sure they can get into the next round because after this lobby only the top eight players will be the remaining ones to fight for the title there will only be one lobby left and everybody else will be eliminated so this definitely matters once more if you really want to make it and right now we're hovering alex caruso here on the first couple of stages and we see he already has like a good amount of dawn bringers on this board but that's not really what we're going for we have forgotten and knights in that is also a comp that we've seen come up quite a lot we're still going to hold on to you know those two dawn bringers just in case we need them and uh, yeah. switch around a couple of things but uh, yeah this is looking good so far 
Definitely get the Ziggs in the back line just to get some actual damage in there because Thresher, Nautilus, and Gragas, they're, they're fun, but they're not the most consistent damage dealers. They're really count counting more on those ultimates to really get them off. So just having a Ziggs there makes it a little bit more uh, consistent at least. Could already slam a Rabba if he wants to, but I don't think that would be the wisest choice. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll eventually find the Poppy as well. Two-star Gragas is going to stick on the bench for a little bit, but... Oh, no, it's the choosing to throw it in. Goes to level four. This did hit. And it's going to get the Hellion Knight combo off as well. Oh, that's a nice yeah. line. I like that. I like that position. Slamming the Rabba. <laughs> oh, are we do doing it? it? do it. Are we doing he, it? He, so he, he might he might be tuning into the stream. It's like, I'm going to tease this for them. That happens sometimes. Ha ha, look, you know, casters. If, <laughs> if you have a Ziggs, if you have a Ziggs right there, you know, you, like, if you're going to be able to carry anyways, you can you can throw that raw just on the ward. You can just have it there because it's going to be used at some point, whether it's by Ziggs or by somebody else, and you just get an extra, a few extra MP. Yeah, the only thing you really need to keep in mind when putting level 1 items onto units, especially units that you have two of, is uh, when you go into the wheel, either sell that second unit or remember to not pick up that exactly unit yeah. because it's yeah. going to make an item and we've all been there before, right? It, that's not just a me thing. That's something that might happen. You really don't want it to, but uh, definitely need to remember that when we're going into those wheels. And right now we're going to go for the tier and that could be going into, you know, I'm, I'm looking into Dawnbringers. I'm looking into maybe we're going for that Velkos A-bomb carry. Uh, that would be something I'd love to see. We haven't seen it that much yet. Um, and it's still very strong. So it might be. Uh, right now we slammed the Rabadons. We have the tier on that six. And that's going to be a solid carry for the early and middle game just for now. And most of the players are, as we know, hitting level four. However, Chill B has hit level five going into that high level quite early. We might do a rush eight or rush nine even. Um, so that will be interesting to look out for. Yeah, totally. I'm uh, I'm I'm very excited to see whether they're going to be able to pull that off or actually hit that uh, hit that mark. Because uh, at the moment, it's it's all it's a little bit speculative, right? Like we always admit that we're yeah we can they can go to this, they can go to that. But since it's only stage two, there's such a large potential for everyone to just go for something completely different. Um, not everyone's going to, but some might pivot and then uh, we turn out to be wrong. Uh, but then we always say no, we weren't wrong. We just you know talked about something that didn't happen. That's great because we still talked about. True. It. I mean, and to be fair, TFT is that kind of game, right? It yeah. is that game where you open a door and you have endless possibilities with all of the champions and synergies and items and comps that you can go with. Yeah. And it really depends on what are everybody else doing or what is everybody else doing? What are you getting in your shop? What are you getting in the wheel? What are you getting from your Radiant item store? Um, and, and that really matters. So even if we're pointing out different possibilities that we could go to, there are just so many factors that just haven't happened yet that it's impossible yeah. to say someone is definitely doing that unless that person is known to, you know, force comp picks. Just so one trick it, yeah, if, exactly. For example, <laughs> like with wool picks, they aren't in that lobby yet, but we've seen Dawnbringers come out twice for them. So I could say if, if they're getting a good Dawnbringer start, it's very likely that they're going into Dawnbringers just because it seems like a comp they're very comfortable with and very confident with. Um, but it's never granted. That is the it's fun of TFT, a, I it's think. As a, as a it's, it's a core to build on. And you talk about all these different doors, these different options, and sometimes you just turn around, slam the door, and break it through a window. You know, it also happens. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, you know? true. It, it, true, is, true. it is a pretty large mansion, a lot of rooms, and sometimes all these doors just don't get you where you want to go, so you have to break into the second floor window and get there, get there that way. Um, yeah. No, I'm or not, sometimes... Not for, not advocating for actual break-ins, by the way, no. guys. Just, a, just as a disclaimer, just, just a metaphor. Don't go breaking into people's houses. Just DP them at Halloween. That's all you need to do. Um, but for now, <laughs> for now, we're going to be seeing. Oh, there's actually a spat already being picked up right here. That's a good one. Uh, of course, it has to be Shankiki that picks it up. You know, as the as they are, it they are has well on the board to be. right now. I mean, they got the first pick, so it's not unlike pretty normal that they get it in that situation. Uh, and uh, the wind streaker at the moment, Chobi. They're the ones that are going to be able to uh, to try and keep that one up, uh, together with potentially tough Zara. But they already lost a round, of course, so uh, not as lucky. But uh, we'll see where they come out with this. Uh, as we look at Chus's board, 
they got the Hellions going with that uh, Tristana. I talked about it earlier, how popular it has been over time. Doesn't choose to throw in a different unit next to it. Does just want to go for the double Tristana at the moment. But we know how good it can be with that last Whisper. I mean, I talked about it last week a lot because I love that item, especially mm -hmm. on these ranged units. Uh, yeah. Because like that was that was such a strong thing in the er in the earliest parts of this set. You just throw in the Lucian uh, with the with the last Whisper, and it just breaks through everything. Tristana was a like an early substitute for that. So you took out the Tristana, put in the Lucian with the same items, uh, and that could be something they're going for later on. But the last Whisper can work on so many units that it's just a very versatile item, uh, and I'm not at all not at all mad at them that they slam it early. Absolutely. And I have to say, it just doesn't have to choose yet um, because they still have so many options open here. They have the Hellion Comp up and ready. We could go for the Tristana carry, which, as I said earlier, we've been seeing and that is Cannoneer Hellion. So I think that's what we're aiming for. However, we could still pivot in the later games that we're going to see. And I'm very curious to see how Jobe is doing with the leveling advantage that they had in the quite early game, hitting level five when everybody else was hitting level four. Uh, and I'm just hoping we can face them quite soon to see what's going on there. Let's, uh, let's see what they're coming out with. Ah, that Gragas. As soon as that Gragas goes down, there's a lot of potential for the damaging the other units. But it might have taken a little bit too long. It's just the Tristana and the Ziggs left. Tristana will get a respawn, but against three units, I don't think that's going to be enough. Especially when that Ziggs gets another respawn as well. She ah. is relatively okay, but not nah, against she can't. that. That Poppy is too annoying. If she would have gotten her ult off before she died, there would have been a Maybe. chance to do it. Maybe. But yeah. the way it just played out right now, it just couldn't get the ult off Tristana before she died. And that is it. Um, we're really hoping that this will be the Hellion comp. I'm so looking for it. I haven't seen it in the cup just yet. And I like it a lot. I think it's super bonkers. Just a hard carry Tristana jumping around, annihilating everything that comes or it doesn't come into her path. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping we get that to see here. And let's also see what the crooks are giving us today. We're going to get a crit item out of them. We got the vest and we're going to get a Nunu that we're selling directly. Just making sure we stay on that 20 bank, make that little investment gold and hit that cannon. The cannon is, uh, when we talked about it before, it's a great unit, and especially if you upgrade on the Hellion part, that's uh, exactly what the cannon's good for. But Draco has at least the Hellion backline at the moment, trying to build the knights up front, so has a little bit of beefiness going on, uh, and is now just looking at the other boards, circling, saying, hey, hey, look at this. Look at <laughs> what, what Alex is, is this? doing. <laughs> <laughs> no Pointing out the Dawnbringer abuser, Alex Caruso, in this lobby here. But now he's going to face Stu's here, and that will be very painful. The Tristana is still on level one. We have the six in the background, level two. And the Poppy on level 2, and that might just be enough to do enough damage here. There it is, Zix just ults once, and that's it. That's gonna be a loss for Juice. Draco taking the win just now. Yeah, and uh, meanwhile, you, you were looking at Alex Caruso having that, you know, Dawnbringer abuser, but they are uh, they're losing another round. They're not going to be able to come out on top of this one. Of course, they are going up against Cholbei, who uh, has just been uh, popping so far in this lobby. We do have that top two right now, both on uh, 96 and 94 HP. But it's actually Draco who's currently on the fire win streak. They might be able to perpetuate that if they get, uh, for instance, that two-star brand on. They can may actually start up the uh, the abomination comp a little bit. Because for now, it's just about the magic. It's, it's all about the spellcaster, uh, spellweaver. What is Draco doing? <laughs> He's, he's just he's it, it, it just, just vibing. Warmed up. Yeah, exactly. You know, he doesn't. Have, he has a win streak going. He's gonna go up to fifty gold pretty soon. He's got the level six. Uh, he's he's exactly where he wants to be at the moment. I mean, yeah, you want a two star brand or Nautilus. That would be great. But you got the two. You got already got two two star knights. You got your zigs in the back line with some good items on him. It's uh, it's a pretty good place to be. So you just have to vibe. True, absolutely. We have that win streak going. We are on fire. We're in top three. Everything seems to be going Draco's way just now. So let's just chill out a little bit and vibe with that brand on your bench. And there it There's is. The, the vibe has brought fortune it to us. Brand two. Very, very nice to see. 
exactly what you are looking for. Just uh, pivot it back and forth so the game thinks, oh, they might probably want a second brand. Let's just give it to them, okay? Just uh, so That's the secret a tip, bit. is it? <laughs> secret tip. Play it's, it's not even player diff. It's moving your units around diff. Gonna, gonna see. He's not gonna pick up the Nautiluses here, which is curious because he could go for that knight bonus. But then again, you do need a fourth to really make it work. He's gonna swap out his two his Gragas, uh, get the items loose to put it probably on that Nunu because he's got the Abomination now. So yeah, Monstrosity is gonna get the Sunfire Cape. It's exactly what you want to go for in that situation. Yeah, you lose a little bit of front line with the Gragas, but that Monstrosity is gonna more than make up for that. I have to say, this is looking a lot like a Valkos Abomb. Comp. We could also go for Syrah, but you know, having that A bomb there, we have the Sunfire on Nunu, we have a tier a Rabadons on Zix. I think that's really the way Caruso is going to go after this as soon as he can hit the oh. units. And that won't be enough here. Still, the Poppy is in. She's gonna be in his way to actually win here. And that won't be enough, but we're gonna go into the wheel. And he has secured himself a lower place in the wheel. Sometimes players do this on purpose if they're not far apart from the other place. And we can see Jean Kiki is on 74, he's on 73, just barely below, making sure he gets second pick here and he can secure that BF sword for himself. Yeah, I do like the because he got the tier right, so he could put a Sojin on his Ziggs if he wants to. Exactly, uh, could be a could be a viable thing. We do see the Zyra uh, monstrosity actually pop up on another board right there, just uh, zipped past that one. So uh, maybe he's gonna go the uh, the other player we were talking about earlier is gonna go for the Velkos. But uh, you know, it's gotta drop in your shop. If it doesn't drop in the shop, there's not really much you can do about it. It's got the Galio on the back. Not gonna try and stick that on the board. Of course, could have gone for the four knight with that. But uh, once the item loose. I can imagine that. I mean, you got the sword, you got the you got the spat, you got the bow. You can make a lot of fun things out of that if you get that on get another drop. Very true. Um, however, if the Velkos doesn't drop for you, you could still go with Syra as you know a viable carry for a bomb uh, invoker, and She's you could also, work. if you later go into like the higher kind of units, you could even go for Heimerdinger if you live that long. Yeah, or if you find him. But, you know, or if you uh, find it's, him. It's a, it's, it's a bet, right? Because like the Zyra two stars already out on another board. They've got the Draconic bonus as well, so they're going to get yep. more Zyras, which makes gonna, it's going to make it very hard for the other A-bomb player to pick up. So this is why, mm. that's why I was saying you kind of got to hope you got that Velkos, because that Zyra is going to be nigh impossible to actually find in, st in shops, most likely, uh, let alone two star. So mm. it, it's it, that, that must be a consideration right now. If you don't have that Velkos or that Zyra yet, are you going to stick with this? Are you going to hope you find that other character? because yep. at the moment you don't have any and that means your damage is suffering which also means your hp is likely going to suffer and it, while it is a resource it is also uh, a resource that you need to know you can play with and not a, a resource that you hope you can play with in that situation absolutely and we're just now seeing the radiant items and that's gonna be the mistral picked up here so that will be another attack speed item plus you know the banish that we know very very nice item to pick up here very helpful against those comps that we've seen before you know against an action against a kale even against the karma you can absolutely outplay and we see it right now the karma getting ciphered here that won't be good for Ten this seconds. board I, 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 that'll be a lot of damage coming in just now that karma won't be able to make up for i think Oh, the tub ranger will definitely gay. Well, that's at least a nice follow coming out. <laughs> it's uh, congratulations, Junkiki. You got another uh, another f follow in there. Not quite Absolutely. sure if that's copyright free, but sure, we'll uh, we'll we'll take the one. We'll take it. Um, <laughs> That being said, though, I mean, this board is looking pretty good. I mean, you got the double ranger bonus. You got uh, you didn't have the draconic going on anymore, but that var that various carry is something we've seen very, 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 very well in the past. Uh, it's still very swappable, though. Like, it's not that you have to stick with the various and uh, not like you have a lot of... Uh, like a, a lot banked on him at the moment because you the, the core of that composition right now is those four knights and those four yeah. knights could support anybody like you don't have to stick with ranger you can just pick up anything True. and i think that's the nice place of version kiki is right now where you can just pivot to anything they'd want to but i do think we're kind of hoping for you know varus three star leona three star kind of to make it really viable um with the yeah. knight carry because 
that is usually what we see from this comp. So I'm just hoping that we can manage to get those units because that's what it's going to come down to. Can you actually get that Varus 3-star? Can you even get a Leona 3-star? Those two units very, very um, important if you want to spin off on that comp and actually go win streaking or take even the win with the final place here. And we're just now facing Alex Caruso, who's still on the A-bomb Spellweaver carry here. And it is the Zix that's going to be Sephiroth here. And we see the Shojin that we talked about earlier on him. So that was definitely what the BF sword was for. And I don't think this is going to end well for him, really, because the Zix is the carry in the end. And that's what we want to have here. Um, we're going to switch here due to a little lag. But that is TMS from Kiki it's... to Alex Caruso yeah. from the other side. Exactly, it's just the same fight, just from the other perspective. Uh, ooh, they actually have the ability to build up uh, build up another nice item over here. Don't know if they're going to build it, because it's not exactly what you might want, the Hextech Gunblade on the Ziggs. Um, you could. It was very viable point. last patch, but I don't, I don't think, think we'll they, do it now. Exactly, I don't think they're forced to have to do it. They get in the Teemo as well, so they're actually uh, suffering a little bit in terms of their combination, but that's okay, because the Teemo is just a very powerful unit. Uh, True. You can indeed just put the put the rod on your Ziggs, because you're very likely just going to put something that combines with the rod on him anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's another Rabba, whether it's a, uh, it's a Jewel Gauntlet, you know, whatever it turns out to be, it's going to be fine. Um, so I'm not too worried there. And of course, the Ziggs is going to get plenty of ultimates off with that spear already. So might as well up the damage a little bit more. Gonna get another Hellion opponent, but I do oh. think that with that Teemo and the Ziggs, they're probably gonna be uh, doing well, especially if you get that last unit left. But let's see if the Tristana can potentially carry this against that A-bomb that's just gonna get shredded by that last Whisper. Very nice combination, of course, items plus ah. that Crick Glove, but it's not enough. The Teemo just mushrooms it, and uh, I mean, you gotta love mushrooms sometimes, but I do think that Zeus uh, might not be having them for dinner tonight. <laughs> no, I don't think so. That was so unlucky because twice she dodged it with her jump and then those mushrooms just blew her up and that's really, really scary if somebody else manages to get a Teemo. And even if I don't think Alex wants to play Heldian in the end, right now it's just very good to have it. And yeah. the Teemo can go in any comp, right? Just yeah. having him in there throwing some mushrooms at your enemy's backlines is so, so lethal and so, so scary for everybody else in that lobby. So that's definitely something you need to look out for. And here we see a Velkos on Draco who might just make this his new carry. Yeah, and I mean, Timo is just that 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 hero, you know, it's uh, he's the one that it's a little bit of a make or break thing, because if he goes down too early and doesn't get the respawn or gets the respawn and goes down anyways, he doesn't really do everything that you want him to do. So that's also why you don't see players itemizing that heavily often. Uh, yeah. But it's still in right now. It's still doing a pretty decent job. It's just going to, I mean, he is the devil. That's how that works. But there's too many units. One on one, Timo's amazing, especially those last 1v1s, but not in this scenario, unfortunately. Going to be a, a loss coming out here. And tough Zara just on top still, 79 HP. They're, uh, they're making business for themselves. And, you know, when we look at those, uh, that scoreboard, they're the they're not the ones that uh, needed this win, but they could definitely use one. You know, they'd be fine if they, if they take a win here. And I'm just looking at players' levels right now. We have Draco on level 8 and everybody else at level 7. So the early level up on Chill Bay actually didn't pull through. Uh, I'm not sure what the cause was. Maybe we were just trying to hit, you know, 3-cost units quite early, 4-cost units quite early, um, hoping to get them and then stabilize there. But it seems to be working out just fine. We're now hitting level 8 on all of the other champions and players here. So that would be desirable. And we're hitting a lot of 2-star units. A Tristana, a Brand, Tristana, 3 on Stu's. That's going to be very scary for everybody else from now on. So yeah. definitely someone to look out for. I don't think Draco will face him that soon. But Stu's also hitting the 3-star cannon. That will be a very dangerous board. Yeah, and she's really prioritized leveling those units over leveling themselves. They only just got level seven because they hit those three star units. So before that, they wanted to get to spend money on 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 the shop. They had plus seventy gold actually, uh, and now actually rolled down back to uh, to level seven and those three star units. Draco's gonna get another win out here. Uh, good job on them. I already see Diego actually on their opponent's side, which is uh, mm. potentially gonna come into play. I haven't seen a lot of Diego today. 
but uh, always good to have him around. And uh, it's mostly due to, you know, Viego. It's a great unit, but the combo needs to be there. Uh, if you can position him correctly, he's a little bit more position dependent. Uh, and you do often not see the combo of Assassin and Skirmisher anymore these days. So it's, it's hard to really justify running the Viego over some other five cost units. Absolutely. So if you can make it work in like an assassin build, you might want to run it. But uh, definitely a volley bear or an action even a lot, lot stronger in current comms. And here we see the hybrid dinger carry in the background. That's definitely going to be scary. I am her sushi has those hellions worked out and he might be a problem for Draco. Well, it looks like he definitely is going to be another Dragonfire turret comes out. Only the monstrosity left. Is this going to be killed off? And uh, even the monstrosity on their own side, Draco, is just in a great spot here right now. Amor Sushi really needs to do well in this lobby if they want to make it to top 8. So they definitely don't want, I want to be here. But we know they can go for the combacks. Currently on 15 HP and Big Brain Player actually already out. We already have yeah. an exit. So uh, Big Brain Player was still semi in the running. You know, did have to have a good game. Yeah, uh, so that out, didn't you know, work. They're not getting it. They're not getting it. <laughs> So Big Brain Player, although they have a really, really great name, uh, sadly eliminated here after this lobby. That won't work out for them in the next lobbies, but everyone else could technically still make it. Draco yeah, really of, would uh, need to win and everybody shit. else to perform badly, but could still make it. They're having it's a really hard. good game right now. It, it is yeah. hard. It is very hard. Really Absolutely. Hard but we'll possible. What, uh what Galio and Karma are actually going to be uh, be pick picking up in this composition. I mean, Galio still needs to be two-starred. Karma actually uh, can potentially be three-starred if they find enough of them. They're not going to okay. uh, choose to actually save the Galio. Fiddlestick's coming in. We're as a, going as a for a bomb, right? Because like mean, we have Fiddle, we had so. Brand. We still have Brand. We have the Canasa on board. We have Nunu. We're selling the Brand. We're still not going for a bomb. What is happening? That's not what we meant to do, I think. We're still not in for that A-bomb 2 out of 3. I think we wanted to switch the Fiddle in for the Sraka, but it didn't work out. I'd, I'd say maybe one for one of the Knights, because he, he has three Knights, so could go yeah. for the four Knights, try and get True. it, but you could also just stick with the two. Um, I don't know. I mean, they're still doing okay in this fight. I don't think they're going to win it, because that Jax <laughs> has been ramped up. But, uh, I mean, Cavalier Jax. I mean, do, need, need I say more? <laughs> Probably not. He's, he's already fast now with his attacks, and then he also just stomps at you. It's uh, it's hard to dodge him at that stage. Let's see if they actually, they're actually going to put in the fiddles now. Oh, no, we're going to switch boards. That's fine as well. I love it. Tuse, uh, of course, low in the lobby at the moment. Would need a decent game here. Is, uh, is on the verge of being in or out of these uh, top of the top eight. So we're looking for them to have a good performance. That uh, I mean, the three-star Tristana is just looking amazing at the moment. with Three all Three-star cannon around as it. well does have the the lucian in it right now to get the cannoneer bonus but also to potentially pivot into if they really need to uh so i like that choice and Ooh. lucian is really one of those units when whenever you get them you just pick them up look at that silencing everyone out of the enemy team except for the volley bear that's going to be so much damage popping off on the tristana she gets to see by the a bomb but can't get back that's going to be the old of heimerdinger hitting her can she make it through she's sealing herself up a little bit that's going to be a jump and here we go destroying the turrets now onto heimerdinger that will be the yeah, end of it she's it. gonna finish it and that is very very dangerous to have that carry Tristana is exactly what I was talking about earlier. You have that Hellion comp and it's so, so strong once you actually get it running. And he did the Shroud of Silence so beautifully here, right? He pre-positioned yeah. all of his team to the left side and that Radiant Shroud of Silence just completely covered basically all of the enemy team. Very, very nice. Yeah, you can see them scouting boards, you know, like where on which side is everybody? Do I need to move my clad around, like my comp around? Gets the eight star, gets even gets in the, the Lux. I mean, that's that's just going to provide a lot more shielding for the Tristana as well in long range. This is uh, this is looking to be more and more dangerous as time goes on. They're all pretty squishy units, but they've they've managed to uh, build up the tankiness. And of course, Hellion does get that respawn all the time. The Lux and Lucian being a bit of a distraction. Tristana jumps in the back line. That's Nidalee gone. That's going to be Rel gone pretty soon as well. 
actually, Ralph's sticking around for a little bit, but those uh, Cavaliers cannot keep running. And this is going to be the Jax versus Tristana. And I talked about it before, because he's a, he's a Cavalier, Tristana cannot just keep jumping away. He's gonna catch up, and the, the Jax is just too much. This is not gonna be stopped. The Legionnaire Jax build. Oh, what a uh, what a strong one right there. Chobi just on top right now, and it's gonna keep on, uh, keep on rolling through this lobby, it seems. Absolutely, and that is very, very good for them. I mean, they already had quite a good amount of points before, but it's going to be even better if they secure a top spot here right now on fire, wind streaking number one in this lobby with a very, very strong comp. That Cavalier Jax is looking so deadly to everybody else while they're just trying to barely stay on the edge of their seats here. Sushi with 2 HP. We have Stu's with 14, Alex with 17, and then John Kiki following with 25 HP. That's very, very close to each other. Obviously, Sushi a little more off, but all of them really need to put in the work now. They need to roll down. They need to invest their goals, slam those items, look for the units that they really, really need to make this work. And that's gonna be the Radiant Shroud coming off for Stu's here. What's his plan? Does mean he gets to put it on whichever unit he wants to. He could even put it on the Lux and reposition her. Um, I think they're gonna wait until they see where the units are. They're on the left side, quickly put it on the Lucian. It will just <laughs> silence pretty much everybody. A what a choice. five hat strat coming out of Stu's here, just waiting until he it. sees the enemy yeah. units, making sure he covers all of them with that Lucian, but it's a probably... And falls. It is enough, that is the Viego, but can she oh no, survive his Viego. ult? No! No! Stolen! Oh, man. That's the Viejo coming in clutch on Kiki right there. Sushi does win uh, win their lobby right now, so they mm -hmm. are currently still alive. But that comeback needs to happen. It needs to start like happen more and more. And everyone else needs to start dropping HP. Like all of these players in the bottom three right now, they're all fighting for a place to be in the top eight. And the lower they go out, the more math is, is going to be event against them. Uh, I know people don't like the subject in school, but you definitely don't like it when it interferes with your TFT games. <laughs> Absolutely, that's not what you want. And that was so, so unlucky that Tristana just jumping into that Yigo old Yigo nice holding her into his grasp. Nobody else to free her from him. Very, very sad to see. But now we're trying to come out against Draco. Draco having a really good game so far. Will the Tristana be able to make it? She's pumping off on that A-bomb. Now going to take care of the Karma next. And it will be enough. Yeah. She just lifts another round in this lobby here sushi will not make it dushi and caruso getting knocked out here and i'm just going to hover over where they are at the moment sushi would have needed a very good game to actually make it further and alex caruso probably also will be eliminated so both of those players depending on where we end up uh, but I don't think they'll make it into our top eight with the points Very as they're likely. currently standing. That, that being said, though, I mean, that last round was insane. I mean, again, yeah. the, the positioning of the shroud, that karma got nothing done. Like, she got like maybe one ult off, but that was it. Because after that, she was stunned by the cannon and the mushrooms came on her and then it just stunned. Like, Everything was basically geared towards letting Karma not play the game. And it yeah. worked out very well in that situation. So uh, Chu's still uh, continuing this round right now. Ooh. Of course, we're going to the next <gasps> PvP round. The items come up Ooh. level 9 here. That is in insane to hit for Draco already in yeah. the start of stage 6. Uh, doesn't have any gold left to play with, but you got that, get that extra unit. The A-bomb is still there. The Karma in the corner next to the uh, next to a few protective units, as well as the front line. This is uh, it's looking like a good combination, but who are you going to get kick, who, who they're going up against is going to decide a lot here and i'm not sure who it is it might be tms jean kiki's copy here with the viego in it I'm not sure if anybody else is running it but that will definitely be very scary we have the Aphelos in the back just going oh it's actually not Aphelos, it's draven going off of course here at the team just chunking away at those units he's gonna take a big part of that gragas and go in against that karma and will it be enough one more time that is the win for that Draven comp here. Very, very scary. Stu's also 
losing his round Ooh. against Chil Bay. That makes it a top three that are left. Tavzara and Stu's out on number five and number four. Now the last three players are fighting for the rest of it. This Draco is doing great business here. Like everyone else that he kind of needs to beat is all ending uh, below them. Uh, it's a lot of points going their way. I will still don't know if it's going to be enough. Like it, it's still a hard pressed one. I think they really need to win to feel like they've got a, tr got a chance here. But uh, at the moment, this comp is working out pretty well. Last round as well that Viego got stunned a, stunned up a lot, didn't actually get to steal anybody because the HP was too high on the unit that they were trying to steal. I think they were going after the... the uh, the Nunu. They just couldn't hmm. get the Nunu. Um, this time around, though, Diego is going to get the copy, gets the Soraka, and uh, let's see if the Karma can put out her damage. She's not being stunned at the moment. But she was silenced, so that just took out a lot of her damage since he couldn't get the ult off. And it and won't be Jax. enough to face that Cavalier Jax of Chil Bay. That is the end of Draco here, coming in third and, and now we're in between Tiamat, Jean Kiki, and Jill Bay fighting for the last space in this lobby here, trying to make the best of it. We have the Draven in the back here for Tiamat, Jean Kiki, and we have that Viego and the dangerous, dangerous Jacks on Jill Bay's side. That will be so, so intense when those two meet. Uh, I mean, I both can Draco's survive another it. round. Both yeah, can Dra survive Draco another round. So Draco doesn't make it. Uh, he's he's got 11 points total, which is just not enough because there's too many players above him that are still two get points. Uh, but that's, that's unfortunate for them. But they did make put up a very cool fight in the end there. Now let's see if the if the Draven or the Jax is gonna win. That's what this, this kind of comes down to. The Draven is already oh. out. The Jax is uh, is starting to ramp up. This is going to be uh, a very hard pressed one. Uh, you can have you can have that misfortune in the back, but the Zephyr not enough. The Viegos actually that against won't be each enough. other. But the problem is, yeah. once that Draven is going to get taken out so early, Tiamat Jean Kiki has no other champion to actually take care of anything else. We really yeah. need to protect that Draven in the early. Maybe one of these items or units will be the savior. We could be going for, you know, anything that really hard to seize all of the other champions or anything that makes this frontline a lot more beefier. But uh, I'm not no sure time. if the Frozen Heart will be enough here. We are, we're sitting on no 50 time. gold. Oh no. What, what are we doing? Heimerdinger? A Heimerdinger? I mean, why not? But okay. Use the items. Frozen Heart on the Viego. That's a good cho choice because he's going to be in that back line. Is he going to try and even put out that spatula and that uh, and that AP rod? Doesn't look like it. He's going to reposition his, uh, his trash just in time. Get the uh, Zephyr up. Did he get you baited? Doesn't no, look like no, it. I no, think, no. I think Chobe is, is certain enough of their case. And uh, they have every right to be, of course. Let's just have a look. I mean, we did get the Zephyr off on the Draven just shortly, but I don't think it was long enough. We have the Viego in the background, but he won't get his old out, it seems. Or he if does. He does get the Draven. TMS's Viego has secured the Draven off Chil Bay for him, but will it be enough to face off this Jax? I don't think <laughs> so. Not. This Jax is such a beast. Man, oh man, that is number one for Chil Bay, and I'm not sure, will it be enough for them to actually yeah. make it into a top eight? They yes, were fine. right? They were fine. Both of them were fine already. Like, Chil Bay All just right. gets another nine points on top of this. All right. They're, gonna be, uh, they're gonna be on top together with Shankiki, actually. Uh, so Shankiki get, gets 25 points total out of this, Chobe on 22. So uh, they're definitely qualified. And now we're going to look at that bottom uh, that bottom area, you know, play 7 through 10 roughly. Because mm. those are the ones that are really uh, clenching their butt cheeks right now, seeing whether they're going to get into top 8 or not. We can see if we can maybe see the end of the other lobby, but uh, otherwise we're just going to be waiting for a little bit. That's uh, completely fine. Um... Uh, so yeah, we we can talk a little bit about what happened there, right? Because there was a lot going on on that board. So we had the double Viego going on, the Draven got stolen, but the Jax, he just yeah. ramped up. He just, every single thing that happened there was just the Jax getting enough time to get to that place, you know, bouncing between units because he got the Cavalier bonus. It's such a combo that you don't see all the time, but it makes so much sense when you think about it. And you almost wonder why you don't see it more often. 
I mean, to be fair, it's not that easy to get in the first place, right? You need to get That's the true. Cavalier spot onto the Jax. And hitting a Jax is also not the most easy part. I mean, usually it's not super contested, like, for example, most Velkosses are. But having a Jax needs to, you know, needs to happen on level two. And you need to get the right items with a comp that works with him. And I think I'm like, I'm trying to think of ways how to face off against a Cavalier Jax. I'm not sure what the others could have done differently here, except for maybe Sephir the Jax. Hard to see it in some way, but that's gonna be super, super hard with like all of the players looking out for positioning. So I'm not really sure how to counter a, a Cavalier Jax at this level. That's really, really lethal to face off against. And uh, I don't know, maybe you have any ideas, but <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't want CC to face it. It, it. it would be CC and silence, right? Like you have to somehow disable the jacks for long enough that it's the only unit left. And then everything else you have on your board does enough like natural CC to just keep him a little bit occupied. But it's, it, yeah, that, that's also so conditional and it's not really a board you can build against every single player. Uh, I mean, to be fair, you know, Zephyrs, uh, Radiant Zephyrs, Silence, you know, all of those things you can build against most boards. So yeah. it's not unreasonable to think you could disable a Jax that way as well. But because Jax doesn't really rely on his ultimate as much, the Silence might not do enough. So you really need the exactly. CC to go off and then kill everything else or try and focus down to Jax early before he does anything else, which is hard to do because people will naturally just try and, you know, fortify him, box him in, make sure you can't get to him. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough one. But then again, we say that about a lot of carries. So we're probably going to see something happen later on where we're just like, oh, yeah, uh, it, it's so situational that the Jax is not likely to pop up again like that. But mm. this, this could be the wake of Jax. The wake of Jax, I don't like it, I have to say. It's really not a unit oh, I'm looking forward to to face off against in my, you know, normal pleb matches. It's not a unit I, I want Jax. to be that strong in the game. I think there might be a nerf coming for it, um, just because it's like Again? super, really? super strong. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? See, um, see, I was I was completely into the skirmishers before they changed it to skirmisher nine. Like before that, it was really fun to play skirmisher. You could say it was broken, but yeah. ever since it was skirmisher nine, it really it's harder to hit those timings. You can't really like a skirmisher nine comp doesn't really do anything most of the time because it takes too long to get going. Uh, so you have to get creative, and then the bonus just isn't enough most of the time. But when you get the jacks rolling like that, it just it's just beautiful. I like the combination. Um, that being said, though. Other lobby is finished as well. We've got the scores. We've got the top eight uh, completely finished out. So we're going to go through that in a little bit. Um, currently, though, I don't we think are. we've got the right uh, top eight on this on the board. I think Did we're we missing. I think no. I think we're missing uh, missing some scores right there. Uh, that's okay though. I've got them right here next to me. So KRC Lid and Sean Kiki are indeed on 25 points. Chobei on those 22, and then Tav Zara is actually on uh, on fourth with 18 points. Uh, really? you've got Jim Ray on 17, so he is still on fifth. We're just missing the fourth player basically, the fourth place. Mm. Um, then we do have. Uh, Arrow, 1v9 on 16 points indeed. Choose on that 15 and Shining Star on 15. Uh, Shining Star is just in there, in there twice. Yeah, the I was going to say, is, we is have our top the... Eight. We, we don't have to have a tiebreaker. We we avoided it. We did it. We managed it, guys. Barely. We, uh, the seating doesn't matter, matter anymore in top eight, of course. Once you're in there, you're just in the lobby. Uh, it's not like you get first pick for anything or, or something like that. So we've got that top eight. We've got it ready. And uh, that means we can start our finals we can start the playoffs or this the, the last three lobbies of the day we're halfway through absolutely and now it's down to the nitty gritty to the final eight to the last contenders the the final matches where everybody's just trying to get those juicy juicy points and it will be easier for some than for others right Lilith and John Kiki starting off with 25 to be even with 22 against Shining Star and Stu's on the 15 there's quite a huge balance or, or like imbalance already between those players and they definitely need to work to make this kind of um yeah even if they want to have a chance at the top four spots where they get a prize, where they get paid to actually, you know, win here. Um, so definitely it will be very hard for our 
players that are you know on the on the 15 on the 16 17 points right now as they need to win rounds to make good here and hope that Lilith and John Kiki as well as Chill Bay don't make that many points at the same time so will be very interesting to see what those players come up with they will go on with like big comps, steering comps, trying to make sure that they stomp their opponents early. I think we will also see items being slammed early again, since that is something the players have done before. Just making sure that they, you know, get into winning early don't lose that much hp as i said before it is a resource it is something that you can play around with and those players are not willing to give any hp up freely so they are really making sure they're getting into the game ahead of everyone else else quite early yeah Totally. It's um, and, and in this last lobby as well, you have a lot of players that are not very likely to necessarily contest each other, I'd say. I think, think there's a very nice uh, nice balance between these players, uh, which means that I would say kind of anything can win. That being said, we haven't seen that much of KRC Lilith. We haven't don't really know what they play a lot of, uh, so there could be a contestation somewhere right there. Uh, but it is it is close-ish together. Um, oftentimes we won't really see the the, the bottom players in, in lobbies like this uh, still rise up in terms of uh, in terms of points. It's just it's a very big difference, right? There's ten points between them, but yeah. you could still get into top four. Top four is very achievable. It's only three points between those six players. So uh, I'm all for it. Um, if they can actually make it happen uh gonna go into the game in a few minutes of course in the meantime gonna of course uh <laughs> gonna of course have a very fun time uh, going through all the strats etc but uh we also gotta acknowledge that next week we won't be here for a weekly because of course tft worlds is going on so we thought yeah. you know let's give the platform away to the to the right place to the top players and they'll be back the week after if you still haven't signed up for the weeklies it's not a first come first serve so if you can still do it the sign up link is in the chat it's going to be posted every now and then every now on and then you can also just use the command exclamation mark sign up and make sure you get yourself on there we have a minimum requirement of masters and above uh on the eu servers so it is an eu only tournament but it's eu west eu northeast turkey like everything that's a uh a attached region right there we are very happy to have you play and uh, show off your skills i mean we do see a variety of players a variety of skill levels making the top eights so uh it's the it's the classic tft way just because you're on the global leaderboard doesn't mean you're gonna get on our leaderboard absolutely and i think your camera just crashed here for a little second oh, we're back. but we fixed that for you and absolutely i'm so excited to see what world's are going to be like they're playing on the patch that we're seeing today so that's definitely a patch that is very interesting i think it happened again um but we'll try to fix it maybe restart your Make camera sure. on your end I'll, I'll do it on my end for sure yeah. yeah so we get that out of the way um while you're still doing that again if you want to take part i absolutely advise you to sign up it's very very fun it's one day um and you can take away a big prize a good amount of money and you know might even make some friends along the way it's definitely cool to have the banter i think uh, from what i've seen in our discord the players are like bantering at each other having fun um and it seems like a really good time so i'm happy to yeah. see that we're just waiting on everybody to arrive just now for the final top eight lobbies number one going to start in a couple of minutes here yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. And of course, they are indeed playing for some prize money. We've got the 300 euros on the line. First place actually gets a decent chunk of it. Half, 150 euros. Then we go down to the 75, 50, and 25 for the players below it. Uh, just to make sure that it's all distributed in a little bit. So the top four, if you're in there, you're going to get some cash out of it. And uh, the bottom four, unfortunately, in a top eight, don't get anything. So that means that out of the 16 players gotta be in that top four top 25 percent gets everything and the rest uh have to try again some other time but of course we do switch up players every week so we don't get the returning champions maybe in the future we'll get a uh you know when we've done eight of these we'll do like a uh number one uh, lobby so everyone who got first they're all gonna play against each other something like hmm. that we'll see it's uh, the a lot of lobby. ideas we have the lead lobby <laughs> exactly <laughs> I like that. I think it's a cool idea to like honor your champions and and crown the champion of champions, right? You know, yeah. have that one player that takes it all. It would be very cool to see. And I think it's very cool that we have a tournament that is EU based in TFT because there aren't any like that just yet because it's 
hasn't been a focus so much. There are NA tournaments, oh. there are Korean tournaments, and so on. But Europe just haven't hasn't been on that ship yet. And I think it's, it's really, strange, really right? cool to see. It is strange because, like, normally so it's always that. We have so many players here. We do so yeah. well on Worlds. <laughs> normally, it's always that EU versus NA banter in like every other game. And yeah. uh, TFT just hasn't gotten around to this yet. And it seems like we're getting a replacement from what I can hear in production. We have been waiting for one player that hasn't shown up. And right now we're going to get a replacement in. Silent will be slotted in for Tav, um, Tav Shara, I think, from yeah. what I can tell. Since Looks they like didn't it. show up and Silent was number nine on our leaderboard, so that will be a reslotting with two points less than Shining Star and Stu's. He's now going to come in, or they will now come in and show us what they can do. We see it here on the ninth place, bottom left, Silent coming in with the 13 points as our replacement for Tavjara, who didn't show up just now. And we're going to go into the next lobby here. Top eight players remaining. I'm very curious to see any comp you would like to see in this lobby. Do, do we really have to talk about Chuck Bug again? Or uh, okay, gonna, that's it? it. That's it. That's it's, what you uh, want to see. It's, so I, I, the thing is, I don't necessarily want to see it. But mm. I wouldn't be doing justice against the uh, Guba last week, and co-caster who was just okay. kept asking for it and didn't show up. So I just want to be, oh! Megatron cloak over the AP rod. Now that is a move that I was not expecting. Like I said, this might have been the first time in weeks that the Negatron cloak gets picked up uh, as an item willingly, because uh, it wasn't even a force. You could have gone for the AP rod. Absolutely, but maybe you know I'm we just want to make sure we get that rune ants early or anything like that. Um, if if you're hoping to play a reroll comp, you know, like Vein 3, Kale, Kale Knights, anything like that, Runons is usually an item you would want to have. So maybe just players going for, an, oh. for it early, making sure they're getting it. Um, we see the Legionnaire coming in for <laughs> Jean Kiki. You're shaking your head. We see the vibing with the units on the board. That means we're going to get a Kalista in the next shop. Uh, what are you shaking your head at? My shaking my head at the luck gets the bow and the BF sword. I mean, you know, plus the legionnaire. This is going to be a very good start for them if they can uh, can get that on, as well as the AP rod. Like these damage items are going to come out swinging. Can already mm. make the rage blade. Can already make uh, you know whatever they need to really to start that start themselves good. Don't know if they're going to be slamming it early, but a rage blade Callista. I don't think that's ever a bad choice. Plus rage blade can go on pretty any, pretty much anybody. So it's fine to have it if you want to slam it. Absolutely, and I, I do have to say I like Legionnaire, right? It's just such a fun yeah. comp, and I don't think as many people play it as they should, just because it's very strong and not that yeah. hard to achieve in terms of units. Like, you don't need to have that certain unit to play off of. You have a very strong middle and early game as well with all of those Legionnaires, and it's just Ooh, a solid comp it. that doesn't get enough of showtime. What is he thinking about? He was the thinking knights? about the Rage Blade. He was thinking about the Rage oh, Blade. Oh, okay, He's okay. offering the item. He's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do, do, do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, we, we don't know. Like, sometimes they might be watching the stream, so they're just hearing us talk True. about it. And, like, I'm going to slam it. I'm going to slam it not. Look, um, look, look, look. <laughs> not True. doing it. Of course, they are, like, coming in as there a favorite we go. the lobby right now. It's the top 25. It does put it in. Has the Nikos as well, potentially, to uh, throw in another unit later. Uh, like I said, their items have just been killing Ooh. this game so far. Even the units are fine, but it's it's just about those items at the moment. Um, does not go, it's not going to look like they're going to win this round because they've got such low level units at the moment. But they are just making a good play to uh, to get some uh, get a good build going at least. We have to say that was also a really mean thresh hook, right? You have the Kalista yeah. in the background with the Rage Blade. You really want her popping off. And then that thresh hook goes through and just takes so much CC off of her. So much time where she can't stack that Rage Blade up. And that's basically like a lost unit right there since she can't get to her damage spike and will be killed before that. Very, very unfortunate here for it, TMS Jean Kiki, but we're still in the first stage of PvP, so that won't be that troublesome for our players. We're going to see where they place in those first couple of stages and then go into the wheel. And from then on, I think we'll kind of see where those players will land. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be a, uh, a fun one. 
to see where that rage blade ends up. But that sunfire cape on Leona as well early, like it's one not, not one of those items in, in champion combinations and early on in the game that just makes so much sense because. Leona, you're going to keep her in until mid game at least, right? You're going to have a bunch of knights, you're going to stack, yeah. stack that health, stack that HP. She's going to be blocking a lot. Everyone's going to focus on her, so they're all going to get the fire on them. It's it's just it, it makes so much sense. And when I play my own lobbies and I see people not doing that when they have the option uh, and when they're just building knights, I'm like, why are you not slamming the item? Like this is the no brainer item you just do. Yeah. Um, and but I mean that's that's that just shows the level of the lobbies I'm playing at, I guess, uh, because it's not just second natures to these people. Um, that being said, like they might want to force something else. I don't know what they want to do. Uh, that being said, of course, these players will do that. Like Shining Star was actually really funny. Like because you talked about the banter earlier in the server. Shining mm. Star was like, I'm just gonna go out. I don't want to play top eight. Like I'm just I'm just here to have everybody get free points. And now they're in a top eight lobby all of a sudden. Like they could really? actually go for the prize money if they want to. Uh, yeah, I mean. They they were probably joking around. Don't get me wrong. I think so because Shining Star uh, is one of our top players. <laughs> Shining Star is one of our top players. So uh, I I think that was just you know a diversion tactic, making sure nobody sure. else sees them as a threat. Uh, yeah. Since Shining Star actually places on EUW twenty eighth and on the Global hundred forty fourth, they're like one of our top players, challenger here in that lobby and they're definitely a force to be reckoned with they had a kind of difficult lobby in between but secured themselves a comfortable spot here in our final top eight and right now we see them come in and stomp chill bay for the first time and now they're the only one sitting at 100 hp going into the wheel so that is definitely also a shine of like early force making sure you don't lose hp where you really don't need to and uh, yeah i'm liking this i'm I'm curious to see what yeah. we see players leave in that wheel. Because that's always need, interesting. Yeah. I think we they see Jim Ray taking the Negatron cloak over everything else that's in there. Very, very curious choice for him here. Oh, and Shining nice. Star getting that AP rod. Very, very nice. That is, um, that's not the item you want to have that wind streaking. Uh, the wins we can play or have at the moment. Like, if you look at their board right now, that AP rod is one of the best items they could have gotten. A sword or a bow would probably might have been better, like looking at yeah. their, their damage dealers at the moment. But, you know, you make an arch, you make an, uh, make an archmaid staff, put it on the, put it on the misfortune, and you can make it rain quite quickly. Yeah, that, that that's true. You're going to make it rain and you're going to make it rain with pain, I think, because Misfortune is one of the units that's very, very strong as well, right? Especially when you get some kind of mana item on her, it'll just allow you to get like big amount of global AOE damage onto the enemy team. And we're going to see that in action in just a little bit. Here it comes and that will be painful for the tank Shining Star, just showing off what they can do here deliberately leading the Klausda and then going for that level 2 Sana. That won't be a problem now at this point. She's going to fall down. That will be another win for them. Now at 4 wins consistently, still 100 HP. Definitely a very nice win streak to start this game off. Amazing. Like an on, just on fire, 4 win streak, gets another thrash in the shop. Can actually even pick up the, uh, the Nautilus as well to potentially go for the 4 Knights. It's going to pick the Velkos instead, which I like that choice, honestly. If you can potentially uh, swing into a Velkos build, get the Archmage Staff on Velkos or just build some other items on it. Uh, it could be a very fun transition. Um, and yeah, the Redeemed stack is already happening a little bit. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with this one. Indeed, switch that Archmage Staff on it. Get a, get a little bit more going. The cannoneers are out for the moment. And, uh, yeah, start doing some damage with the ray. I mean, I have to say getting that Velkos on level 5 is also kind of an achievement that we have to yeah. admire because it's very, very hard to do. And having that Archangel staff on them that early will also allow for a good damage spike as long as what just happened doesn't happen to them. Because you really need to protect that Velkos for, like, in in any case of an assassin comp coming for you, you really need to make sure that that Velkos stays protected in a safe nest around like his allies. And you really don't want it to die before the first laser beam goes off. That's definitely not what you're looking for. However, I think what Stu's might be looking for could be a BF sword, just getting those juicy juicy ad items totally. on his comp here. Might yeah. even be going for like Sentinel uh, Lucian in the end. 
Yeah, might also be happening. Like it, it, all, it all just depends on what drops. Uh, of course, they do have that uh, uh, si that last whisper on, which is a <gasps> great item okay. for Lucian to have. Upgrade the Kha'Zix. Yeah, I mean, Ooh. that was like instantly from the crooks, right? He had, I think, one Kha'Zix on his board. And he gets another one. This is that be will like be the three-star three Kha'Zix. Kha Ooh. Could we actually see a successful Sins build today? Could it happen? Is it is it our dream come true? Well, I don't know if it's your dream come true, but I would have loved to see another another spin to win come and happen today. Uh, does need a lot of pieces for an actual Sins build still, but hmm. it's early. You know, we're only in the first uh, first round of stage three. Uh, we haven't really locked in our comps most of the time, uh, but you do need to three three star Kha'Zix as fast as possible, as well as potentially level up the pike a little bit more, because otherwise you're just going to lower that drop chance every time you level up, and uh, we're sure. almost at level 6 already, so. Absolutely. You need to make sure you pick that up early, otherwise it's going to be very difficult. However, there are a lot of sentinels in the pool, right? Uh, so it's not that hard to yeah, actually get sentinel. the sentinel 6, um, so I think we might be going for that as well. Um, but we'll have to see. Having the Kha'Zix on level 3 would definitely be more of a direction for the Asa comp, but uh, I don't think it's that strong at the moment unless you're hitting that Nocturne 3, so uh, very curious to see what Stu's comes up with. We see all of his other teammates are slowly hitting level 6. He decides not to go there, so that might just be another sign to, you know, slow roll see if uh, there's a pike coming out that we need or maybe any other of the lower asset champions that we need to go yeah, into an assassin slow, comp slower it's definitely slower on purpose at the moment i mean also still still got the 40 gold so don't want to really drop below that if you don't have to uh has plenty of hp to work with like it's still early games this is definitely one of those players that might be going for a uh you know for a uh we, I always call it like inting for carousel, you know, just making sure you get the right yeah. items because that will be beefing up the compasses, comp as well. Um, and then just making sure you can get the gold for the units. Uh, so at some point they'll have all the units and then you just level up to nine straight away because they've got way too much gold. Um, but, you know, they're probably going to not gonna get out of hand that much. Um, I like that the legend as well, just having the little, little babies run behind it. It's just so cute. Yeah, it's adorable. Like I said, I love those little legends. I think they're such a great addition. Here we see the first Nocturne, the Nocturne coming in. And I think you might be right with your bet that this could be an assassin comp in the He's making. It open, right? Like we said, it, it, you have the yeah, doors. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But you know, going for Don't for the pike, going for for nocturne, and having the cassocks on there, that's definitely a good direction this comp could be going in. And we see the frozen heart coming on Olaf, just making sure there's a little more damage and sustain on his team comp here in the beefy front line. And Olaf just survives a little while longer while those assassins chop away at the back line of the enemy team but it won't be enough that is the death of Olaf and I don't think he can win this round either. Stu's taking a lot of damage here from those matches it's not like he's only losing to one champion being um on the enemy team that finishes them off but rather several so he's taking a lot of extra damage coming in here um even if he was playing to uh int for the wheel as you said yeah, I mean, that's obviously right now the wheel is coming. So after this, it's going to be more apparent as what they actually want to do. Because right now they secure that la that first pick. They're going to pick up the Nocturne with the Fist, which is actually, you know, you can keep that. You don't even have to have to sell that. If you get sure. an, if you get a good second item with it and a third Nocturne, you've already got two star Nocturne with their first item on it. So yeah. I'm not at all mad that this is happening. The first pick working out for them. But right now that comp has got to start working for them as well. They can have a few more losses. They don't have to, like they can keep loss streaking a little bit more more for the golds um but then after that you know level six has to be hit and those units have to be uh, dropped properly otherwise it's uh gonna be game over pretty quickly for choose in the first round and they don't really have a lot of room to work with if they want to make it to top four they don't have that high point score to uh, to drop a lobby or two Absolutely. So uh, definitely just needs to kind of plan ahead and make sure that all of the HP they're losing now they can make up for it in the end if they want to actually stay here. As you already said, we're currently hovering Jim Ray, 
who's on a Dawnbringer comp, as it looks like. So we might be seeing Not the Karma. For us. We might be seeing the Karma come out once again here, since that has been a very strong and viable pick for those competitors in our lobbies today and also in the final weeks or in the last weeks. Um, and we see Jimray doing like good damage to Stu's comp just now. And that will also be a heavy loss for Stu's. I'm not sure I'm a fan of what's currently happening for them. Uh, they still haven't hit the, the two-star uh, Nocturne, three-star Kha'Zix hasn't come out. The Pike yeah. hasn't really been leveling. They haven't really like get a gun anything done in the last few rounds. Yep. Um, and I think they might just be deliberating, do I pivot to something, but then to what? And they might just be stuck. Like sometimes you get that, that blackout in your brain, and it just doesn't happen. That being said, Jim Ray, we know they can play a decent, uh, a decent Dawnbringer. They got that uh, third place in that first lobby we were watching against Vulpix, where they both kind of cannibalized each other, but still came out on top. Uh, and really all they need is the Karma with the right items, and they've basically got a good comp going. They got Dawnbringer 4 in that situation. Uh, currently they have two two-star Rivens in, so they could even three-star the Riven still. Uh, um, because they've got one on the bench. There's a lot going for them at the moment, and uh, it's going to be scary for a lot of players to go up against them. They do go for that gauntlet. I think they're mm. really they're really expecting that Karma to drop. Throwing on the Rakan to hold right now, but that is going to be a Karma switch as soon as she comes in. Absolutely, but you're already saying it as soon as she comes in. That's the win condition here and you really need to get her. That can be so, so difficult. Right now, Jimmery is in a comfortable position, number two, win streaking a little bit. Anyway, this will be the second win for them. Um, but, y you know, you need to get that karma in. Um, and if she drops very, very late, you might lose a lot of HP just to get her. Um, we're going to be yeah. slow rolling, so we're on 50 gold. Oh, that is some... Ah, we switched position. But uh, I think Jim Ray will be doing the same. Doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, I, I was just talking about the gold and was like, wait, wait, what? Um, but Jim Ray will also be doing the same, right? He will be holding on to all of that gold. Just make sure that once uh, the level is there to actually hit the karma, they'll be able to comfortably roll down, make sure they get it. Um, preferably as a two-star unit um and uh, oh, yeah, i'm so curious star? to see oh. what jean kiki is doing just now hovering through seeing what the others are doing trying to see if the ideas that they're having oh. are making sense that is the two-star yasuo coming in and we're not seeing them put the yasuo on the board just yet there we are oh. leveled up went under 50 gold for this we're currently like losing so maybe this will be the turning point. I think we saw we've seen we, we are seeing actual griefing right here. He was hovering over the assassin's board. He had the nocturne on the bench. It's like I'm not gonna sell this nocturne because it's two two star nocturnes on their board. If they get that three star, that might be a threat. So I'm gonna hang on to it. Sells it now, just around later, just for the extra like chance that they're not gonna get it dropped. Because um, you know you want to hit that nocturne sooner rather than later. Um, but yeah, that's uh, I think that, that might have actually been a bit an example of that. Does take out Chilby here? Of like not taken out, but like take a win. Uh, and they're currently competing for that number one and two spot at the moment. So uh, good win against that. Absolutely, and that was such a good stack up on that Callista's death play, right? Already being paid for it, it makes so much sense to have that there. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's a very good choice of item at this point in the game. Just making sure you have a viable damage carry in the backline, making sure to deal out all of that damage to the enemy units without losing too much on your comp altogether, because you're going to need those items in the later games as well. Very, very smart. Yeah, she's still uh, sticking on the assassin board. Actually, he's been doing a little bit better, but it's still uh, on a relatively low HP total. So it does have to be, uh, I would say lucky, but has to get a little bit more going. Uh, one, one Kha'Zix away from the three star, two Nocturnes away from the three star. Like they're really close on hitting it, but they do need to hit it still. Like it, if it's if it's not there, it's going to be more and more problematic as time goes on. And, uh, uh, you know, choose, choose to need to get there. But looking at Shankiki, they don't have any trouble getting anything at the moment. But well, that being said, that Jax is ramping up right now and they're not going to win this round. Silent coming in as a uh, good competitor. I mean, of course, they had to replace uh, the number four seed 
uh, coming in at uh, with, with 13 points. But if they start doing good business for themselves in this first and if, even the second lobby, they're probably going to be uh, in a very good spot. There's a three-star Kha'Zix, only one more Nocturne, and then this is, uh, the Sins board will actually start to come online, and players need to start worrying, because uh, Chu's already starting to be on a bit of a win streak with two. Absolutely. So that will even definitely be... already? A scary contender. Wait, what? How did that happen? That I mean, is a very lucky draw for somebody that's playing Asa. Yeah. Wow. And we're very close to like Nocturne as well, right? We have two Nocturne, One Nocturne twos. And it's three. Exactly. One yeah. more, and it's going to be zoom, zoom back to the good old days with a blender comp uh, on that yeah. Nocturne. So I love seeing that. I personally love a Nocturne carry. I think that's always fun because he just goes in and like mows everybody else down. Um, one of my personal favorite carries in those reroll comps. Very cool to see it come up here because I think it's the first time we've seen it, at least today. I'm not sure about the last cups if there was any Nocturne 3 contenders. It's the first but week it's, for sure, yeah. It's definitely rarer to see just because it's very difficult to hit. And it seems like everything's going to be Stu's ways right now. Yeah, and I feel like today we've seen all those different things win, right? Like we've seen the Karma, we've seen the Jax, we've seen the Kale. Uh, now we're seeing potentially an Assassin's build do pretty well because Chus was like losing for a long time, is now coming up. Uh, we do actually see Chobe being in a very tough spot right now. They do hit an early level 8, which is a great thing for them to do. Uh, but they have to start winning because they're on 30 HP. They're currently on first. There's a knockdown 3 for Chus, so he's going to be able to put in the Volley Bear as well. This is just a giant upgrade. Here we made. go. This is, uh, oh, they're just going to start rolling now. This is insane. Absolutely. That is such a beautiful comp right there. We have the Kazix 3. We have the Nocturne 3. We have our Volley Bear with the Morellonomicon. That's going to be an extra amount of damage together with what CC revenants. coming on onto oh. the enemy team. Plus all of those Revenants. What a beautiful comp right there. And I'd be surprised if that wasn't one of the contenders for place one in this lobby here. Win to win. It's absolutely. Back, baby. Love it. It was that was the, it was the motto of week one. It was the, it was also very strong in our banana split. But right now it's back and it's back in a beautiful way. Choose trying to go for that number one spot and actually get some more points on the board. The consistency of teams TSM TMS uh, Jean Kiki actually not uh, paying off so far in this lobby. It's currently on fifth place, and it's going to be the, uh, the 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 runner ups. I mean, KRC Lilith is currently actually on uh, on first and second place. Uh, I was, was wrong about that. I thought it was Chilby. It was uh, Kerosene Lilith. Uh, and Jim Ray still completely on top. The Dawnbringer is still paying off uh, dividends. Let me actually check if Jim Ray's gotten this karma. He has. Has found yeah. his Yeah. There we go. That's also going to be one of the comps in this lobby that's very, very dangerous, right? I mean, we talked about this earlier as well. Sometimes Radiant you have death. these comps. <laughs> nice. Sometimes you have these comps that are just very stable and very good to like go into top four right one of those would be the the karma comp um that's just or, or the velkos comp as well usually you're able to hit them um they're very reliable they're very good to like get into the winning part of the lobby but then there are these reroll comps like the the three star nocturne that's just bonkers um that usually allows you to like stomp a lot of everything else once you have that comp ready but it's so scary to go there because you're losing so much hp and gold and once you kind of step over the line of i'm hitting this unit too late there's just not much you can do about it so um right now she so definitely needs to have like a little more of a beefier front line to me it feels yeah um in order to get that. his assassins come off it's either that, or you get, or you get uh, two more levels, and you build six, Assassin Six. That, like that's okay. the other option, right? Sure. Um, it, it's because then it's then it's all or nothing. Like you go all in or nothing on those on those quick crits. You basically have to delete the other comp within like a, a ten seconds, and they're mm -hmm. just like at least most of it, and you're just gonna win. Um, that is the other route they can go. For now, it does seem safer to go with the BV front line. I mean, you have to hit level nine, which is a, a pain to do in the first place. So getting that Gwen in, uh, making a little bit more beef is definitely the route to go. But you don't really want to give up right now on that four revenant, four assassin bonus. So totally, uh, Gwen, a great pickup to get into. You can get something else if you find it, 
Uh, but right now, this is uh, the route I'm uh, very happy about them taking. Absolutely. Um, and to be fair, I don't think going for six Asa is very viable at the current state of the game because many people pick like an early volley bear. Many people, I mean, we don't really um, have a Diana that much in these lobbies, but she's also very strong at like a early CC. And if you have like a volley bear or Diana go against you with six Asa, it will just absolutely ruin all of your chances of what you said, deleting the team in 10 seconds or less. Yeah. So um, that's definitely a problem that uh, you need to keep in yeah. mind. So I think it's very, very smart to go a little bit more into the beefy area of like getting an Ivern that's a little bit stronger, trying to two-star that Voldy Bear, getting the Fiddlesticks in, uh, preferably also with a Morellonomicon, just, you know, doing a little extra damage uh, and getting all of those units on two star is really what I would be focusing in on. Not so much getting the Viego on two star. I think that's also a strong option. But really, I just want to have a little more units in the front line, making sure that the Nocturne and the Cassix and the Pike can like chomp off at the enemy backline. Yeah, I do see the positioning happening as well with everyone picking up so many Zephyrs. You really want to position your, uh, especially your Nocturne and your Viego in a place where they can immediately start doing things. They both got knocked up in this in this lobby, like in this particular round. So they didn't get to start spinning. Nocturne tries, but it's too mm. late. Like everything else on the board has already been dealt with. Uh, and I don't think, like a beefier frontline wouldn't have helped with that. This is just the disabling nope. of those two. And everyone picking up Zephyrus right now, that's going to be the biggest pain in the in the behind there for Shoes at the moment. Uh, Chobi actually starting to streak a little bit. It's on fire at the moment. So uh, we're going to probably be seeing them come up in, in at some point. Um, but let's see what else they can pull out. At the moment, we're just taking a look at uh, Sean Kiki, let's seeing what they're going got going on for themselves. Currently on second place, this lobby is incredibly close together. No one actually above the 35 HP mark. So this could go really anyone's way. This is going to come down to the matchups a lot. I think there's a lot of rock, paper, scissors going on in this lobby. <laughs> very, very true. And I have to say, you mentioned it already. All of the Sephirs are coming out. And that's just uh, such a pain train for everybody that has a strong comp. Right now, we have the luck of, you know, just getting the ZZ Rot unit, uh, oh getting Sephir on Stu. Side, but we have the Kale in the background firing up, and nobody's taking care of her. There's no CC that's going to stop Kale from firing, and she's going to go on to stage five, and that is it. Here we go. That's yeah. the pain rain coming through. Stu's taking another loss now on five HP. That's not much to go with. It, it's such a shame that basically the entire lobby has been building anti assassin the entire time. Uh, I don't know if they did it on purpose or that it just happened to be that way, but Chus is just not able to make it work. I mean, has, he has everything going for him. He's got the items, he's got the units, uh, he's got the levels at the moment. It's just, I mean, yeah, the front line's not as beefy, but the front line not being mm. beefy is not even the issue. Like, the assassins are just not getting to streak. The amount of CC and Zephyrs and silences, it's yeah. too big. There's too much going on, and I think that's like the crux of everything is like that's the problem with assassins right now is you can't get them to actually do their job because the early game the initial cc of a game uh like the initial items abilities etc there's too many of them for assassins to ever get ramped up because they don't need to get ramped up they need to get started and mm. if that takes too long if they're not getting to then they're going to get blown up and then you lose half your team before it even happens and even a nocturne spinning to win it's not going to be able to rest himself enough times I have to say, I'm a little curious that Stu's doesn't have a Diana on the board. Because with the Assassins, as I, I already said, I think I so. Know. Because with the Assassins, it's usually very helpful if you have that one huge CC coming in, making sure all of the other Assassins are able to do the work to actually kill some of the other units before they get CC'd by, let's say, I don't know, a Nautilus or a Rel or whatever. So, like, all of that is definitely something that you want to keep in mind of. And here we see the Sentinel illusion of Chiu Bei just chopping off at Stu's, and that will be the end of it. Stu's is out. Unfortunate. Number eight. And Lilith is very close behind, two very HP close. left, followed by Jimmeray on nine HP. All of those players are very, very low at the moment. And that is the Voldy Bear 2 for Jim Ray. That should maybe turn around a little bit oh, here. We have the Riven Carry. Boy. That's very rare to see as well. 
on Jerry. I mean, look at that volley bear, those thief gloves doing their job, both the war mugs and the stone plate, and it's a level two. Like, he's gonna be a very beefy boy right now. Gonna get to respawn as well. Got the Garen next to him, the Riven on three star. This is a very tough comp to deal with, and he has mm. been forcing these Dawnbringers. It's unfortunate he hasn't gotten the two star karma yet. Yeah. She's very, she has, she has the items for it, like to be a, be, be a big carry, but the front line is so strong that unless she gets pulled in by a Thresh, she should be able to do a lot of work still. Um, didn't get pulled in far enough, I think, but might still get taken out by the Draven. I was Draven gonna say, respawn. Lilith has a Kale in the background and the Draven doing the work, and the Kale just leveled up onto five, and that was the end of it. Dimmery also getting kicked out by that very, very strong Kale here that just can't be stopped. You really need some unit that goes in the back line, like a Diana. I keep repeating myself that takes care of that. That CCs her. A yeah. frozen heart, Diana, even would be the best thing I can imagine to kind of counter a Kale comp. Um, together with a Sephir, maybe, right? So those uh, are the two things that I can think of that would take care of that. And we have Jean Kiki on the Kale, and we have Lilith on the Kale. And that's two of the players actually going for that capped Kale build that will be very, very lethal to everybody else in that lobby. And there's enough Kales to actually make this work, apparently. Another Deathblade. Who's, gonna, yeah. who's that going to go on? Very good yeah, item for Jean Kiki. What do you have? Oh, he might actually build the Jax into it. No, Jax can't be built into this, right? I mean, he can, but could, could, could do it. Yeah. There's another we'll Iron see. Plant. Why not? <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be the round where like three players might go out. We have uh, maybe even four. Like there's there's so much that can go down here, um, but we're likely to lose at least three. The kill reposition is going to come out late, just making sure that she's, she's in the right spot, not to be blown up by anybody else. Even the Galio reposition for the Zephyr, of course. Ten seconds. Who's going to get disabled for ten seconds? Is it going to be the Karma? Nope, it's going to be... I can't even find out. Yeah, really on the looks for Jean Kiki. So two of them actually got Zephyr here. But that doesn't matter because Kale is firing off. And we can see it here is the next stage one more time. And that will be it. Here Oof. she goes. She doesn't even need it. Just making sure that... Who? That was Timo's... That was, that was Timo's uh, cruel... A bonus only Timos and Timo and Kale were left, and therefore Timo automatically wins due to him being cruel. Wow, yeah. what a turn of events! I thought she had that, but I absolutely forgot redundant. about that synergy being there on that champion. Got wow, out, they got pulled back in into hell. True. Timo just taking everybody there. True. I mean, it's always you know, in the actual game of League of Legends, it's always a little bit of a joke as well. The Timo, but uh. In, in TFT's just as much. Like, it, it, he doesn't really do much uh, aside from the shrooms, but then as soon as that's one left, that's your nightmare. That's where Timo just gets you. Comes down from below. It's uh, it's not quite the sewer grade scene in it, but it's uh, it's close. Absolutely. So, a very, very... Uh, yeah, exciting turn of events. I totally forgot that synergy existed, Timo existed? but wow. I, I do know Timo exists, but I just thought, you know, I was so in the moment of Kaylee popping off that I thought yeah, she was doing amazing. She, she, she'd have this and I didn't realize it was a Timo she's facing. And I was like, wait, why does Jean Kiki lose? Uh, until I realized what was happening uh, there. So that just took me off for a second. But this time around, the Timo won't be enough for Shining Star. who will get their loss handed to them. And we're now on the final three. Lilith got kicked out. Chilbei is out and Psy out out of this lobby for now we're gonna go into a second and third lobby after this to make sure we have enough matches for everybody to you know try and get their points but right now we have Jean Kiki Shining Star and Arrow 1v9 in the top places here for us going past three actions and not picking them up i mean i get it you don't really need it but it was uh mm. it was it was one there air 1v9 not a player we've really looked at today at all because you know they, they haven't given us a pov but currently on third place wind streaking still they might just be running away with everything look at this going on right there got the abomination that's just uh 
um, gonna, gonna come out now. The monstrosity just runs straight at Kale. Doesn't care how much stage she's on. This is gonna be taking them out. And the Heimerdinger, this is such a beefy board. Such a damaging board. Yeah. Uh, and that is, uh, that's another win for, for Arrow. And TSM, uh, Team S, uh, Jean Kiki might just be actually going out on third if this keeps going. Shining Star. It depends on the matchup, right? Like, the matchup is going to decide who's going to win this or who's going to go out on third. And uh, I don't know. Like, I really don't know who it's, it's going to be. Who's going to go up against who? Because they've just gone up against each other in various combinations already. So it really could be anybody. Yeah, very, very true. I this, is, this is the RNG coming in right here. And we're actually getting another Kale in the shop, but we're not going to take it. We're just going to roll and try to see what else we can make here. We really would like to have, you know, the Ivern on two, the Fiddlesticks on two, anything like that. But we're not going to get it. And that is Jean Kiki actually, you know, taking the oh. L a little bit. We can't go in for the Gwen. There's not much we can sell. We're just now trying to make it work with so little units and the items are not on there. What is happening? That is the final straw we're grasping. The Lux is getting Zephyr. Will that be enough for the Kale to actually level up? But the Garen is right in her face and she is already so low getting finalized by that Heimer Dinger from the copy and that is it for tma jean kiki getting kicked out here and we're just now covering what's going on with the other two watching what's happening and that will be a TMO. loss for um, um, arrow um. but they're going into another round yeah barely surviving three hp left and now it's going to be uh, now it's going to be the repositioning game because i think 13 HP for Shining Star. I don't know if they can survive one round. Uh, if they can survive one round and Arrow wins this one, they're going to get another item on board as well. So they're going to get to uh, get to play around with that a little bit. But uh, I mean, just, just, they just look like both. Both comps just look very beefy, very, very strong. I mean, you got the monstrosity coming up against all of this. Uh, and if the Teemo manages to just survive, I mean, it's just, uh, just going to get to potentially take this one out. One of the times where you see a Teemo that's fully itemized, actually, you don't see it that often. As I talked about that earlier. We've got mm. a Teemo matchup. You know, they both got one. So if both Teemo survive, who what? wins? What happens? What happens yeah. when two Maybe teamos to face out. each other? I actually don't know. Maybe That'd be so HP interesting. Diff? It could be. It's like the team All that right. has the higher HP. Or they just fight until, you They're know, one there. kills the other. I mean, one of them is like... No, we're yeah, gonna I know. Match up. That's Shining it. Star. Also, oh, oh, oh one my HP. God. We're gonna get another item. They're no so damage. low. Oh, no. Banshee Claw. And what does Arrow get? Arrow also get a Banshee Claw? I, I don't so. know. Nope, oh, that's going to be a redemption Ooh. for them. That's a pretty good item, too. A really good item. Might be going on the Ivern as well. It's probably a good choice to go put it on. Maybe Ooh. Arrow can hit the Gwyn, too. That would be another big spike for them. Really we have spike. Gwyn in the background already. We only need one more. They apparently don't have that much gold. It should be enough to like roll once, I think, if you want to go get one. There's still a yeah. coin on the board. Here we go. 20 gold they have. That's a Garen back there. And we're really hoping for that Gwen. Apparently another reroll. But she Ooh. doesn't seem to come in it's for Arrow lucky. here. Oh, how unlucky that is. Gotta be selling something to get that too, right? Get the redemption of the Teemo, actually. Ooh, they're putting they're putting all their eggs in the Teemo basket. <laughs> it's happening. It doesn't happen, sadly. That's all of the gold out there. Now they're going to face one more, and whoever wins, wins this lobby definitely in the final end. I get the monstrosity coming out later on as well, but for now it is just uh, a lot of CC, a lot of damage, and just a lot of chaos on the board. The Heimerdinger throwing out the turrets as much as they can. We're All of those Bowley Bear one. olds coming through. Both of the Teemos are still alive. And Eris is only a level 1 Teemo. So maybe that will be it. But Shining Star's Teemo doesn't throw Maybe. far enough. That is the bombs going through. And Teemo only needs to kill off one Please, more for Arrow. And that is it. That Teemo, is Teemo? it. Shining Star what is happens? out. There's two Teemos. There's two Teemos. What is happening? We, we get to see what happens now. What? And somehow... So... Wait, what? what? How? Why? So why does Arrow win there? 
Because there's no explanation as to why Arrow wins that one. It's a Teemo versus Teemo, and that might just be a coin toss, me coin toss mechanic. But, I mean, what? <laughs> I mean, we asked for it, to be fair, but Teemo versus Teemo? <laughs> I'm offended. Yeah, like Arrow is asking Chad as well, like, how is that not my win? How? Like, for real, how does that happen? And we don't know. Like, we're going to have to play this back for more dog, and he's going to have to explain this to us. Because if this is a poor coin toss mechanic, it makes no sense. Because it feels like it might be one of those where the one with the higher mana gets to do it first or whatever. Like, hmm. it is... It is... It just doesn't make it just doesn't make sense. I mean we cursed it, we asked for it and we got it, and now we know. Pass but we or curse. still don't really know. We just don't know. Like, I, to be no fair, one... like I said before, so Shining Stars Team was level two and the other one was level one, and I think that might have been the difference. I can also imagine what you said, that whoever had the higher mana actually got the win. But to me it just looked so clear that Arrow would win this. Yeah. But they didn't. You know so what? now I'm just very puzzled. Yeah, it's like, you know what? We're just going to take a little bit of a break to, like, recover from this. Maybe try Absolutely. and find an answer what the answer is here. So uh, we'll see you guys in a few minutes. Then we're just going to go go over the scores, what has happened after this. And uh, hopefully have an explanation for you for what just happened. Because that was just... No one knows. Just no one knows. No one knows. See you in a bit, guys.
Hello, welcome back, everybody. We all hope that you've been able to catch your breath after that ridiculous Teemo finish. Uh, I mean, we went over the footage, and it's it's basically un inexplicable. But of course, we're going to still have two more games to play. So in the end, might not even matter. But if it comes down to that one point between these two players, we'll know exactly who to blame the team mechanic <laughs> uh yeah it, it's it's uh, it's just one of those you know we've been we've been searching the forums we've been searching everywhere but no one has a definitive answer so uh, we're just going to go over the footage 50 more times and potentially we'll find an answer for you and we'll let you know uh for now though gonna go into game number five of the day game number two of the finals and uh, see who comes out on top we of course have the scores for you in between look at that team tsm junkie tms junkie just Keeping their lead alive, KRC losing a little bit of ground, but players are starting to make some comebacks here. Shining Star goes from 8th all the way to 4th at the moment, Arrow dropping mm. down. Uh, Cyan actually coming back here, just came in as a, you know, as a, as a number 8 because they had 13 points. 9 actually, actually move yeah. towards 6th. Uh, yeah, so they're they're making a great move. Of course, doing a good a uh, lot of work in that last lobby. So uh, we'll see whether they are going to be able to uh, to potentially even get into the top four. It's still very much open to a lot of players here. Absolutely, and that is very very curious. I'm you know trying to retrieve a clip of that Timo fight that we just saw to angrily tweet it. at more doc yeah. uh, with like ten question marks in hopes of an explanation because uh, that is definitely unethical of what we've just seen here. That is not what we expected to happen, and we're very taken aback from that. But uh, I'm curious to see how this lobby goes. I hope just all of the players have decided to not pick any Timos, right? Right. Um, we're just going to ban them straight up and, and decide not to have any Teemos at all. Uh, I think that's a good idea. So maybe if the players could, uh, uh, yeah, play like that, I'd appreciate it. But uh, I just hope there's not going to be another Teemo to Teemo face off to throw us under the bus here. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's I don't know, like, I, maybe we should just ban Teemo from being picked up right now, because we just don't want to have something like that happen again. But on the other hand, that's also what TFT is about. You know, sometimes you just have these moments that are almost impossible to happen. It's very unlikely, but both players got away with it. They got their Teemos on the board, and it was a Teemo versus Teemo, Teemo finish. That being said, that was last round. Going to go into this round right now, see what everyone starts with. We're already in the starting to go for the first PvP round. And uh, look at TSM Jun TMS Junkie Kiki, you know, has the first place in the lobby. Sorry, mm -hmm. in the in the in the in the standing so far starting off with another forgotten zigs combo already two star the zigs as well uh, has the sword in the pocket gotta get another item here could make a hextech gun blade but i think that's a very early slam <laughs> That would be very, very early to be fair. And Hextech Gunplate isn't really an item we see a lot of at the current meta, right? Uh, I think we said it earlier before, uh, you could slam it on six and then in the end have it on Belkos just to make it a little more uh, viable in terms of survivability. But uh, it's not something that has come up uh, as much in 5.5. So I think that would be very strange to do just now, especially as we're only in stage 2.1. Um, you could slam an item early if there's something like, you know, the Sunfire that's just always good, no matter what you play, you would like to have a Sunfire in one of the tanks normally. Um, or if you know you're going to play like an AD comp, any of the attack, speak, attack damage items onto a carry is also usually a solid pick, but Hextech Gunblade is just a little more off meta here, and I don't think it would be smart to slam that quite early. Um, but I'm curious to see what the players come up with. We're currently seeing them face up for the first time. It's the first PvP round. Uh, we're going to go into two more and then into the wheel. And from then on, it's usually possible to say what they're going for. We're seeing for Jim Ray, Dawnbringer, Asa already very viable having the Cassics too with another Cassics in there, having the Pike, having Gragas, that looks like it's very, very solid already. But just to be sure, we're going to get some more options here. And we have the Hand of Justice going on to that two-star Kazix just now for Jim Ray. We see Skirmishers, Hellion, all of that, you know, slowly building up for those team uh, opponents, hoping to build a comp that's viable in the early and mid game. 
Now, uh, you know, we just saw the Assassin's build kind of go uh, go on their noses a little bit. Didn't quite yeah. make it to the end. So, uh, not saying it's a recommendation to do it. But, again, you know, if you hit it early enough, it might work out a little bit better. Um, they already got the two-star Kha'Zix, got the Pike out. So, if they can get the, the Kha'Zix start earlier on uh, and maybe pick up a Nocturne early, then it could still be a very viable choice. Already got the, the level f level four. So uh, not at all worried at the moment. Is losing a little bit at the mo uh, right now, but that's expected early game with that assassin build. Absolutely. I'm in, after the last round. To be fair, I'm not convinced Asa is very viable at the moment. I know it is in some lobbies, but uh, we've seen a really, really good Asa comp from uh, who was it? Stu's, right? Uh, who just had the three-star Nocturne, who had the three-star Kha'Zix, who had all of the units you won, four Revenant, four Asa, everything. And it, they lost pretty badly. So uh, might have been due to like the other units not hitting two-star, might have been due to not enough CC on like, a Diana or anything. But right now, it just doesn't feel as strong as, for example, the the Draven Forgotten, the Velkos A bomb, the Karma, obviously, or even you know the the Tristana carry on Hell Yeah, there's so yeah, many, so many exactly, right exactly, there. exactly. Like and that's the thing. There are so many options that shoehorning yourself into an assassin's build is is kind of a suicide mission, anyways. Like, <laughs> yeah, you pick up all the units that you need to, and that's great. Uh, but you you do want to have that option to pivot into something else already in like the early to mid game, just in case it's not working out that well. And currently it's not working out great. Uh, not too worried just yet because of course you know it is very early on still, and there's still the option to start hitting the nocturnes and the, and, and the other assassins and start leveling at the items. Yeah. Um, but because uh, because it's such a risky composition to run, you do want to have the doors open to something else. Like this is the one where the assassins would go in through the window, but you got to actually go through the front door and just have the, have the staircase up there where you can go to the assassins. Yeah, very, very true. Earlier when you were talking about that, I was thinking that sometimes when you're already on the second floor of the mansion, sometimes you need to slide down the stairs to actually take another exit. Um, so that is when players start pivoting. And I think even if you manage to get in there, break through the window with your ASA comp, make sure you have everything. And then you see the lobby not working out for that just because there's so much CC in there, so much Zephyrs, so much Voli Bears, Nautilus facing against you that it's just not enough to have those assets there, then you really need to take a turn and make sure you head for the better of it um, with another comp. I just don't think it's it's that viable in the lobbies as we've seen them today. No, it, it hasn't really been. And I mean, we already saw that happen last week where, you know, Assassins kind of got rolled. Uh, right now, though, looking at a little bit of a Cannoneer build coming out there. I mean, Chu's trying something else with the Last Whisper. So not something I'm against and uh, has got the units for it a little bit already. So uh, having a good start, not winning this round, but that's not a disaster just yet. And uh, we are starting to see some more Last Whispers in these lobbies. I mean, it hasn't been uh, the most prevalent item. And this early Lucian build, uh, like Lucian hit is just amazing. Like... It's it's you know it's a four cost unit. You have a two percent chance of hitting it. Has already found one. Got two good items on it. Like this is the start of something great potentially, but it has to still come together a little bit. And uh, especially frontline wise, like right now those sentinels are just not enough to keep it up. Uh, especially because everything is low leveled still. Like there's no two star units on here just yet. Yeah, absolutely. So it is still kind of a baby comp, right? All of the units are still weak. We have some good items on there, but we really need to make sure we're leveling up the valid uh, units here. And as we see, the Lucian with those items is already super lethal for Chill Bay, who has the brand itemized, but I don't think it will be enough. The Lucian is just going to shred through everything, carrying not at all, but the Hellions in the end win by swamping the board. Just too many of them dealing out damage in different places. The Lucian ult just didn't work out the way that it goes off, you know, always at the furthest enemy with the Hellions being everywhere spread on the board. So that was not very good. Getting another loss, however, we're loose streaking. So that is a little bit of extra gold that we're, you know, getting in. Yeah, just uh, keep getting that gold rolling. Got an NPC around as well, making sure you can get some more gold, some more items out of it. 
Uh, and, you know, if you can get some good items right now for that Lucian, or maybe even for, like, a good defensive item, you're really starting to ramp up this comp even more. Currently, it's very Sentinel-heavy. Uh, if you get level 6, you get another Sentinel in. 6 Sentinel It's a great combination for that Cannoneer backline. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, it's at least a Sword. A sword can get a lot of options right there. Could be even making Guardian Angel if you want to, but I don't think that's the, the most viable item to go for right now. Yeah, I, I don't think we want to slam items just yet, at least no, none that we're not. super sure of, right? Um, it seems like we're going for six Sentinels with that Lucian Carry Force Juice, which is a comp uh, that I dabbled in uh, myself. I really like it. Um, but uh, that comp also has like uh, some win conditions. I mean, for Stuce, we got the Lucian quite early, which is good. It's very important to have him, but we're going to need him on a level two. And you also want to hit that Galio quite quickly to make yes. sure you have the enemy team under control, as well as the Rakan to make sure your Lucian is a little more stable, get an extra healing onto your team um, and make sure you survive. Right now we're facing an Udyr that's very beefy, but that shouldn't be that much of a problem. The Lucian is just going to shred through uh, one more Hellion to go in that sip, Psy getting that loss for him. And that should be a little bit of a turning point, but definitely very important for Stu's now. Hit that Lucian to get that Galio in there and make sure you kind of stabilize the mid game. Yeah, and it's, it's the commendation right now. Like, the different things we've seen today and the different things we've seen work today, it's just it's just a testament to how well-balanced the game is at the moment, like how many things there are actually that are possible. Because everything is OP in its own right, if you get the right picks, and certain things are a little bit easier to build, but it also means they're more popular. So you get that evening out of the popular things being kind of cannibalistic, uh, whereas the <laughs> things that can work out, like the, the, the comps that can really work out, are just... Uh, uh, are very strong in their own rights as well if you get the right choices. Mm -hmm. Now you see here another uh, another Kha'Zix with those items. Those are definitely not there for the Kha'Zix. Uh, they're trying to find the Karma or something else to potentially get that on, but Kha'Zix is just a good unit to have him, have him on at the moment. Um, but but yeah, to be like, fair, those are this, not Karma items, right? Like a no, Hand no, no, of no, Justice and a Rapid items. Fire Cannon? You would so, rather have that on like a Riven or Aurelia or something like that. So could they potentially be building into a Dawnbringer Legionnaire build? And they try could and get a be. Yasuo in? They could be. Could also be yeah. a Jax build. Mm. Could be a Jax build. Yeah, a Skirmisher. A Dawnbringer Skirmisher is a pretty fun one. Uh, but yeah, like getting back at this Lucian comp, right? Like you said it earlier, the Galio has to come in. And you've already got Sentinel-6 for the time being. You can then mm. make the choice, like, what do I swap the Galio in for? Because Sentinel-9, I'm not saying it's not possible. Nah, let's, let's you don't want to go for that. You don't want to go exactly. for that. Exactly. It's not worth it. So you're going to switch out either the Pike or the Olaf for the uh, for the Galio. I'm personally an Olaf stan because, you know, I got to gotta have a name friend here. Um, but yeah, no, the, 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 Galio, the Galio for the Pike or for the Olaf. I like the Pike in the back line because you do have that distraction that situation that just you have an extra cc carry. that's really important exactly see he just stunned uh, all of the backline normally what yeah. you want to do with the six sentinels is you build olaf as your carry so all of the mm -hmm. items we're currently seeing on the lucian would usually be on the olaf and we go yeah. From skirmishers to six sentinels and once we have the six sentinels we bring in the lucian for it the olaf uh, putting the items from the olaf on the lucian uh making sure that we have our carry equipped and ready and the six yeah. sentinels ready um but right now we hit the lucian so early yeah <laughs> that we didn't need to do that so at this point uh, i think it's going to be the olaf that is going to be swapped in for the galio just because cc is so valuable right we see this with the volley bear we see this with the diana we see this with pike um with nautilus all of these these units that bring big aoe cc that is so so valuable for a carry like lucian to like go in and all for a carry like Velkos to to go in and laser the enemy team away uh, even a tristana that would jump around or a kaylee that ramps up but it's just so so good to have so i don't think you would want to switch out the pike um for that galio once it comes in and here we're seeing something uh, a little more, you know, it looks like Jean Kiki has taken a liking to the Kale build to me. Yeah, I mean, if you can, sneaky if you can prediction. Hit the kale, if you can hit if the kale, they can hit not, that, right? yeah. 
To be fair, though, uh, like there is still the opportunity to stick with the Rangers. Can Philios in mm -hmm. uh, the, the Ashes as herself used to be a very strong unit has seen a little bit of a hit over that's over time. Uh, but I remember the Draconic Ranger times; those were fun. Like uh, I, I definitely was uh, was definitely not an abuser of those when it was good. Uh, <laughs> and if you can if you can switch it over to a Heimerdinger, you know, start to get the egg, yeah. get the X stack going. There's a lot you can do still with this. Plus, these are just good items for the Ash in general. You know, have her True. rapid fire, get the Death Blade on her. So uh, even if you don't get the kill, you're gonna be fine. Very, very true. So Jonkiki in a super, super comfortable position at this moment. Shining Star still at 100 oh. HP and three players on fire. And we're seeing those Radiant items come in. That's a Radiant uh, Sunfire. We have a Dragon's Claw. What else are we getting? Trying to see what they're picking. Just hovering through what everybody else is getting. AP buffs. We're gonna go with the buffs. vest. Archangel. Okay. Nope. Okay. Okay. I still feel I mean, like this is the build up for a Kale comp. I'm right? not gonna. Yeah, that, that, it, it enforces it more. It's just one of those where if he doesn't get it, it will still work. I think that's yeah. like the, the point we're trying to get at, right? Now, we do see a Jax on the other side. You know, your favorite favorite champion coming out on the other side is trying to actually just beef through that front line, but it's not going to make it because the Ash is just too powerful. But the entire front line is deleted. It's just the Ash left. Is she going to have the power to sustain through this? Doesn't have a self heal, but does get the Guardian Angel off. This is going to be a close one. Does eventually, nah, eventually it win it. The be enough. stun! The stun! It oh. was too much. Very unlucky. So much Irelia damage coming out there with that Sunfire on the Radiant item. A very, very dangerous item to have. So, so good if you get it in your store, definitely, you know. So many nights. Grab it. Very, very good item. And now we're going to go into PvE and see if we can snack any other good items for those players. We see a Velkos on one of the boards just now. Um, so that could be another hit at the Velkos A-bomb comp that we've seen before. Might be viable. I think it is. Unless Velkos is being hard to see. It. There's a Galio. What are thinking about... What do you put in? Still Ooh. gonna keep the night bonus, of course. It puts in the jacks for the ironclad. So even mm. more beef going on at that back line and the front line alike. That actually is so well protected. I love it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Very, very nice. And if it's a kill, it's the same thing. Like it, it, uh, at this point, I almost, I'm yeah. almost wondering whether it matters whether it's a kill or not. Yeah, of course the kill is going to be like uh, better because it's the higher cost unit. Hmm. Um, but a three star ash potentially over the one star kill, I, I think I might just keep the ash in that situation. Well, I mean, we're not, we're not at the three star ash yet. You could, you could even go as far and and build like a Varus or build like a Draven or an Aphelios or an Action. Like any of those champions will be really good with those items, right? Any ranger, you just really. need to, you just need to rearrange a little bit um, on the rest of the comp, but it does work very, very beautifully. However, Psy has built up a Jax that is getting Perma CC'd here. And uh, I don't think it will be able to do much. One more ult and that's nope. it. That Ashy is so strong. It's scary. Oh my gosh. And the worst thing is she had another life because the Guardian Angel hadn't even popped yet. Yeah, so she exactly. she wasn't even done. It's, exactly. It's, oh, it's so good. Well, that, And that's why I'm saying is like, I don't think you even, I mean, of course you can pivot the kill in. Like, I mean, there's a good, there's good reason why you would. Um, but because you've got the ranger bonus as well from the vein next to it, like maybe upgrade the ranger, you put a Varus in or, uh, you know, something else like that. It might still just be worth to keep sticking with the Ash. Like it, yeah, you know, I love the kill build here. I do, but I, I, I gotta love me some ranger bonus. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, that's a very, very good bonus to have. And I think you're making a great point of why it's very important to, to not neglect that. However, uh, I'm curious to see what everybody else been building. Shining Star yeah. is still on that 100 HP burning. We're in round four too, so uh, that is definitely uh, something you have to respect, right? Uh, Chibi be has the Karma, so that's definitely a darn bringer that we're seeing here together with the A-bomb coming through on that Fiddlesticks. That is so much damage, and I think that will be enough to take care of that Ash. 
uh, for Chilbe here with only 40 gold. However, very, very strong damage spike. And that is it. Finally, Shining Star is being pushed off from their throne by Psy, taking five damage and not on fire anymore before we go into that wheel. And Arrow is already very low. Here we, here we see what I was talking about earlier, right? We still haven't hit the Lucian 2. We are on 71 gold, so that's good, right? We're just gonna roll down pretty soon to make sure we get a Galio, we get a Lucian. And I think they might be even hoping to, like, in for the wheel, as you said earlier, to make sure they're getting the items you need with 71 gold to sit on. That's just so much that you can do with it, and they haven't yet, so... Mm, might be the case, but is it worth it to lose that much HP? Debatable. Always, always the question you got to ask yourself. Arrow currently still boomed from that Teemo 1v1 on, on <laughs> eighth place. No, no, they're they're doing okay right now. They've got the kill already and the Velkos. Like that redeemed bonus is just off the charts at the moment. Um, so let's yeah, let's see if they can pull that one through. Currently uh, not on eighth anymore. Silent just went down there. Which I which items choose is going to pick up? Uh, they probably would do well with the rod. Maybe a bow, even sword. Hmm. What are we going for? The belt? Oh, they go for the rail. Wait, we're go not gonna the we're not gonna end for the wheel just to get a belt. Please. I'm a little bit disappointed right now. I was hoping we were going for Whoa. like a crit item, a BF sword. Uh, you know, like one of those mm. items are usually contended. Yeah. I know a belt is good, and I know you want like a war marks or any other defensive item on your Galio, but he's already got the damage items as well because his carry is already like fully itemized. He can actually make a sentinel. Ooh. Item here. Is he gonna go for? Okay, he might go for sent. He might actually try it. He might actually try and go for that higher sentinel pick. Um, that would be I very it daring. Could... It would be daring. We got. We he have the action. action. He can do it. He can do it. I don't it's, think he wants happen. to do that. I think he wants to go six Sentinel and then, and then build up from there. Units. Nine Sentinel yeah. just isn't that viable, but look at that Sentinel Jax coming through. Yeah. That will that's, definitely that's be scary. Player. Oh There's my. Action on the other side, though. Look at him go. Yeah, and that's a very scary action, to be fair. He's already like itemized three items. We have the, uh, uh, the uh, you know. Well the guardian angel on that action and i think that won't be enough the ult doesn't hit another ult from action going through that's just bonkers right the damage in action can put thing. at level one is the thing we weren't thinking about we were like oh it's going to be a kale or maybe nephilos or this or what and then it's like nope the action just comes in takes the items from the ash out and it's going to be great and it's exactly True. what it did that's it's it's such a uh such a stomper in that situation Oh no. Is he really gonna take out the Senna? No. This is no, no, contemplating no. to do nine Sentinels, and I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think so either. It's just, you know, and he's got so many items still on his on his bench. Like I know he has a little bit of HP to play with, like twenty six is not completely down in the dumps, but both the gold and the items need to be used at some stage. And if he still wants to go level nine, the gold is not the one to go with, so you have to go with the items. But I think mm. he's trying to look for a second carry to go with, and he does not really sure which one it should be. Yeah, I get that, but still, going like for seven sentinels is already not, you know, you, you could put a second ranger and you could put a legionnaire yeah. and you could put a cavalier and there's so much you could do that I'm currently not seeing from Struz and I think that's a missed opportunity. Where Shining Star has that Velkos ready, itemized, we have best in slot items on that Velkos already, we only need to hit level two uh, with the Velkos and here is the Galio finally coming in for Stu's that is what we needed but it could be too late to be honest we're still on seven sentinel i'm not He's sure if that Olaf. should be the point he has yeah. the units like mm -hmm. as soon as he hits nine he can put in both the olaf and the pike it's got seven it got nine sentinel like he can mm -hmm. do it yeah it's just so I, at this point i'm like he's keeping the door open i'm not too worried just yet but he has to, has to, has to hit nine, which he doesn't have the gold for, like not even close. No. So, why, like, is it worth waiting for? The answer, answer mm -hmm. is most likely no. So, no. hits Lucian two, is hitting Galio two right now. There's Lucian two. And I think this is the point where you say, okay, so we're not going to get Sentinel, uh, Sentinel two, uh, Sentinel nine. 
does have to sell the rel, unfortunately. There will be six on that Lucian. Worth. That's very poggers. We're going to have an extra mm -hmm. damage coming in for the Lucian. I'm not too sure in positioning here, I have to say. Um, but that should be okay-ish. I'm still not sure why we wouldn't go with, like, a skirmisher. Um, oh, it's a good place for the Shroud, honestly. Over the Senna or something like that. I'm... Mm, seven Sentinel. I don't know. I think there yeah, could I mean, be more you, you that you could in, do right? with that, right? It's just another yeah. bonus that you could get that you're not getting currently. And that extra Sentinel isn't doing that much for you. I think this will be a win. Um, if the Lucian gets old off another time. And yeah, yeah that, that's perfectly and, and good. But on 13 HP... Oh, he's threatening the line. He's definitely threatening yeah. the line right here. Like it's it's a and big. Psy and Psy actually got that. eliminated already. He's out. Yeah, he's Philios. on eight. That is. This is the one. Oh, this is the this is the move. To, the three yeah. Philios would be the move, right? I mean, wait, wait, but no, he wait, doesn't what? take. He had the option. He had the option. He didn't take it. I'm so confused right now. I I don't know what's going on. He could have put in three, and he just and then he sells the Olaf, but. It's it's like they don't want to win. Um, <laughs> okay, so I mean, Psy there must be a method to this madness, right? There's eight. a method to this madness. There is a method to this madness. I think we just want to have a Felix and for Ranger, we don't want to have him as carry. We want to have Akshan as carry, and therefore that is why he got the Bloodthirster. Um, we couldn't get the Jax two, and we couldn't get the Action two, which we were looking for, and neither the Rel two. All of those items were items we wanted. Our Lucian just got Sephir and our action is on the way. However, he's hitting a Senna, which isn't really ideal. Whereas the enemy, Jax and Galia are ramping off and that will be another loss. And I'm not sure Stoss will be able to survive this, to be honest. But he should be just barely, barely. two HP left for him here. And that is Arrow getting taken out. We're in the top six. That is Jax too and that could be a little damage spike. However, I'm not too sure. I think she just should have gone on the ranger earlier, should have done anything else, getting a three skirmisher in, that's very good in the mid game. Um, anything like that. He sat on that seven sentinel for ages, uh, which just isn't that beneficial, right? Irelia is a really no, good champion. I'm, I'm just not sure that that is what you would have wanted to do. Yeah, and Jack's like such a such a good champion. Uh, got the Sentinel buff, and then gets this uh, shard of silence. Like, it's mm, there's like so many things going on on this board where like I would have done this differently. Yep. But you know, we're not the ones playing, so nope. all we can do is, is judge in silence. Well, not in silence, but. Judge. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that sounded to, you know, really it's, mean. It's it, it's I I know, but I mean we're we're being a little bit mean to them at the moment because we're but just it's like the choices look don't at make it. sense, right? Just is proving us wrong. Win. There we go. That's how you yeah. do it. Exactly. Get those casters for talking all that, you know, okay. nonsense. If he can pick up that Akshan, he got the Guardian Angel on Akshan, as well as the three, as well as That'd the two be star. so that strong. Be the ideal. He's, He's gonna get it. He's gonna get it. He's gonna get it. Nice. Let's go. Okay. That's exactly what we want. Choose. Let's go. <laughs> I love that we're just hovering, you know, on his way from right. like level or like eighth place Here to up on. with like so little HP left. I think that's really, really cool. <laughs> a star rising on his way. There he is, Arkshan too. That's such a strong unit to have on your board. Uh, we yeah. have the Galio too. However, no defensive items on that yet. We have Jackson for like a little more beefiness, a little more damage coming out. Um, we have Rakan in between Akshan and Lucian. That should be very comfortable for both of those units. They're both getting extra attack speed. They're both getting uh, the protection from the Claw. And we have a Shroud of Silence on the Jacks, making sure that the enemies can't do any harm. So that's a very, very good comp. And we're gonna silence the Velkos, I hope. Yeah, there we go. However, we're gonna get silenced ourselves as well. That's not ideal, but I think we can manage. A bomb is gonna come through, and the Lucian really needs to ult away at the Velkos, but that's not gonna happen. Now, we are still fighting that abomination. Velkos gonna ult another time, but we're safe for another day. Stu's wins against Shining Star here with one gold still clinging onto his life. Chelbei, however, might have seen the last of it. He's getting taken out. That is place number six for Chelbei. 
and Stu's moves on to number five. We're on the top five now, and I am very curious to see how far he can make it. Yeah, this is uh, this is exactly what we're looking for, and of course, you know, we still have T T uh, TMS Jean Kiki as well, still on the auction uh, build too. They've mm. got the Radiant Guardian Angel, they've got the Rage Blade, the Death Blade. Uh, you know, it's it's a very similar build, but it's only the one star. It's not the two star. And we'll, yep. we can see what makes the difference. Is it the Radiant item, or is it the the higher level with the higher damage, the higher mana, everything? Um, and his Jax is very built very differently. Like this is just. It, it's two opposite sides of a very similar coin, and there's another Jax on Lilith's side too. Like there's so many Jaxes going on in this one, it's uh, it's hard to see who's coming out on top. And they're very similar comps, and like these cannoneers coming out and the backline damage and all of that. That it's, action uh, damage is so crazy. It just it yeah. just baffles me every time. Look at him go, just swinging around, dishing so yeah. much damage out. Not gonna make and it. And that though. is very very deadly, but it will not be enough. There is the Jax coming in. He's gonna bonk him on the head. There is one more round of ulting taking out the enemy unit, but it won't be enough. And Stuus lives for another day with his 2 HP. Very, very cool to see. I love it. Yeah, it's really one of those moments. Oh, is he going to put the Cavalier? I was going to say, is that a Cavalier oh, Jax? But we can't do that. We can't, so. unfortunately. But Cavalier uh, Galio could be just as annoying. <laughs> it could be just as annoying because you got the CC on the on a Galio plus the Cavalier. Like, it's it's a very good item, too. Because that means that there's less units that can potentially stun your Jax or your Axion. So, great pickup on that one, on that emblem. Uh, was probably also the best one to go for in that situation anyways. True. Uh, he's even gonna get... Ooh, he could actually blue buff and... Oh, this is... I don't really know what he wants to go what for. What is happening? <laughs> he's, he's just picking up units. I mean, yeah. He Let's just get everything. <laughs> yeah, because he, he, can, he can just grief other people. Oh, only block other people. It's a Kaylee. Like, look at, look at it's things. a Kaylee. Are we gonna go for the Kaylee? Please. He could go double. He could go action and Kaylee and just go completely bonkers. He gets in the Garen. We have Garen in. in. You know, as, a, as the night check. Uh, it's already three ironclad. Does, not going to make it four, but, you know, it's... Uh I would say hmm. he's moving around to this stage, but he is, he is just getting everything right now. Like, Junkiki has been so lucky and so... He's, Ooh, so, he's, he's facing Stuus. Can he's he live idling. another day? That would be so interesting to see. We have the Lucian in the background going off. Action trying to damage him, but that won't be enough. Lucian is ulting away. We have Sentinel. We have the Actions doing their swings. And I think Stuus will take that win for himself. That is another okay. ult at those... Are they going He's to make it? There it. he goes. What a legend. He's going to do it. The comeback what a is legend. alive. Only on, one on fire. fire. We doubted him. To be fair, I will say this. We doubted him for good reason, but he yes. just happened to hit the exact right things at the exact right time. Like the fact that that action guardian angel was in the carousel, True. that's not something you bank on. Like we call it player diff for a reason because to me, that would not have happened. I would have just <laughs> lost, you know? But it, because it's choose, because he's such a good player, the more dog gives in the blessings. And that I'm all for it. True. That's why we do this. Oh, that's very dangerous now. We're facing Shining Star with that scary, scary Velkos A-bomb. And that is the Velkos all going through on the Lucian. The Lucian goes down. That will be the end of it. Nothing he can do about that. He's going to get a full portion of He's super trying. damage into He's his face. So that hard. is the end of it. Minus 16. He is out. I don't think anyone else will follow here. Kiki will survive even if they lose. And... I think they will, yeah. But oh, Kiki out as well. We're on the top three with zero HP. They got kicked out. How very unfortunate. Now the top three players remaining. Jim Ray, Shining Star and Lilith here for us. Dawnbringer something we've seen a lot. Jim Ray is playing that. We have the Knights for Lilith going on with that very, very nice Jax that we've seen before. And we have the Velkos on Shining Star. That's super lethal as well. Uh, Lilith now actually got a chance to sort of make the comeback versus Jean Kiki as well, which, uh, you know, they, they lost a few points the last round that are going to gain a few points. We'll see how many. Um, and Shining Star, same thing. Same thing goes for Jim Ray as well. But Jim Ray is more trying to get into top four uh, than, you know, actually trying to win. I don't, I think they've, 
don't have enough points to make that happen. Uh, but with this, they're definitely making a good comeback. Uh, and with Chol Bay going out so early as well, that definitely helps to, helps them with that. But for now, kind of seeing how these rounds play out, that Jax has been ramping. It's just uh, popping around. Cool, you have a Kha'Zix, but the Kha'Zix is not going to take the right units out in time. Ooh. Jim Ray taking a lot of damage right there. And Lilith doing good business for themselves. Absolutely. And I have to say, I kind of like the rapid fire cannon on the Kha'Zix. I think that's a fun choice. But is it really the strongest to have your assassin kind of, you know, uh, be at range uh, if it's such a strong assassin? I mean, yes, less moving around, but that could be like a death blade, you know, any item that does like a lot of damage. So I'm not really a huge fan of the rapid fire cannon here. We're gonna level up for Jim Ray. That is number nine is the final level and we're going in with the revenant which i love to see i think that's such a strong synergy we're still having the nunu on the bench i think we should sell that maybe maybe not i think we maybe want not. to keep it open if we want to go for brawler instead of revenant and that is actually what we're doing i'm a little bit confused i think the fiddlesticks would have been a lot stronger than the brawler but okay i'll I'm ready to be proven wrong. Diana needs to jump back there and do like a big good old to cover all of those units in the back. Get some CC out, but she is silenced by that shroud. Here we go. That is the Diana old app, but the abomination will run in. The volley bear shouldn't get another one off. Nidalee is chomping off at everything in her range, but Wilkos is another old through and that is it for Jim Ray here. Only Lilith and Shining Star remain. And Shining Star is playing that Velkos that I've been calling out all day. Finally, we've seen it. It's such a strong combination that Velkos Invoker Revenant with the Abomination. You just love to see it. Yeah, you really do. I mean, I definitely do. Um, we seeing whether or not Lilith can actually pull it through against Shining Star for the win. Every point matters in this, but for both players actually, Shining Star very close to that top four will probably get into it with this, uh, potentially with this win. Uh, actually, or remain into it, I, I should say. But it's really up to Lilith to uh, try and catch up as, as many points so the TSM, the TMS John Kiki doesn't just run away with the entire thing already. Absolutely. What, uh, I mean, to be fair... Centrals. Back alive. <laughs> to be fair, John Kiki got kicked out quite early in this round, so that will cost them a lot of points. And that is the win here that we're going for. Very, very nice round. Definitely well deserved here for our players in those positions. Shining Star taking the win. Shining Star is really, really showing off in this round, I think really is and the top three is cemented and i think like last week we were very like i think going in the last round last week we already knew who the top two were i think mm. this time we actually still have that option whether it we don't know yet we don't know who's, top, who's, who's guaranteed in top four we don't know who's guaranteed in top two we don't know who's guaranteed winning and i think it's a super exciting thing to go in for that last round so i should say let's get that started as soon as possible so we can just enjoy some high level tft and again absolutely we keep getting these different finishes the different compositions that keep doing well uh, and where we sometimes think oh this might work then you know the rock paper scissors just hits you uh, i think that's that you know the, the i wouldn't say the rng but the uh the variety that we're seeing today and what works against what is just very telling for where, where we are at and uh you know that uh, gives people a good start good education to go into worlds next week that's exactly what I wanted to say, right? Isn't that so yeah. lovely to see how many different viable options there are at the current meta and what we're going to see in Worlds? There's just so much you can spin off on. There are so many different yeah. comms with different carries, different items that are super strong. So it just allows for those really, really fun matches where everybody goes for something else. And even if two players go for the same units, it's never so much a griefing or like cannibalism as you called it yeah. um but rather two of them building at different damage peaks and showing off what each champion or each unit is able to do and able to put off on dps so that is super super fun and i love it i think it's such a well developed patch at the moment um i do think Jax is a little bit too strong i have to say 
Um, but that would be the only off take I have. And I think we're just getting ready for our final lobby here. We're going to go over the player counts and points before we go in. And as you said, it's already looking quite settled here. Have a look at our players right there. TMS Jonkiki leading the pack with 38 points, followed by Lilith with 36, followed by Shining Star with 33. In fourth place, this would still be a winning place, is Chill Bay with 29. And then we have Jim Ray and Arrow on 26, Evening Out and Psyland and Stuss on 20, also on equal points. And that is definitely very interesting to see who of our three reigning players, Shining Star Lilith and Jean Kik, will take the win here. Yeah, so far it's uh, there's a lot between it, and whether it's the whether it's the top like the first place or the the top four, what we're talking about, it's all so close together. Like this is uh, this is the one, this is the game. It all comes down to this. You know, we can go through all the innuendos, but all we have to do is send the players into a game. We can find out what happens there. Uh, so far, it does seem that certain players have just gone a little bit more. Uh, consistent with their tactics, right? Like uh, Shankiki has been able to get those backline carries with the death blades, with the with the rage blades. Uh, sometimes bloodthirster, sometimes guardian angel. But like whether it's the kill, whether it's the uh, the the action, whether whether it's an ash early on, like they have been able to consistently find this. So I would kind of want to see what happens in a game where they don't find all those pieces straight away, because it's been it's kind of been a high high roll situation almost mm. where they don't have to worry about it uh, and they didn't win last game like they got fourth or fifth but that doesn't mean that the, that consistency of the success of that composition is not necessarily potentially winning them today so let's see what they're going to get this time around we're going to start obviously as usual with a nice carousel uh two negatron cloaks someone's going to get one is it going to be a voluntary or a force Ah, that Definitely seems like a force. force to me, but yeah, there we go. Oh, so Lilith well, actually is preferring Silent and Lilith both preferring the cloak over oh, the yeah. rot. And actually, um, the player just came into chat and told us that we've been pronouncing the name wrong, so I want to make it right. Uh, it's actually not Jean Kiki, but it's Jean Cake. So we're going Thank to uh, we're going Great. to remember that, take notes, and do better from here on. Definitely something to keep in mind and right now we have that bow going in we already have a tier those are two very good starter items for basically any comp to be fair and i'm curious to see where players end up at the end yeah. any comp you would want to see in yeah, this funny lobby that we talk about it's also also funny that we talk about pronunciation right because sometimes yeah. it's not it's not that apparent um True. but that's the beauty about about europe uh, like when we do this region, there are so many different languages and cultures here that some words might be pronounced super differently in one of our languages. And then, you know, I think Jean, Jean Kek would be, uh, be a French player. It was mm. uh, like, l looks like it. Um, so yeah, that's, it, it makes sense in the French language that's pronounced that way. But for us, you know, you, you being yeah. German, me being Dutch, you know, we have a little bit of a different background. Then you try to <laughs> translate it to English and then back and forth. And then you yeah, also got to wonder, true. where do all these players' names come from? You know, yeah. like Arrow One V Nine seems fairly apparent what that means, but Jean Keck, you know, is that his name? Uh, Jean probably could be, but Keck, I don't know. Uh, same same thing for like Silence. I mean, that looks pretty mm. cool. That's a normal one. But there's there's so many choices of what people can make and like what their abbreviations for. And uh, I mean, those are just questions we need to ask them someday. I think that's what it just comes down to. Absolutely, and I think um, th that's also the beauty of Europe, right? Like we have yeah. so much diversity in like the European region that I think we should definitely, uh, yeah, focus on it more. And I think it's great that we have a tournament that brings together the Turkish realms, the the Europe Northeast realms, and the Europe West realms. Like all of them uh, coming in here, playing together. That's so nice to see, and uh, I personally love it. I think it's great, and I think more people should take part. So if you want to take part, signups are open, and uh, you can find that in chat with exclamation mark sign up. So uh, for everyone that's interested, just pointing that out. And we're going to go into our first PvP round here, Jean Cake against Shining Star. And we can also like look a little bit. We're seeing the Knight Legionnaire for Jean coming through. Shining Star seems to be on like a Dawnbringer 
Capcom. They got the li- they got the Nightbringer, Nightbringer, Legionnaire, yeah, Nightbringer, Dawnbringer. Exactly. They got a few things, but because they got they got the early Riven and the early Asuo, so like they're in a very good spot <laughs> to continue that Legionnaire trend. Um, mm-hmm. And they they just they just got hit early with the good stuff. Like if you can build out their items for those two Legionnaires, you can really build that into a strong suit. Uh, Yasuo, have, we haven't seen that much of him today, so I'd like to actually see the Yasuo do really well and just pop off and. Honestly, this looks like the time to bring it out. You know, if you're on that track to potentially still get first, to be to remain in that top four to get as much money out of this as possible, why not bring out the Asuvo if you get it early with the ribbon? Absolutely, and I don't think we've seen like a really strong Yasuo carry just yet. I think that's something we're still missing. So for any of the players that are listening, uh, that's something the casters would like to see. So please do it, apply. Star. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Right there, you got everything <laughs> ready. Uh, to be fair, I don't think Yasu is that strong in comparison to other units, right? You have the action it that can go be. on the same on the same places. You have the Jacks that can come through with the same items. You can you can have an Ophelios, a Draven, uh, a Kale, even all of them utilize yeah. the same items, and I think uh, they're a little better than the Yasu. I think Yasu is still a very strong second carry unit so if you have more damage items than you need and you're running a comp where yasu was included you can absolutely itemize it itemize it and that will be strong but i don't think you should have yasu as main carry that's just what i'm feeling at the moment yeah, it's definitely a possibility right now for the early to mid game, uh, and like that's that's mostly where I'm, where I'm envisioning it seeing, being used right now. Um, but then you do indeed not want him to be your main item holder because if you exactly. do want to swap in a different carry, that's going to be a problem. So those items might be going onto the Riven or whatever else they got there will have going on on their board, and then they can be swapped out and you just keep the Asuo. But the Legionnaire bonus could work out, like depending if they get like a Draven in or uh, you know something else that uh, that can use those bonuses really well or work in, work in tandem with it. Um, could be a very uh, very fun ending. But for now, Shining Star still winning. Lilith as well on the hundred HP. So uh, we're going to see uh, see that continue. No, nope. I'll actually go out here. Oh, it's choose. Never mind. <laughs> uh, choose and uh, and shining star on a hundred. Sorry, sorry, choose. Sorry, sorry for almost mistaking you for Lilith. Um, I don't yeah, think so that's that's a bad mistake, right? Lilith is one of our in top of, three players. In terms of getting, positioning, getting yeah. confused with them. <laughs> I think that's a compliment. Yeah. Uh, my cat has also come to watch us. And I'm just looking at the points now. Um, so, if Jean Keg doesn't manage to do well. I think Lilith and Chilbei have like very fair chances at winning. Chilbei would need to do really, really good to take it from yeah. here. Um, but Lilith is so close. If they just get like three places better than Jean Cake, it will be very scary. So definitely, definitely, we're going to keep our eyes open and see what those players yeah. do here. We have the Skirmisher Sentinel for Stu's again. Will that be another attempt at the Six Sentinel Lucian comp? I'm curious to see. Uh, but yeah, also curious yeah. to see what everybody else is running. Shining Star is still on Night and Dawnbringer, as we already said before. And not sure what Arrow is doing. We're going to see it Nope, we're not going to see it. I thought we were going to click on it, but we didn't. We clicked on everybody else. Unfortunately not. We saw Jim Ray on Forgotten Night, and here we see Silent also on the Nightbringers, no? Yeah. I mean, and so basically we have like we have a three player uh, battle going on for first, right? So it's a uh, Jean Kick, uh, Lilith and Shining Star. They're they're currently looking at that that first place. They're close enough together. And then it's another three players underneath that's so a Chobe, Jim Ray and Arrow that mm-hmm. can actually still make a play for fourth place or like anywhere in the top like top uh third and fourth roughly. Um a silent and choose i wouldn't say they're out but well th- yeah they're out like they can't even when they get nine points they will not be able to get fourth because fourth mm. is already on 29 points so they'll have to get more points and the same thing goes for chill bay for first if they get yeah. nine points they're on 38 which is currently the number one score so since you can't get zero points they'll be out uh sorry for doing math guys that i know it's not not if you want to look at it yourself the scores are actually in chat you can find with, exc- with exclamation mark scores uh but like those are the stakes right now for the players right so uh, arrow jim ray and chill bay are kind of battling it out amongst the three of them and then we have shining mm-hmm. star lilith and Jean Kek battling it out battling it out with the three of them and then we have the two you know, disruptors in silent and choose uh and choose and silent currently in the middle of the pack so they're making a nice separation between uh two 
two, three packs. Uh, let's see if they can keep that up and maybe even uh, do some more damage. <laughs> you know what would be funny? If they just, you know, decided I want person X to win and just yeah. automatically grief like the other person's It's units. possible. It is it's possible. It's 100% possible. Yeah. I'm just playing the same comp, you know? Yeah, it just happened. <laughs> yep, sorry, I just needed the units. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I'm completely I need Sentinel, those but I'll three the chaos because, on the bench. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I see how it is. Me and every rank. It. <laughs> <laughs> Me and every rank game. Yeah, I need those three chaos, even though I'm building an Akshan carry. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you know, I need them to look pretty. You see, it makes sense. Yeah. They're <laughs> they, my they mascot. Need to be and there. More mascots, more luck. Yeah. No, of course not. Goals. Don't grieve people. That's very, uh, you know, impolite. But uh, yeah. I do think all of the players today have been showing up really, really great matches. We can actually yeah. see Jean Cake and Shining Star going into fire mode. They are wind streaking really, really nicely here. Arrow just behind them and Lilith taking it a little slower here. Curious to see what is going on there. Lilith should really be tryharding this round, hoping to get in front of our Jean Cake, because that would be quite a big uh, step for them to take. And obviously everybody wants to be first here. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you be? Uh, you, you, you do want to win, and even if you're not going to be in the prizes, like even, you know, like I said, even if choose Silent choose to, they could still be, you know, I want to just want to win this lobby. I just want to feel good mm. by myself. And I do think that Silent, like as a player that came in with a very low score, like from the ninth yeah. placement overall, uh, they've been they've been really playing quite nicely. And if they can get a win out, that still uh, feels good for yourself, you know, Absolutely. so uh, see if they can. But, uh, <laughs> I love that frock emote. Uh, oh, so many emotes. Uh, shining star just uh, popping off right now and you know like like i said you know they have a potential to still get get first if they can get sean Kek out on eighth everything mm -hmm. though, is possible true everything is possible uh, however you also need to take care of every other player and if for some reason you know right now on eighth chelbe would decide to just uh, int it and uh, go too low roll too late or something like that then that eighth place would be taken and there's just no chance that shining star could make it mm -hmm. so really yes. it is a match for everybody here to try and see where they come out of and i think you really pointed out beautifully that it is also a little bit about honor like you you still want to try hard you still want to take the final win you want to show you can win against those people uh, that are maybe like two ranks above you right don't don't forget yeah. that so i think all in all we've seen quite beautiful matches from all of the players here with like super cool tactics super cool comms we've seen so much variation which speaks for the patch itself uh i think yeah. that's always very positive if you don't see like eight people running three comms Today we've seen like 16 people run 16 comps in all honesty yeah. and I think that's just fabulous probably that's exactly more. what you want it uh, yeah. to be so I love that and we see probably more than those as well it's it's, it's just been great and uh, like right now we've seen, we've seen certain comps also just not work like we've seen people True. try it and it just just failed that and it, that happens you know it's fine um, but you know when it does work out it's just a beautiful tft moment and mm. i mean i i don't know i still i personally i'm still not over the the 1v1 teemo finish like i'm still reeling about that um but we've had so many other cool moments today that you know it's just one amongst many now we're going to be seeing what uh, jean kek is going to do against arrows comp because they're you know they're they're right next to each other same hp so one of them is going to come out on top here uh, as you know as it happens um, although they can have a draw, but I don't see that potential with the HP bars they have right now. Uh, looks like Chunk X is going to come out on top, so Arrow's taking a little bit of a, a little bit of an L right there. But we'll still mm -hmm. be fine. Uh, coming out on 69, so still nice. And uh, Shining Star, continuing that win streak. Not going to stop anytime soon. And like I said, you know, they have so much to win here. Absolutely, but uh, you know, even if they get first and John Keck gets second, they still can't manage to take first place. So that is definitely something more. to keep in mind. They need John Keck to do really badly, uh, which is mean to say. But uh, 
I do think it, it needs to be kept in mind and uh, I think it's also important to see where Lilith turns up out because Lilith has a fair shot at number one but right now still on 66 points won the last round but will that be enough comparing with Shining Star and Kick and now we're back with Stu's who has the Sentinel comp running right now we are on the three skirmisher that's exactly what I wanted to see right last time we got Lucian very early uh, we're getting some items down on the uh, wood ear, which is a little bit unusual. I mean, the the um, sunfire I can understand. I'm not quite sure what the infinity edge is doing on that unit. I think that should have gone to Olaf, but that is maybe just my personal opinion. However, with the three skirmisher for Sentinel and to Asa, we're in a quite comfortable position, and I think that should stabilize twos for the mid game. That should come now. And uh, we're seeing Shining Star on the Shoujin, Yasuo. What do you think of that? I mean, it's it's exactly what we're looking at, right? Like the Legionnaire bonus is coming up for them. They've got the got the Nightbringer going as well. It's uh, the Yasuo just being very good right now. They already got the two star off. Like that's that's kind of ridiculous at the the pace of the game where we are at right now. True. Um, because they started off they started off so early with it and yeah like i agree that the udir items are a little bit odd but again he's also the, the easiest unit to swap out here like mm -hmm. you can easily get a better skirmisher you can easily get uh get something in that just works a little bit better um so and the olaf you can keep around for a little bit longer for that sentinel bonus for to hit that sentinel six so yeah. not at all oh, mad I love about that this, item. but I, I i understand your uh, your aversion or at least the confusion a little bit uh indeed great item Put it on the Olaf. Just let's go. Let's see what happens here with this. Um, and Kha'Zix is going to be staying alive with the Dragon's Claw. That's uh, that's what he's there for. To be fair, like the Banshee Silence, right? The the Radiant item of the Claw is just... It's so good because it protects all yeah. of your team. Like even if you went for a Vel'Koz comp, even if you went for a Lucian comp, even if you went for a Kale comp, it just protects all of your team the way it would normally do for like you and the uh, adjacent players. Next so yeah. that is very, very cool. And I personally think it's great, even though it isn't an offensive item. Uh, that you normally want to take, I think it has great value as one of the best yeah. defensive items, maybe from the Radiant set. Yeah, it's, it's one of those. It's one of those items like like a Zephyr that it's not offensive, but it helps you. Uh, it helps you with sustain or with like a certain duration uh, so much that it's worth because because of that thing exists, your damage output will outweigh the enemy's damage output because you're there silenced or because they're blocked or because they're thrown up in the air. Like that's it's it's defensive in that way where the defense directly contributes to the DPS difference swinging your way. Um, and, and that's like the best way to do it because damage not done by the enemy is damage that you win. Yeah, that you don't have to heal that you don't have to block. It is sure. there. You don't take. Uh, and that's that's why it works. Like that's why it's not just a defensive item. It's also not about damage, but also a lot about CC, right? It blocks the first yeah. incoming CC. So that means your units get to gain mana faster. They get to ramp up faster. They get to uh, gain stacks on their uh, Rage Blade or whatever have you, you, right? So that is so, so good. And here we go, selling that Udyr. It's as if Stuss was listening to me, getting that Infinity Edge onto that Olaf. And now we're going to hold on to it, hoping for the Lucian. Next, we have Skirmisher. Ironclad and Asa as additional synergies to the Sentinel, which is ideal, really. We just need our units to be a little stronger, right? That Jax is still on level one. We have Nautilus on level one. Um, th that is uh, I really on level one. We want them to be level two so they stand a chance as frontline. They're just not very beefy at the moment. And Kazix is trying to do his best, but it's really not a carry unit with that uh, Dragon's Claw. So. I think it's, uh, it's, not, it's not that surprising as well. Like he just got the ironclad units in, so yeah. he's making like a slight, a, a tiny pivot basically, hmm. um, and that usually means if you don't get two stars immediately, you will lose like a round or two, and that's fine. Gonna be seeing here the same like uh, potential for ironclad, but definitely for the knights and the cavaliers waiting for that rel two star in the level six. Uh, will he go for the Nikos? He could. Um, 
depending on what items he wants to build, and he wanted to guarantee something right here, so that's why he gets the glove out. Uh, and I get that. Like, the damage items aren't really as strong at the moment, or, uh, no, sorry, strong enough at the moment to really warrant saying, I'll go for the Nikos, because you want that damage item on your uh, on, on either your Vein or on your Misfortune, or, like, wherever you want to go for it. Um, and because, you know, he's also just three star to Vein, might as well wait until he can make it, like, a crit on her, or, you know, something else like that. Because the Rage Blade's still open. Yeah, right. exactly. So, like, anything that's attack damage or attack speed on a three-star vein will absolutely, like... Um, Bikes. Yeah, turn over into, like, bonkers damage on the enemy team, to be fair. And we have the Hacker Room in front with the Sunfire. We have the Radiant Claw to protect our team. We're in a super comfortable position on Jim Ray's side here, with all of our carries being locked into that little secure nest in the bottom corner, right? Nobody can get to the vein. Um, or even the Misfortune, and that is super, super comfortable to have. We have the Rel on the other side baiting anything, like if there was a Thresh Hook or anything like that coming from there. So everything is very, very good looking for Jim Ray at the moment. I'm liking this comp. We have the Four Forgotten in. So beautiful. Yeah, especially beautiful right now. Going to be looking for... Uh... For some next items uh, now, like also, also you can still get, get some champion upgrades, but the items are really what it's going to be about later on. Um, and they are shaping up nicely. Uh, that Sojin is a little bit questionable. Like, yeah, it helps her get some more ultimates off, but you also got to wonder whether it's going to be that's going to be worth it. Hmm. Um, and that sword could have been used for something else. That drop could have been used for something else. So might have just been too early of a slam on that one. But depending hmm. on what uh, what other champions you get, you might be able to shoehorn it still. I think it's not a bad idea to have it on the Misfortune, really. Uh, I do agree that the BF Sword could have been better somewhere else, but even if we're taking out the Misfortune at some point, the Shoujin is never super bad, right? Like, no. it just allows for more casts, and I think it's flex, even but, yeah. if it's if it's on a unit that has, like, an utility ult, like, for example, Thresh or Nautilus or Wally Bear even, that... Uh, that is still very viable and uh, very strong. So Jimri taking the rod here, I think he might even want to go for like another item on the misfortune. I think he's trying to make her into a second carry, and then that shojin is very reasonable. Yeah, so he might. I, there's, there's two choices right now, right? Either you make the gaunt you can make a jewel gauntlet first of mm -hmm. all, which is great. Um, We're going for rage blade. Rage, 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 rage blade first makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Then you still have the crit item ready to uh, make either you, not either an edge or a jewel gauntlet or even make something else. You, know, you can make a titan's resol titan resolve. Actually, no, you could not make a titan's resolve with that. That's my bad. Um, but yeah, there, there's, there's the definitely action? some options there. Nope, we're not. Trying to see what we're rolling for. Oh, well, we are. We are. There we go. But we rolled one over. There was another ash in, in the story before and we rolled three times more to actually get that one. Um, not sure if it wasn't spotted or like... Changed yeah, opinion. I mean, he, he might have been looking for either a cannoneer or, uh, a, or ranger. a ranger. Eventually mm. found the ranger and was like, "Fine, I'll just. I don't have any gold left. I'll buy the ash and I'll. I'll stick with it." Yeah. Um, but you know, he could have been looking for the Lucian. They are level seven after all. Um, True. Didn't quite come together. I mean, but is Lucian really something you want in this? That you could no, do it with like cannoneer. But I, I think, think the Ash better, is good, because it's yeah. good CC, and that's something the comp doesn't have that much of yet. We you have the Nautilus. The that would be know. another option, very true. But I like yeah. the Ash, I think. I think oh, that's I like a very a viable comp, and, sure. and very good. And here you see everybody hitting level 8, I love that. Just at the same time, and there comes the items will cost too. We have a Fiddlesticks tool, we have Karma too. There's like so many units coming in for all of those players. Three of them are on fire. That will be very, very cool to see in the next PvP rounds that are yet to come. She just is on 12 HP together with Lilith, and that is actually so not good for Lilith. Lilith needed to do better than John Cake, and that is not happening at the moment. So I hope they can come back. And and yeah. try and and get that final spot. They really need to be in the top four uh, in this game, in my opinion. So uh, they better make it work, yeah. Yeah, and of course this uh, this comeback that we're seeing right now, like Shining Star, started off uh, a little bit lower in the in the ranking. I think they came in at like uh, you know sixth or something. Mm. Um, 
they've been winning two lobbies in a row. If they can make this a hat trick, that would be phenomenal, of course. Uh, they're currently still on track. They're not quite out. They're not quite out just yet. They're building a decent comp. Uh, but if they can make it a triple win, that would be insane for the last three games. That would be amazing to actually, because then you're just proving you're the best player in that lobby over three games. Yeah. So um, it just could have had a three-star Lucian with a BF sword slammed onto it, but decided against that. Wants the BF sword Ooh. for something else. Sold the Lucian with the extra item, and now will have that three-star Lucian like that with an extra BF sword ready to go. And I think he wants to have another action in there. There we go. And this one should get the BF sword on it together with the yeah. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted to say. It's just just proving what I wanted to say Ooh, while nice. I'm saying it. Very, very nice to see having that action in there with the Infinity Edge. It's giving it a little bit of more extra damage. Not fully itemized yet, not on level two, but just enough to have Lucian as not the only carry. We have our Galio in front with the Sunfire, with the Vest, with the Dragon's Claw being super stable, dealing out a lot of damage. And here comes Solutional just bursting through everything. He's gonna hit the Vein, he's gonna hit everything else. Action does his swing and that's it. So Stu's being very comfortable, but Lilith is out. Just and out. that is yeah. fatal. Oh my gosh. Too much. Lilith just not performing anymore after those first lobbies. It's got the first, a third, and then a first, and now it's got a sixth and an eighth in the fourth and sixth lobby. They did still get second in game five, but it's just not going to be enough to uh, challenge Jean Keck for that first place. Shining Star also very likely to overtake them, so they're not even going to get second anymore. Uh, and then they just got to hope that uh, Chol Bay doesn't win the lobby, because then they're going to overtake him too, and they just might even yeah. get third or a fourth overall. It's, uh, it's, it's not a great place for them to be to, to go out on, but. You know, I, I'm pretty sure they're still going to be in uh, in top four overall, so they're definitely walking away with some money. Just unfortunate that it's not going to be as much as they maybe could have gotten. That being said, Choose currently on a pretty good trajectory to potentially make a comeback here. Did he pick up those items and the champions in the way that you were suggesting, hmm. uh, as you were saying it? Is going to get silenced a little bit here by that volley bear because, of course, you know, big uh, big banshee claw. But they got one themselves, so it just kind of evens out. Here uh, we that go. Karma. That's old on karma the karma. Back line. Karma mm, back line. Yeah, let's go. He's we can absolutely damage. take that. There we go. See, I played this comp a little bit, and I have to admit, I couldn't say that earlier because then I would have, you know, got blamed. But I'm a little yeah. bit of like a, a, a tryhard. So I force comps. I know you shouldn't do that in TFT, but it's just I like doing that. So I have a comp mm. that I kind of look at in very detail and like how do you play it and how do you. Uh, excel at it right like and what items are best and then i force it i'm like one of those people uh i yeah. also used to do like uh like hyper rolling uh back when you had what was it like the trees that you could hyper roll in or like the covenants in the last patch like i do that kind of stuff which usually gets me disapproved from other players but uh, this is one of the comps that I kind of try harder a little bit in the past weeks so I love seeing it come together here for Stu's because that's exactly how it should look I think and he's doing a really good job of it at the moment for a second I was a little bit confused when he sold that Lucian earlier but it was absolutely the right decision and now we're seeing the all come through and he will be able to finish off that Velkos in the background and there we go another beautiful round from our Stu's here out. and Shining Star knocking out Psy. There we go. That is it. Ah. Silent uh, already was already, of course, uh, on seven on on seventh and eighth together with Stu's. Now is going to mm. be uh, well, pretty much going out last uh, overall. I'm pretty sure. Unfortunate for them, but uh, you know, still putting up a valiant performance coming in here, uh, replacing the fourth seed just to being. Uh, uh, just have had to have to have a player here and they still showed up and did, did quite a few got a, quite a good job um currently we're, we're back on board with jim ray is also potentially about to go up and looking at their board it is i mean it's a pretty decent board honestly like has, has quite a few good units on it but it's just apparently not being able to to, to pull it together at the moment uh, True. Like, like the, all, they also have the action they also have like the the, the ranger bonus uh, but they, I think they've just been swapping out in and out too much. Like they, they've been 
they've not been consistent in what they want to run and that's why you have a few one star units the items are not quite fully itemized on their carries uh yeah you have a three star hacker in the front line mm. but apparently he's not doing enough to really show up oh. so let's get see if the giant slayer on the vein will make a difference that could actually be like another peak point for Jimmery here. I mean, there isn't much left to do, right? Uh, we talked about the misfortune earlier being an AP carry in that team. I do think it's not a bad idea to have her, but the way they were positioned, both of the carries just got hit by the Velkos beam and the vein will get another load of that. They're rushing through the Velkos, trying to get rid of it. But will that be enough? The Hecarim will no. die and that is the end for Jimmery. That was so unfortunate with the position and Jimmery hovered the other players as well so they saw the Velkos being there I'm a little confused by why they wouldn't you know switch it up a little bit uh, I think there were also some threshes that could have been a danger but there are no Asacoms in this lobby as of now so oh. why would you really stick to that kind of positioning if you could split it up make sure at least one of your carries survives the Velkos beam for another day Mm, a little bit debatable here, but I think Stuss has another shot at getting in the top four here. Definitely does. I mean, one more player has to drop and he's in. Chobei uh, on 18 HP is now in fourth. Team S. Jung Kek not actually, not actually uh, on the first place at the moment. Shining Star doing a good job with that. And Arrow 1v9 having a good lobby here. So let's see if they can be, if they are able to potentially uh, cause an upset and throw someone out of that top four. Uh, they have the opportunity, they have the points, and Jean Keck ah. is not going to be able, even with that Velkos, to beat this nope. Juice comp. We're seeing we it, go. Juice is just making make more of a comeback, and Chol Bay going out is, uh, is an, that definitely, again, it just definitely opens up that top four for potentially Arrow to get in there. Absolutely, and I just, you know, I'm a big fan of Stutz, I think, after this day, uh, always yeah. coming through with, like, surprises, always dropping really, really low, staying on, like, 8th place, 7th place, and then slowly fighting their Living way back the up edge. to the final matches, and I think that's what's the most fun, really. Uh, we're getting a Shojin in here, I'm not sure where we would want to put that. We could put it on the action, just because we don't have... You that can, many yeah. other items we want to do. You could also go Rakan. You could go Senna. I don't think Senna would be smart oh. though. Um, he's gonna go. He's gonna go nine. He's gonna put the kale in. He's got, he's got oh. ten units because he got the force of nature. There we go. <laughs> now he knows exactly what units he has. He's not gonna change yeah. a lot more anymore. Gets oh, another kale. There's a second potentially. kale. Wait, nope, what? Put the Gwen in instead. What? No, the Gwen okay. over the Kale. Let's let's yeah. think about that for a little bit, right? So why would you put the Gwen in over the Kale? You already got the carries. If you put another mm, Kale in, mm, you're just mm. adding another Squishy who doesn't have damage items. One more so Gwen. Gwen. Yeah, so the Gwen is going to do way more than the Kale would because you've already you got your damage either. damage dealers. I, I I look look the Kale's a great great unit, but I don't think she was necessary here because you're not going to swap out your Lucian or your Action with the combo mm -hmm. you've got. So the Gwen makes more sense to me. I mean, maybe you would rather had like a Volley Bear. I I, I do agree. I do think a Volley Bear would have been nice here, but since we aren't running Revenant anyway, it, right? yeah, um, uh, it, it's not that important. We could have gone with like. Uh, Abomination or Revenant, you know, have a Fiddle Nico Six, though. an Ivern, a Volley Bear in there. That would have worked as well with this combination. I do think the Gwen is good. I'm not sure about the Vigo. I think we're just having it in there so we can roll. Um, there we go. That's a Galio tune. That's another big spike. We have the Warmax on the bench. We really need to slam it on someone. Just trying someone. to find who should have it. And oh, that's the action. <laughs> just to flex on everybody if else. John Cake is actually out on the fourth place. And now we're in the top three. Arrow, Shining Star, and Stush. That's not something we thought to see here today. I do think, because it's just really coming in at the at the very lower pointage and now making a way. Yeah, he's not going to be able to make it to the top four, but Arrow can. Arrow, if Arrow wins this lobby, is definitely, and he actually needs eight points. So first or second will land Arrow in the top four. So that's what we're looking at right now. If one of these players goes out, either Shining Star or Choose, Arrow is in. And that's oh, a great place that's to the Velkos down. That's it. That's going to be Choose's game. Definitely, yeah. there's nothing he can do once the Velkos is down and over with. And that's definitely for him and to take. Arrow but Arrow, Arrow took his copy, right? Arrow faced a copy of of Stu's and won. and won, and by far. Uh, yeah. So that but is what a does very. Arrow have? 
the same comp in in essence. Pretty so much, they're right? yeah. they're both running six sentinel, um, and yeah. just having Eros different items kind of on carries. Action are better. He has better items on these action, like way yeah. better. He's not running illusion carry. He's running uh, on and vehicle, vehicle and action. Oof. And he has two spat line. items. He has a Cavalier yeah. on Irelia and he has a Cannoneer on Viego. That's actually like so much uh, extra synergy he's getting out of it's, these units it's ridiculous. here. ridiculous. Yeah. Let's see if, if she just can make it this time. We rearranged a little bit, but the action is coming through, trying to take what is his. The Viego is getting super stunned. That's it. It is down. The Lucian coming through with the old. The action goes another round. And here we go. We're just waiting for everybody to punch that action down. He's going to go another round, but it will not be enough. She just takes down Arrow once more, even though they stomped his copy before. What a match! This is just for the honor. This is just for the honor. Like for placement, it doesn't matter anymore. They're locked in. Mm -hmm. They know where they're going to end. But this doesn't is all matter. about the honor. Gets the banshee. What does Arrow want? Wants the Sojin. Who's going? Who's he, he going to put it on? <laughs> Let's see. I'm, I'm I don't curious even know if he to wants see. it at the stage. We have a volley bear. Another action. Can he get the two star out? If he gets a two star, that's a big spike again. And he's, he was already winning the last round. It yeah. Looks like it's not happening, unfortunately. Oh, the Timo. Uh, oh my gosh! He he knows he's got like it doesn't matter for the HP anyways. Like the, this is the True. last round regardless. True. However, I still appreciate you know a ballsy move. I have to say yeah. that was very brave. And here we go, protecting that Lucian with the Gwen shield. Now we have two of those shields on our units, trying to go for the final match of the day. That is Di Viego trying to get that Rakan here, but Lucian will end that. However, the Rakan gets taken over. Lucian going down Lucian here. Right. That will be the Galio also folding over. And here we go. That is Arrow's win. The action is turning <laughs> both of them just swinging around but it won't be enough he cannot do enough here to take that win from stews and that is it well played dg number one it goes to arrow for the day and we will go into the leaderboard of the overall in just a second what did you think of the final lobby it was it went everywhere it needed to like uh, you know lilith just going out so early uh Cho bay not being able to keep that fourth place arrow just slotting himself in just at the end and we've seen so many of these like in the past few weeks where that last lobby matters so much and once again it did choose ending on 28 points very commendable for that last lobby didn't quite win it but still got very far second place not to scoff at and uh, i mean unfortunate for shining star they couldn't pull off the double the triple win in, the, in those last three lobbies, they still got far, third place. Uh, and actually, that last win would not have landed them top, uh, in like first place, anyways. Still got second. Sure. Uh, I've I've just I've just loved the, the the variety, but I do think that we are seeing a trend where Akshan is just probably the unit to pick up. Like Kale was good, Karma's doing things, but that Akshan has been consistently winning more lobbies, and he's just dropping a lot for these players. And it, it so often happens that multiple players are having them in these final lobbies, in these final rounds of a lobby, that it almost feels like he's dropping too often. But we'll see if that's a trend we see at Worlds continue. Then Europe, I would just say we're a trend setters let's just let's just call it that i mean it's true anyway are. yeah so we have the scoreboard up and ready for you guys just to give you a final overview of who takes the cake and that is jean cake here with 44 points getting 150 euro followed by shining star in the second spot taking 75 euro with 40 points followed by krc lilith with 37 points getting 50 euro and number four just climbing in there throwing chill bay from the throne of the top four getting 25 euro with 35 points and our fifth place chill bay six gym race seven stews and eighth silent trying to fight for his name in the final lobbies where he got slotted in as ninth due to someone else not appearing i think they can say they fought fair and square Valiantly, and i think those right? were beautiful games everybody delivered here i think uh, we saw super cool comps again if anybody would like to take part the signups are open for the upcoming cups 
Uh, there won't be a cup in the next weekend, as you said. We'll be watching Worlds, uh, hoping EU gets the win, right? And uh, yep. yeah, I'm curious to see who will who will cover the next cup. Uh, I loved being here. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I hope everybody else enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, anything else you wanna? I mean, I just want to say we loved having you here. We love everyone that's watching this. Of course, we are uh, are definitely here to support EU a little bit more and uh, show the wonderful players. Make sure you follow Monkey Bubble for more. There's more than just TFT to be had, of course, on this uh, on this channel and on this uh, on this uh, well on this on this product as we call it at this brand um we if you haven't been able to watch the entire series live we will be posting them on youtube uh that's just monkey bubble official on youtube easy to find uh should also be a link below uh and yeah if you want to follow either of us you know either makes or me uh, we also have our twitters listed so i'm sure you found those for now though definitely uh, a great time to sign off we have some awesome plays we saw what happened when the teemo 1v1 ends and i don't think we're ever going to get a better showing than that so we're going to try True. we'll be back in two weeks don't go uh, don't go anywhere in the meantime well i mean you can have you live your life that's fine just set a reminder follow the channel you know when we're live see you guys then <laughs>